Hello and welcome to the Hastings Indoor Bowl Stadium for the Bowls New Zealand Somerset Champion of Champions men's and women's fours. This competition will be played over three days with each team needing to win three out of four matches to qualify for post-section play. We start today's coverage with round two of the women's event. The men will begin their campaign this afternoon. The conditions of play are 15 ends per game with a two and a quarter hour time limit. Two games will be live streamed for each session with our first game on rink number one, which is on the right side of your split screen you'll see soon, which will be the Parongia uh, team from the Waikato up against the Thames Coast team from Thames Valley. On rink two, which will be on the left side of the screen, Takapuna from the North Harbour Club will be up against the Kahutia team from Gisborne East Coast. My name is Kevin Gledhill and uh, joining me in commentary uh, for this match is Dave Hewitt. Welcome to the programme, Dave. Uh, can we first of all now get on with the naming of the teams for the first match? If you'd like to give us the names and positions of the Parongia team, which will be on the left screen. Yep, and good morning, Kevin, and welcome, viewers. Yes, this morning, first game, Parongia on the left. They also have the black bowls, black stickers on their bowls, and their skippers, Gaylene Kanawa. Their two is Denise Tomomo. Cheryl Olsen with the Black Bowls plays two, and Vicky Coles leading for them. And I made a mistake there on the right side of the screen, the Thames Coast team, they'll be skippered with Kay Bunn. She'll have a white set of bowls. The third will be Belinda Goodall with blue set of bowls. The uh, number two will be Debbie Gainfort, orange bowls, and their lead will be Val Matthews with, it looks like, a yellow and orange bowl. So moving on now to the left-hand side of the screen where we have the uh, Takapuna team from North Harbour, so Dave, could you... Yep, Takapuna's uniform, black, blue and white, using the black discs again, and at skip we have Lisa Dixon with red bowl, Lauren Mills with purple bowls at three, Robin Walker with white bowls at two, and Anne Doreen with pink bowls. And yet again on the left-hand side of the screen, Kahurtia, the team that they'll be playing against, with white stickers on their bowls there, skip, will be Glennis Whiteman, she will have black bowls, Lucy Shanks will be their third. Now, Miro Allen will be second, and Marie Wright will be the lead as we have just commenced play in this uh, competition. You can see on the screen we have Parongia up against the Tem Coast, Thames Coast. It looks like we have a full screen available right now as the competition begins. Yeah, Kevin, it's a bit of a change to the games that we're going to be bringing. With, we were supposed to have in this round with the weather playing havoc with teams' travel arrangements. Unfortunately for Queenstown and Wakefield, they've had to pull out due to of the women's competition due to the weather. And Hokanui from Southland Centre have made great efforts to get here. They this morning have flown from Christchurch to Auckland. Then they then flew from Auckland to Taupo and are now driving to Napier. And with the cooperation of the Otaki team and the Club Papua Nui team, their first two games have been rescheduled to later slots in the program. So congratulations to the two teams that have agreed to the changes and to Hokanui for the efforts they've made and condolences to the other two teams who have been unable to get here. And as we see now the um, skip for the Parongia team and the skip for the uh, Kahutia team, they are now walking back to assess their options a bigger part of that was the Thames Coast team. The leads, the twos and the threes have delivered their bowls. And it's now up to the turn of the Parongia and the Thames Coast skips. And we apologise in advance if we get blocked off today. There are a lot more people on the green than normal. So if they get in front of the cameras, we'll try and do our best to move them. But... Uh, you may find today we get a few more because there's more people on the rink. Pretty good bowl coming in here, Dave, uh, from the uh, Parongia skip to just rest that bowl out of the head. And it's probably given her team the shot at the moment. Looks like the right screen got away a little bit over after time by the, by the number of bowls that we have up in each game so far. So as Kevin said, two and a quarter hours time limit today and 15 ends. So it's the turn of the Parongia skip, and that's Galen Kanawa <coughs> to deliver her first.
first pole of two. And uh, she wouldn't be too happy about that as a skip, just cutting across the head. The number three now giving directions to the Thames Coast skip using wearing their black and white silver fern tops. Kevin, you came across from New Plymouth yesterday. How was the crossing for you weather-wise? Yeah, the weather wasn't too bad across the, uh, from Palmerston North up to Hastings. A little bit of rain as we started the journey. It's a long journey, six hours, but I'm pleased to be here to, to be able to commentate on these games. And I haven't been to this nice Hastings rink before. And it's good to uh, just see how the bowlers deal with the, uh, this rink. Yep, and this green's been down for 20 years, I was asking this morning. So it looks in pretty good condition for that. Slightly different to Nainai that this one's on on uh, wooden base and a concrete base, so interesting to see how it plays yeah, over the weekend. <laughs> so the first end has been completed for the Parongia Thames Coast team. And I think there was an indication there from the Thames Coast team that they were one down. So Parongia will go ahead one point to new at this stage. Let's turn our attention now to the right-hand side of the screen where Takapuna are playing Kahuria. And uh, with the white stickers on the bowls, the Gisborne team of Kahuria Club would appear to have the shot. The red bowl there with the white stickers would appear to be the shot at the moment. <coughs> Quite clearly would appear to be the shot, wouldn't it? But... As you know from previous weeks, it's quite difficult to get them all right when we're looking at these screens. It's another white one tonight with this bowl just coming in nicely. Yeah, bowls over the head are very important in a uh, game of fours, very aren't they, Dave? Time. We need to have uh, numbers one and two, especially building the head. You need at least one bowl over the head from those four, always. Takapuna player now delivering her bowl. She was a study in concentration. Nice little feather of the kitty there. It's just moved it probably more to the advantage of the uh, Gisborne East Coast team, Kahudia. Probably looking at two shots currently. Number three for the Kahudia team, Lamira Allen. She's uh, bringing her bowl down now. Over the head. Good bowl there, Dave. Anything over the yep. head is good in a game of fours. Possibly in the count as well. well. I mean, even if you can come to this bowl here, that'll cut it down. It's that far over. Skip for the uh, Takapuna team. What I thought. Giving directions to her number three. Her number three is Lauren Mills as she plays up on her backhand. Just a little bit short, not probably where she wanted to be. Short bowls can be a nuisance uh, in any game of bowls, can't they, Dave? And especially in fours when, uh, you know, they can be in the way for, you know, targeting the head. Absolutely, they can get in the way of both teams, but if, the, if you've got a team that's got a few shots, they don't mind the opposition dropping short ones. So we're still focusing our attention on the uh, right-hand screen at the moment, which is the Takapuna team against the Kahudia team. As you can see with the white stickers, it's clearly at the moment probably three shots that the Kahudia team from the Gisborne East Coast region have around the head. Yep, but on up, mate. So the skip, Lisa Dixon. No, I beg your pardon. That would have been Glennis Whiteman, the skip for the Kahootia team, delivered her first bowl. Now it's the turn of Lisa Dixon. She has red bowls, the skip of the Takapuna team.
just trying to get underneath that uh, shot by of the Kahootia side, but una unable to do so. Still holding Janice. Around this front one. So we're in second end of a long, what proving to be a long three days again for the team from Bowles, New Zealand. Ably led by Chris Lander out front with Steve Beale and Martin McKenzie and Tamara doing all the technical stuff in here and supporting us amateur commentators. Lisa Dixon lining up for her shot as the skip for the Takapuda team. She's going to be coming at the head because she's down on the head. All skips need to be so you up, as they say, the and she's not going to be too happy about that. Just didn't get quite the length. As we said, into a front bowl. Comes the count. One, two. Kahuti have two shots taken out, and That's they it. determined that will be it for that end. That was the first end of 15. No time limit, two and a quarter hours in these games. <laughs> I think the two shots went to, went to Kahuti, as you said. They've changed hands with the mat, and it changed the mat over now. Yes, Kahuti are wearing the white um, clothing. White tops. White tops. They have the, the mat and the shots on the first end. Yep. Let's turn our attention back to the ending stages of the second end with the Parongia uh, Thames Coast team. Interesting decision. Who's got the shot there, Kevin? There's a black bowl and a white just bowl there. I'm not quite sure who's got it. But there are four or five short bowls, which could well be a disadvantage for the skip, especially of the uh, losing team for this end to try and get it the head. But they do need to. If they are down, they've got to be up and uh, trying to attack the head and giving them an opportunity. That's their job. The shot she plays here will tell us, I think, who's got the shot. Coming down on the forehand side. The skip for the uh, Parongia team, Galen Kanawa. There we go, the first person blocking our view, but she's gone back now. What an excellent shot that was to come in on a wide arc to just rest a foot or so behind the kitty. By the way, she played that, it'll give me the impression that black, the black disc bowl and the black bowl just in front is actually holding the shot. Okay, Bun now on her backhand to try and just move that orange ball I believe is hers just, just get a roll or two to try and she got the way to back do it. the shot oh, oh interesting now could well be two shots there Dave I believe or at least a measure for one yep this little hand signal went just to the left of the screen but I couldn't see who put it up it's Kahootia again they, I think they've indicated they're holding Last ball, ball coming down, down from Gaylene Kanawa. Her last ball was very, very good, Dave. She got around those wing bowls and those short bowls, but not, not able to do so on this occasion. Shortest ball on the rink this time. You've got to be careful if you attack too early in a game of fours because, you know, you need to have those bowls around the head and leave that job to the three if given instructions to or the skip as... The one, this one looks a bit wide to do anything to the head and is. So that's the end over. We'll see what they take out now. One down was looks the like signal. It's one down. They've made the decision. It's one down. So that will mean that the uh, Parongia <laughs> team go ahead now. Two, two shots to nil. They've had three ends. Two ends. We're on to three. We're playing three now. Well, that's generally uh, what we normally three, have. 15, I think so. from a previous time of commentary, that this, the ends on the screen indicate the end they're playing at. I was mentioned that's that. That's correct, yep. So they've had two, we're into three now. This is the third end, yes. Very important in bowls also for the lead to determine the length that she uh, wishes to play to, unless the skip decides to change it, isn't it? Yep, skip will tell you where it's going and 
but occasionally if they decide they can play any length, they'll just let the lead put it where they want to so they can get the first bowls in. So let's turn our attention back to the Takapuna Kahiri on the right side of the screen. And already keep on looking at the screens, we're starting to get a good crowd gathering. And it's good to see that people have decided to support this event, uh, the Hastings uh, you know, people here and of course the teams that are here to play later on this afternoon and just any person who wishes to watch uh, some good games of bowls. Top level stuff and it's a national championship at stake. It is a national championship and there are medals on offer at the end of the three days of competition. First, second or third will take home a medal. And, uh, and the winners count towards a silver star for Bowls New Zealand Silver Star. We saw a couple of those presented last week after the triples. And as you can see with the Takapuna Kahuri game, yet again the uh, white stickered bowls appear to be holding the shot. Kevin, I've just been handed the uh, results of round one. And in round one, we had the Takapuna team skipped by Lisa Dixon, playing Gaylene Mason of Wakefield, and it ended up 18 shots to eight. The next game we had was, I th that was a default, I think. Yes, Queenstown were due to play that one, and they didn't get here, so that was a win to Napier by default. In the next game, the Havelock North Club also won by... No, that's, we've got no score on that one. It's showing it's 0-0, zero, zero, so I'll ask for that to be updated. Club Papua Nui played Palmerston North, with Palmerston North running out the winners 14-11. In the Parongia's first game, they were defeated by Paratutu, 13 shots to 11. In the next game, we had Gisborne East Coast represented by Kahutia. And they ran out the winners over Thames Coast, 17 to 7. Kensington of North, North, uh, I think it's where are they? They're up Wonga Railway, so that'll be yeah, Northland. Northland. They were um, they played Tanya Wheeler's team from Martinborough and defeated them by 12 shots to nine. And in the final game was would have been Hokanui versus Otaki, but that's been held over to a later date. So that's an update for you of the first round winners. And I'm sure as we go along, the other, the other games will be giving you updates on as they go along when somebody runs the score for us about every four ends. So we'll keep you up to date with all the, all the other scores as well. Radio back to the action on the, uh, the right hand of the screen, the Takapuna Gisborne East Coast team of Kahudia playing. Kahudia ahead by 2-0. We just saw a very, very good conversion shot from the... Uh, Takapuna must have been their number three, who came in and just tipped the short ball out. And it's a measure now between the black, I believe, and the white. As you see on the right screen, there's a couple of black stickers there. It was a very good bowl and got a great result. So the skip is also running down now to try and just knock a few bowls out that were short of the kitty, which she has done. As the ball comes down now, that'll be the red ball of Lisa Dixon, the skip. <laughs> She's put a position bowl in behind. They have got black stickers on their bowl and they've clearly got two or three shots at the moment. Kahudia skip Glennis Whiteman. She's trying to draw and convert that shot. Just knocked it out. What a good bowl there. Trying to get a slide to get maybe two. But uh, at least got one of the bowls out. And it's clearly only just the one shot now. The black, the black 
Purple Bowl. Everyone from South. For the North Harbour Takapuna club side. Just updating that score from the first round. I was incorrect. The game I thought we had to get a score for was actually a default. I was thinking of the Havelock Club here in the North Island, but it's actually the Marlborough team that had to default to Tauranga South as they couldn't get here. So you're up to date with all the scores from round one. Lisa Dixon, as skipper of the Takapuna side, she's come down and had a good look at the head. Obviously in a game of fours, there's uh, potentially 12, 13, 14 bowls before they come to have their turn to bowl. There will be 16 bowls at the end of every end. Your red bowl now coming down with a bit of weight. It appears to be. Just going to get a position bowl on behind. Very, very good bowl there. They, I believe, are holding shot with the black stickers. And yes, they are. You saw there clearly from the Cahootia Club team player that Takapuna now get their first points on the board. So Cahootia are ahead two points to one. And we turn our attention back now, Dave, to the Purianga Thames Coast. That's the Purianga. Kayleen on the mat. Skip delivering her bowl. What's the state of the play here? Is it the black sticker bowl? It looks definitely like the black sticker bowl. It may be two. The blue, the blue bowl looks like shot, and it's a measure between the orange and the, what are they calling the other one, purple bowl. So that would be clear indication that um, if it's a black sticker bowl... Takapuna have got one up at the moment. Parongia... Parongia have got one up, sorry. Parongia would have the shot bowl. Good looking bowl coming here, Kevin, if it makes it to the head. And it has, and that's an absolute cracker. What a good bowl there. You can see it just came in. Slight touch of the uh, jack, and uh, the team are very pleased to see that come in and allow their, their team, Coast to get is, on the board. Yeah, Team's Coast to get uh, at least the, the shot from that uh, end. In the game of fours, it's obvious that uh, the lead and the two are the very important components of the team. It is a team game, and is, if every player does their role and they focus entirely on just the performance and their delivery, there's a good chance they'll be in the winner's circle. But uh, if they start to think about getting the shot for themselves and a bit of ego-driven uh, attitude, it doesn't tend to work too well, does it? They, they no, it does not. And at this level, you think the teams have well and truly worked out what their, what their game plan is and how they're going to do it? Yes, indeed. And there are several game plans that teams can have, you know, and they can, you know, vary the length um, yep. and uh, have different opportunities to either attack early or attack late. But most often, teams expect their lead and two to get bowls around the head and leave those decisions to the three and the skip to make. I'm sure as the day goes on, Kevin, we're going to see some of those tactics invoked with changes of length, playing a short end with either the kitty short or the mat up long and the kitty on the two metre mark and all sorts of different lengths they can play and different tactics they can use to try and change things. So Val Matthews is the lead for the Thames Coast team. She's had her two bowls. It's now the turn of Vicky Cole. As you can see, a black bowl. She's from the Parongia Club, a small club in the Waikato region. And this is a pretty good bowl, Dave. It's uh, just what a skip once to around the head. Yep. It's interesting you say a small club. There's been a number of small clubs represented during the week. And we mentioned about Martin Rubbing and the men's and women's from the Wire Rapper last week. And I understand they're in the men's and women's event again in the fours, so great effort for a little club. Yes, indeed, Dave. I mean, there's about 560-odd clubs that play bowls throughout New Zealand, and for some of the smaller clubs to win their club event, first of all, and then go on and win the centre event to be entitled to be here is a great achievement and a huge boots for those communities. Yep. And that Martinborough 
thing I just talked about, I forgot to mention, they also won the women's singles here three weeks ago with Tanya Wheeler. Rightio, really back to the uh, fourth end of the Parangia Thames Coast team. A couple of loose bowls there, just short of the head. And uh, so it's the turn now of the uh, Thames Coast player, Debbie Gainford. She's got orange bowls. Here it comes, breaking into the head. It'll touch it, left herself one down, but in a good position. You're just drawing. If you beat that black ball here, that's a good home. Cheryl. We're playing in three of 15 in the Takapuna Kahutia game with a score now at 2-1 to Kahutia. And playing in four of the Parongia Teams Coast game. Come on, buddy. Mentioned a few times previously in commentary, Kevin, about managing the end so you don't drop big numbers. And oh, it's a very important uh, comment there, Dave. If you do wish to uh, prevent any big numbers coming on, especially early in the game as well as each end, uh, yep. it then puts far too much pressure on the, uh, the, triple, the, the third and the skip to correct that situation. It's interesting we were discussing it last week as well, and of course for those of you watching in the triples, first game of post-section, we had a team leading 10-6, and they managed to drop a maximum six which put them out of the game. They didn't recover the next end, so they were four behind after being four ahead, and duly lost. So it just illustrates the importance of protecting big numbers. I agree entirely, Dave. That's an excellent comment to make. Um, you don't want to be dropping big numbers um, in any game of bowls, but once those numbers have been dropped, you've got another end to refocus and get back on the uh, horse, so to speak. So it's not uh, totally fatal unless it's towards the end of the game and the team gets ahead by quite a point that makes it difficult to uh, catch up. But there's 15 ends, and normally around about the first four or five ends, the teams just settle into their rhythm and decide on the length they're going to play and, and work out their strategies, uh, op you know, checking on the opposition, what they have to offer, right, and, yep. and try and consolidate in the next yep. five ends and then try and uh, come home strong in the final five of the 15 end game. So we're still focusing our attention on the Parongia Thames Coast uh, screen. The leads and twos and threes have all had their bowls, and as you can see, there's four bowls that are short of the jack and uh, four bowls at jack level or just over. The turn of the skips now to assess that situation and decide what shot they will play. The short ones are pretty well shared. It looks like there's two black discs and two white discs, so it hasn't been too damaging at this stage. Only one shot on the head. Here comes the first ball from the uh, Thames Coast skip, and she's fallen into the trap of being a little bit short as well, and a little bit shy on green. So leaves herself one down. Yeah, it's one down. The team that holds the shot currently is the Parongia team from the Waikato. Is their skip, Galen Kanawa. Delivers her first bowl of two. Down the backhand, weaving between the two black discs, short bowls. This is coming home nicely, bad. Dave. Yep, it is. Good position, bowls are skipped just to allow herself a bit of protection in case the kitty were to move. We'll stay focused on the left screen for the moment to complete that end as we have Kay Bun, the skip of the Thames Coast side. Looks well pointed again. It might just hang out there. Not going to come around quite quick enough. Clearly the black bowl the last one to come of now, the Parongia one. side is holding shot and that would probably be B either the lead or the number two, which is a good position for her to be in. The skip as she approaches this shot, knowing she has the lead. On the right screen, we're down to the last bowl as well. Or the second to last bowl, the last bowl of this skip. 
So that'll be one shot to the uh, Parongia team. And that would take them out to a three points to one lead currently. And the match on the left-hand screen as we turn our attention now back to the, the right-hand screen. That ball just nudged the, the black stickered ball, which would have to be black stickered ball in the uh, Takapuna Kahuya match would be the Takapuna team that would have the shot currently. So Lisa Dixon, will be, yeah, Lisa, uh, no, this would be Glennis Whiteman delivering her ball. Oh. Looks a bit tight, doesn't it? Yeah, but there was a bit of weight attached to that. I think she was trying to actually Just pierce launch. those two and try and take the shot ball out. And as you can see, yet again, the uh, Gizman Kahutia team indicating one down. So Takapuna now, having secured that shot. She's a two-all ball game, right-hand side of the screen. Three ends have been completed. We're about to start the fourth end for the uh, Takapuna and Kahutia teams, and we're currently in the fifth end of the Parongia and the Thames Coast teams. Right. The opening bowls are both a bit shy, one right on the centre line and the other a little under green and out to the right-hand side as we look at it. It's always interesting watching other bowlers and, and what their delivery that. action might be also, Dave. Um, they all have different ways of delivering the bowl and uh, that's to be expected and as long as they get it close or just over yep. the head it doesn't really matter does it? Nope, as long as you're just, you've got a, a set routine that you go through each bowl so you're consistent. And that word there consistent is uh, the name of the game isn't it Dave? I mean you need to be consistent across uh, each of the ends you play and uh, you know try and relax between your chance to bowl but when you step up on the mat Total focus, total concentration on doing and playing your role for your team. Yep. And on the left screen, if you saw it just then, there's the four first bowls are all marginally short. There they are now. Yes, clearly short, and uh, Skips aren't too pleased to see that uh, with their leads. And their number twos, if the leads haven't done their job, it's imperative uh, and the main objective of the two to correct that situation and get one over the head at least or at least close to the kitty. It's certainly not a short bowl anyway. Those ones that are on reasonable line are okay. Not great but you can still use them to knock up for shots. And here comes the orange bowl. Is it going to get around that short one? Just put off line but probably made two or three shots for the white just bowls. For the team's coast that would be. Yeah that slight nudge did give uh, an advantage of possibly two, maybe three bowls to the Thames Coast team. And as you know, with having a lot of experience, Dave, in playing bowls, if you're three down, then it's up to the... There it is. That's no fixed, longer that's three, three down. down. <laughs> no longer three down. And as a skip, you'd love to see that one coming in when you're facing three down. I can tell you that takes a lot of pressure off. Well, it certainly changes your mindset as to what you might... Shot selection, doesn't it? Um, yep. Three down, skips have to look at that and say it's time to attack. We uh, have to try and correct that situation but a nice ball coming down. Just a bit, bit narrow to I get through that situation to give the uh, shot to the really nice black stick and bowl here. which That's is um, the Paronga bowl. Coast team. So sort of the Paronga team. So if you're looking at the left screen here comes another black stick and bowl. And again, just pulling into that bunch at the front. Looked like it had a reasonable weight, but just that little bit of narrowness took it into the group. It's still drawable, uh, Dave, if she gets it uh, the right line and weight. Very much so. This will be her option, just to draw. It is a drawing game when all said and done, and if there's a window of opportunity, it's probably the best option. She's hoping this ball will run a little bit further, but... Just pulled it's just, up and yeah, made that gap a little narrower now. We don't need to push them up, mate. It may well have forced um, Prongia onto the other hand. Prongia onto the backhand. And it has, so she will come down now. 
looking to add to the counter, but she can just get around that wing bow and cut it in sharply, but not quite. How many bowls have we got up there, Kevin? Four, six, eight, nine, ten. That's, That's the first one past the head. Past the head. The it is indeed. So this must be an attacking shot. Just trying to draw that gap again that she narrowed down with the previous bowl. She's round the outside this time and knocks, knocks one of their own bowls closer. So a good result. Had the opportunity to do that because she was up. Yeah, she had a bit more weight on that bowl and it was uh, obvious that she was keen to move one of those bowls on that side that the both white discs into the head. Well, to my eye, it looks close to, the, to a measure, but I, would, I, from personal experience, would be picking the black, but whether or not I've got that on the screen, I don't know. Yeah, it certainly looks like it could be the black bowl, but the skips and especially the three are, you know, having a small conversation before they go down to line up for their delivery. It's important that the threes and the skips get on well and understand each other's game and, and uh, have a con small conversation when needed. Generally, they don't have too much conversation uh, before the first ball of the skip because the skip has seen the head. But certainly for the second shot, they often get together and have a chat, don't they, Dave? They do. Well, from one end of the ring to the other normally, hopefully, so as not to waste too much time. So it's Galen Kanawa. There's the skip of the Perongia team. Changed the hand and played down the side where the white disc bowls have been coming. And was round, right round the back. We have both agreed that the black bowl of the Perongia team is holding shot. Okay, Bun looks like she might have played this with a little bit of weight on. She does have a window of opportunity to come yep. through, but she's going to pull up short. Just across the front of the head again. I think the line was okay, Denise. It was just way too heavy, eh? Here's the comment. The, land, the line is okay, but you might want to drop a little bit of weight down. As she puts it down on the way, on the forehand side. Watching the final bowl of Galen Kanawa. Has she got this got window? Well by the look of it. Looks like a pretty good bowl coming through here, Dave, and little, it is. A little rub off the front. Well delivered bowl there. And she will take the shot. We believe they already have the mm. shot. They've got the black stickers on their bowls. Probably Pressure two. is on now for the Thames Coast skip. I think the indication from the three was, do you want to play through here with a little bit of weight? She's changing her hand onto the backhand side. Yes, she is uh, playing with some weight. You can see that the way she delivered that bowl. She's fairly wide. She'll need a good result here. Took one shot out. Well, there's bowls in the round of the head, uh, even though they were short, to be able to uh, be flicked off. And she did get a result there because she cut the score down from two to just the one. So she'd be happy with that result. One more to prong here to go 4-1. Turning our attention now back to the Takapuna Kahudia rink. As we saw earlier, uh, Dave, there's a whole lot of bowls short of the kitty. In fact, there's no... Uh, beyond the kitty on this particular end. So for this particular end, each of the players there have struggled just to get that extra little bit of length on the uh, delivery. This one's going to bring something up to the head. Took one right through and then pulled and then fell a bit short itself, but not sure who's holding shot there. Yeah, it's clearly a measure between the uh, white sticker bowl from the Cahudia Club and obviously the purple bowl which would be for the Takapuna Club. Oh, Good opening bowl game. on the other rink here on the left side, a toucher for Parongia right up to the head, nicely played. Lisa Dixon is skip of the Takapuna team. He's not able to get the bowl beyond the head either. Not Lisa Dixon, it's the other end of the team, it's San Doreen. No, Pretty you've got it right, I've got it wrong. That's what comes of watching two screens at once. 
Dennis Whiteman, Skip with the Cahootia team. It's a measure for shot, so she won't be taking too many risks. Yeah, too good bowls, mate. Well, that had a bit of speed on it. Might not be taking risks, but she certainly had some weight on that one. And I think you see once again that the Cahootia side have said we're one down, so that takes the Takapuna team out now to a three points to two lead. They've played four ends. 15 ends in this game. In fact, all games being played this weekend. The men's competition will start this afternoon. Uh, this morning's games are both women's events. Interesting this morning, Kevin, that there were two or three games still going at the bell, so 15 ends of fours is taking up the full two hours 15. Yes, indeed. I mean, having a time limit is important uh, so you don't have slow play. You need to be able to get through your ends as we watch good delivery coming down here on the left screen with the white stick and bowl, and that would have to be, of course, the Thames Coast team. So some good bowls there, three bowls over the head or close to it. I think actually, Kevin, it was a black stick and bowl that came down. And this is the white stick and bowl now. that much more off you mate you come in behind and make sure you're out here we're probably on the mat again now and I don't think she'd be too happy about that but it was rather white rather wide from the Parongia uh, player and it could well be out of bounds however Looks clearly like Prong, you have one shot, maybe a couple more than that. Yep. Just draw into here, even well if done, you draw Eddie. in front here. Really good home there, well done. Feature of this rink, if you don't get the bowl on the ground, you hear it bang as you just did then. The screen is concrete base and then a wooden floor underneath the carpet that's been down Very 20 years. Weight. I asked about that this morning. And you can certainly hear them when, they, when you drop them from any height. Yeah, Robbie, make that bowl your jack. Draw in to rest it. That'll give you two. Yeah, but see what happens if they don't take the green. So it's Belinda Goodall with blue That's bowls awesome, for the mate. Thames Coast team. She's had to deliver her delivery, and now we turn our attention to the uh, Parongia. Number three, Denise T. T. Momo. Come on, hold. I'll suck now. She's going to give that little front one just a little boost. Well Didn't do too much damage. Well Reasonably good head though on the uh, left-hand screen there as the final bowl for the third for the Thames Coast team comes down. Give that orange one another little bit. No, just a bit narrow. Hmm. There's another black just coming up by the look of that. The skip, uh, Galen Kanawa. Having a good close look. Trying to determine who actually has the shot before she makes her shot selection. She will actually have a chance to yeah, talk to her game. players as she crosses over in the middle. Looking just also as the third and skip for the uh, Thames Coast are having a little chat. Looking at that uh, head, Kevin, she might have been looking at what was second shot because I think Pronga clearly have one. And as we know, Dave, the second shot, you know, only dropping one is a pretty good result. If you, When you're looking at the options you have, you have to make a decision, you know, what sort of risk is there in the shot you might play and, uh, and make a, a cool and calculated decision whether perhaps a draw might be the best bowl and just accept the one down. She's looking for it all, oh, might just chop across onto the white disc bowl and give it a shunt forward, and did. Got an interesting head here. I wonder what uh, Kay Bunn is, the skip of the Thames Coast team, is thinking. She's getting some direction from her number three. 
Yep, Belinda Goodall's indicating to come down the forehand side. Yes, you heard that correctly, Dave. She's hoping to come down on the forehand and maybe just rest out those bowls in the head. And did she just indicate that could be a measure? I think she gave the sign of a measure. She's got white bowls. We'll be able to clearly see what happens here. Stays down well after she delivers. It's well pointed. How's the weight? Weight was probably good. She was just that little bit shy on the green. Just a little bit shy, as you say, Dave. And there's two more bowls to play. Both the skips looking carefully at the head on the left. But it is drawable on the forehand. Galen Kanawa going for the draw. Pretty good attempt there, Dave, just in amongst the pack. Yep. You know, there's quite a few bowls there that uh, can be, you know, utilised and get a small slide, so nothing wrong with those bowls. Kay Bunn yeah, is the skipper of the Thames Coast team. She'll be pretty keen to get a shot here. The lead's starting to open a little bit. Three lead already, so... Ooh, not quite. Got the rub we were talking about, Kevin, but didn't quite come up to the head. One bowl has been taken out. They're looking for seconds here. Out comes the measure. Looks like we've got a bit of weight on on the other head, but we're blocked from the camera now by... Yes, there was a bit of weight on, but I don't know what happened because... Uh, the bowl's got disturbed, but we didn't see it till after the skip had gone. Thank you very much. So just while we await uh, the decision on how many uh, shots in the measuring here, looks like it's one down. One down has been indicated from the uh, Parongia team. So that means the Thames Coast team picked up that shot. So they're behind four points to two after... Six in, so Dave, you've got some score updates for Yeah, we've got some score rates just brought in to us from Pauline. Thank you, Pauline. And in the other games on rink four, Tauranga are down after five in, six four to Wakefield. On rink five, we have Carlton Cornwall behind after three ends to Johnsonville, four nil. On rink six, there's six ends gone, and Hunua lead far north RSA, five four. And I think that's all the other results we have at the moment. Yes, that's all we got given, so I'm sure we'll be kept up to date as we go along. Again, it may be that we've got rings clear because we've got those two defaults today. Let's turn our attention to the Takapuna Kahutia uh, game as Lisa Dixon as the skip for the Takapuna team. She brings down her red bowl. They're clearly holding shot, I believe, the black stickered bowl, which would be the, I guess you could call it, pink bowl of Anne Doreen. Seems to be the shot at the moment. Glennis Whiteman. She's taking a more direct approach to try and get rid of that bowl. Ooh, cuts one of her own across the head. She obviously decided that uh, sole bowl that uh, was holding shot, the pink the shot bowl of Anne Durin's, was worth, you know, trying to flick out. She's got one more bowl to come. She's in charge of the uh, direction of the team, and it's her call alone that decides the shot. Very good, mate. Seen as you changed, Ken. Very good. And the rules, given that's the case, the, the skips in control, but in practice, you hope they listen to the number three who's standing on the head with the who also has an opinion, and generally they get they decide between the two of them. Correct. Not too many skips you get at a dictatorial. Lisa Dixon is the skip of the Takapuna side. Just put in a deep bowl there behind the kitty in case we get uh, a movement, and it looks like Glennis Whiteman has widened her arc a little bit, but she's still got some weight on it. But she's not going to dislodge that 
shot pole of the uh, Takapuna team. Takapuna go out to 3 2. Tight game. You can see the value of the uh, lead uh, there, um, Dave. Uh, the pink bowl of right Anne Doreen. The yep. It stayed there right to the end. And remember, 15 bowls had to come after hers, and it remained there as the shot and the winning bowl. It's interesting. You get some <coughs> new players that hate playing lead because they said, I played a good bowl, but it's never there at the end. What they don't realise is that if they've got it there to start with, it puts the other team under pressure, and they can't build their head. They've got to chase. So even if it's gone at the end, it's still been of value. Excellent comment and 100% correct there, Dave. You are so right. The leads have a very, very important role in every game of bowls. And uh, in fours, when you're trying to build ahead, they have to put the ego out the window and just get close. And if the bowls aren't there at the end, or so be it. They've got another end and 15 ends to keep doing it. And your skips will love to see you having bowls around ahead, especially just over if you can manage that. Here's another good black disc bowl coming in for Peronga. So Perongia on the left uh, side of our screen, currently holding shot, maybe two even. Yep. And uh, they're ahead five points to one in this game. This is the seventh end. Another orange bowl just a little a short. We've got one behind the head that they can use, but three out to the, to the side and just short. Ooh. Illustration of what I was talking about just before. If you drop the bowl, you hear it. That purple bowl didn't come back home uh, as far as Denise Timono would have liked. So it's the turn now of Belinda Goodall with her blue bowls. We're focusing our attention on the Left screen, and she's cut her line quite considerably, Dave. She wouldn't yep. be happy with that. No. Not when well, you're a couple down. Thought, mate, Indeed, a couple down. She had to be a little bit a narrower line and a little bit of a weight just to try and dislodge those two bowls holding shot. Comes Denise Tomomo again. She's also going across into those white bowls. Just nudging that orange one up, but it's still out to the side of the head, so maybe they still have two, the black disc bowls of Perongia. There's a couple options are being given here from number three to their skip. No, from skip to the number three, I think Do still. Your pardon, skip to number three, but... Um, Belinda Goodall with the blue bowls on the, on the way now. She but also look. looks as though she's got a little bit of weight there. She's on good line too if this comes back. Nope, the black oh, there's one black disc bowl back there. I'm not sure who's that other bowl is back there. That would be the purple bowl, uh, perhaps. Could be. So Perongia could still have a couple here after that's freed up, but it's a bit more room now. That was a situation where a good uh, bowl ended up perhaps a negative result, but it had to be you know, delivered. They were down on the head and she did move the kitty back. And it's just a case of now deciding whether she holds the shot from that delivery or whether it's still the opposition team. Unfortunately, Kevin, although she played it back, her team had three or four short ones in front that didn't help because you had to get through to them. You can't use the front ones. You want something at the back. You always need something at the back. The jack doesn't tend to move forward, does it, Dave? It tends very to seldom. Very seldom will it move forward. It will move uh, deep. That will be killed, whatever. Um, ends can be killed in uh, these games um, so we haven't seen one yet but still drawable in around those bowls to get the shot either hand actually yes indeed <laughs> and she's on the prong here another one coming down the forehand side from Galen Kanawa it's breaking into the head now will it get under their bowl yes what a great bowl there David excellent bowl from Galen Kanawa is the skip. He saw the bowl come down and just tracked nicely. The bowl just did the job. And uh, she knows her bowls and what her, uh, the arc she might need to take. Skipping the team very well. They're ahead on the scoreboard, five points to one. K Bun's in the general area as well, but may get stuck on a front bowl. Yep, unlucky. She looked like she had pretty good speed on that. If she'd sneaked under there, she could have been very close. 
We'll keep our attention on the left-hand screen as Galen Kanawa sizing up her bowl. Her first bowl was very, very good. She's taken the same line and wait, has she? It's Slipping a bit around. Narrow, but she's going to get a rub. And that's one of their own bowls coming over that. I'm not sure what that bowl just to the right of the jack is, but if it's a black disc bowl, we could have five here, which could be a big break to have to come back from. But we'll see when this bowl's finished. Okay, Bun staying well down over the bowl and staying there. Right through the delivery phase, she has a bit of weight on this here. with a tighter line. You have to have the luck for that, mate. It's somewhere around about the uh, scoring <laughs> zone, but I don't know if it's no, going it to count. No, it is a bowl. Here we go. One, two, three. What we're talking about before. Don't need any big ends here. Here's the big score. As you can clearly see, four bowls there. Four shots, 9-1. That's a big break to have at this stage of the game. It certainly is. A uh, four-point uh, end there for the Parongia side. They've played very well against the Thames Coast team, so they're ahead nine points to one. And as we said, Kevin, there was a very good bowl played by the Thames Coast to open that head up. But the kitty moved back, and of course they didn't have any there because they had two or three short ones at the front. And that just uh, shows example yet again of how... The short bowls cannot uh, you know, help your team if you're down. You need to have bowls over the head for the skip to attack or at least have a little bit of a weighted shot because the kitty will move back towards where those bowls should be rather than up front. So a game on the right screen between Takapuna and Kahuti is much closer. It sits at 4-2, playing the fifth of 15 ends. The skips are just going down to play their bowls. At the moment, it looks like the white disc bowls have the shot. That's, of course, the Kahutia team. Yeah, the Kahutia team from the Gisborne East Coast region. Um, you know, it's a, it's a strong club in the uh, middle of town in Gisborne and uh, very, very capable bowlers from within that region and within that club. So they're down on the scoreboard 4-2, but plenty of time to go as Lisa Dixon is the skip. Takapuna team, her bowl's coming down. She's got the red bowl. And the black discs. Yeah, that's cut the score down because the white bowl is clearly the shot. No. The really holding shot. White disc bowl, the blue and white disc bowl, yep. Here comes the draw. Going to be reasonably close. Just get a little rub off this one and come forward. Nope, not quite. So there's no change in the situation on the head so there's no need for the threes to give too much advice the skip has decided what to play sure will play here we're one down to that anyway and uh, she's decided to go with the forehand coming at the head Looks on the backhand would be very word. difficult just a bit wide again going to hit her own first one no nope, just missed it so it should be one Maybe two here to Takapuna if she can draw this one. It wasn't a bad option though, Dave. Easier. She could have just clipped that bowl and, and clipped it closer to the kitty. Yep. Uh, it would have been difficult to draw on the backhand as we have the final delivery now coming down. Can rest that second shot out. Take it out. Good bowl there, Glennis Whiteman. This could be, I oh know, there's a, that white bowl's a, the white bowl up front will hold out the big numbers. Yeah, I think there could be two white two bowls there. Two white bowls. If that one there, there might have been four. What a great shot from uh, Glennis Whiteman. Just that conversion shot, just over uh, draw weight, not by line. much, and just knocked it out of the kitty, uh, out of the uh, jaw, out of the, the head. And very good. Uh, Took a bit of courage, Kevin, because it was just behind the shot bowl, and if she'd hit the shot, she may have lost it. So well, Cahooty well played. Cahooty got two shots there, so they would... <laughs> Put their team up to four all now. Inside it. They're on the 15 now, about yep. to begin. Only one light, thank you, Cheryl. Very close game. The game on the right-hand side of the screen. Four going, points all. Going much slower than the left screen game, which we're on the eight, eighth end.
I believe the score on the Takapuna Kahuri it should be uh, four points each. They did score two points on that last end. It's not being reflected on the uh, screen at the moment. They're playing the sixth end. Yes, there it is now. We'll focus on the Kahuria Takapuna game for a moment or two here as the Takapuna lead with the pink bowl. Didn't look pink, did it? No, I'm just thinking here we've got this slightly wrong. It appears as though the, the lead for the Gisborne East Coast team, Mari Wright, is playing with red balls. She has the white sticker on, and she's delivered her two bowls as Anne Doreen. And they are, they are pink if you look. They've got pink sides. On to Anne Doreen for the uh, Takapuna side. Her pink ball coming down now with the black sticker. Pink sides, but not pink middle. No, but she would hold the shot. Just cut the line slightly. And looking at the other rink, white are recovering very well here. White disposals of Thames Coast. There might be two or three of them in the heat at the moment. Well, they certainly need to uh, get they some points on the board, don't they, Dave? They're behind 9-1 they on the scoreboard, and uh, we have had... This is the eighth end. We're getting just past the halfway point, and the skips and the threes and the whole team, in fact, will be looking at maybe changing strategy should they win the end, they're shortening their head, or maybe attacking earlier, or whatever they need to do to, you know, try and get uh, you know, some points back on the board. Just looking at that chalk mark, it looks like we are a bit shorter. But it would have been Perongia who won the last heat that would have shortened it up. So maybe it's backfiring on them a little bit here. Ball here, Robin. Well done. And on the right-hand screen, you'll just see the white ball coming down there from the Takapuna second, uh, Robin Walker. They would clearly have the two shots currently. Um, just jack even. No, Maru Allen. With the black bowls playing at number two. She's uh, nudged Look for that, bowl. that bowl in to probably be the shot now. Oh, K Bun might have just done some damage to herself there. Picked up a short what black disc do, bowl. Today? On the left screen, pushed it up. They made. They look like they're still holding two. However, maybe three. Robin Walker on her backhand with her white balls for the Takapuna Club. Came through the fair bit of weight on there, looking to yeah, shift that perhaps. white disc bowl on the kitty. Perhaps a little bit uh, too much weight there. Just going back to the Prongia Teams Coast game and. Here comes the last bowl from Prongia's skip, and it's a little short. Be interesting to see if Thames Valley get a little count here to get them back into the game. Good ball coming through on the uh, right-hand screen here, just to rest uh, a foot ac across from the kitty. It is a white sticked bowl, so that's a... Um, the Kahootia Club from the uh, Gisborne East Coast region, they're currently holding two shots. And Bun doesn't look like she's going to quite add to this count on the left screen. She's a bit short. K Bun, sorry. One out, two out. So a little recovery here for uh, Thames Coast. Two shots. Lauren Mills is the number three for the Takapuna shot. I mean, club has been called for a small runner there, just over draw weight. She had a narrow line trying to dislodge the Shot bowl, she's widened the head a little bit. They're playing quite an attacking game over there, aren't they? Certainly uh, attacking early and yeah. uh, trying to open it up and leave a drawing game for the three and the skip to follow through. But this time the 
third for the Cahernia Club, unable to get a decent line on that pole. Yep, you're just trying to draw it off. Yeah, you hear the uh, direction there from the... Try and draw it off. Takapuna players around the head, especially the skip, to try and draw it off. That means oh, narrow your line a little bit, a little bit extra weight, and, uh, and try and come through the head. I'm going to change you. Lisa Dixon giving ball. directions. Probably doesn't need quite the weight that that last one came down with. So let's watch this ball coming down for the Tikapuna and Kahuria game. Lauren Mills on her forehand. That's a change of tactic already because they came on the backhand last ball. Yes, indeed. I thought it uh, might have been the backhand delivery would have been the best option there, but uh, so be it. Has she come back into sight yet? She's delivered her bowl, and it may well be out of bounds, and or a deep bowl, but uh, perhaps it could be preparing for something that the skip may do. It's always the case in a tactical game, Dave, that the bowl could be prepared for another shot to come later, not Absolutely. the actual shot in the, that has been played. Building towards the conversion shot. Indeed. And we have a little conference in the middle of the head. All four Takapuna people talking and two of the Kudias. It's important though in a team game when you need to discuss something, it is a team game as we said, so all four players can have a contribution and and uh, you know allow the skip to take note of their points of view and then make the decision on their own and go do the job. So our attention is on the right hand screen now as the Kahudia Skip, Glennis Whiteman, just adds to the count. She hasn't fatted it up too much though, Dave, but it was a very, very good draw ball there. Yep. Two balls sitting right on top of the kitty. Any touch on this now, the kitty will spring sideways. This is going to test the uh, ability of Lisa Dixon. She's let the ball go. There's a bit of weight on this. It's in the general territory. Will it turn quickly enough? Not quite, but very close. Very good attempt, though. Her, her delivery was such that the bowl is still going to remain on the rink, and uh, therefore it's still alive. It's uh, beyond the head, so any movement of the jack, that could be a very good bowl. And as you see it, Kevin, it's still on the head, so it can be used, and you'll just see the, the three indicating to the skip for uh, Kahootia to come around the back. Yeah, good uh, choice of bowl for this one here. She knows the opportunity may be that the two bowls that they currently hold may move. She didn't miss by too much, Lisa Dixon, that last bowl. She's been given directions by her number three, Come Lauren on, Mills. Same bowl, mate. But uh, she'd like to come forward and have another look. She isn't Title to do that as the skip is allowed to come up. We're really not in a good position. She's already played the one bowl. Very well as she played the first one too. They're trying to assess here, Dave, just where the kitty might move to. And do we have a bowl on that position to be able to uh, score the shot? Looks, I think that pink bowl out to the bottom of our screen looks like it's in pretty good position if that kitty squeezes. Yes, indeed, it is their bowl. They have a black sticker on it. And she only has to hit um, those two bowls. It doesn't really matter whether she hits it square or just off centre. It's more than likely going to spit the uh, kitty somewhere towards that purple bowl, perhaps. It may come out to the wing bowl here, the white stickered bowl. So you never know where it's going to go, do you? Not you quite sure of the angle assessment. of that, because it's hard to tell on the screen whether that black bowl is covering it from coming directly back. She's yeah, changing right. hand, Dave. She's going on a forehand. Yep. <laughs> going to put one in out that side. To, almost picked up the mat. That was the last ball of the head. No more to come. Two shots. Quite surprised there that uh, she chose not to attack. She thought the option might be go down even worse. They could go less than two down. She's accepted that two down is a fair enough call. And uh, her bowl, bowl indicated that, didn't it, Dave? It didn't yeah, uh, look yeah. to as though she was going to attack it. So 
the Kahootia team now go ahead to a six point to four lead. Up to seven in, so we're on end eight. And we're on end ten on the other match. So let's turn our attention back to the Paronga Thames Coast team. Looks like Paronga hold a couple of shots there, the black disposal, although that could be a front white disposal there, so actually it might be a measure. But as we can see, clearly there's plenty of short bowls there that become a nuisance uh, if you're trying to navigate your way around or under or trying attacking the head. So it's quite a navigation task now for... Yeah, both those, all those bowls with a little group of three at the front on the right-hand side and that orange one up front appear to be just about on the drawing lines. Now we've got somebody blocking us off in front of the camera. We shall just wait till we get a, a clear view here. There she goes. The message just got through. So Kate Bunn, Kate Bunn, what can she do here with the white bowl? There's plenty of bowls to navigate in front of the kitty. Looks like she's coming out on the forehand. It's a forehand delivery, as you said, Dave. It's coming down with a bit of weight. About a metre. Uh, it's not going to get the results you'd like. That would indicate to me it's a black shot. That would indeed. It would clearly indicate that the uh, Parongia team are holding shot with the uh, black sticker bowl. Keep our attention on the left screen as Galen Kanawa. They're clearly holding shot. She's uh, sent down her blue bowl. As I mentioned, I thought that bowl was pretty much in the drawing line. It just proved to be so. But it's not going to be a negative uh, result for her by uh, nudging up that bowl, but could well have been, but uh, it, it didn't quite... It probably might be the second shot, but it's not the shot. Clear the line for the next one, though. It's much clearer to draw down there now. Looks like a weighted bowl coming here. Certainly does. She's lining up for it. Yep, with pace. Down the middle. Misses everything except the bank. Yeah, it was a backhand drive. So that now has opened the door for um, Galen Kanawa to just draw another one. Well, that's the ball you're beating. Yep. She's certainly given it a bit of chance here. It's on its way. Played pretty well again. Certainly played a very, very good shot. That will be the shot, I believe. So yep. they've probably got two there, David, I think. They've obviously agreed because they've cleared the head, but we haven't seen the signal yet. We'll find out when the score goes on the board. So we'll turn our attention back to the Takapuna Kahudia rink. And we have the black stickered bowl just for the uh, Takapuna side currently at the moment, the shot. Just going back to the game on the left, that was a three shot to Parongia, so they now lead 12-3, playing 11 of 15. And that's a very, very good lead, Dave. I mean, that's going to be... a very good lead. It's not insurmountable, but the pressure is on and their confidence must be growing to see a 12-point to three lead. Well, Parongia don't have to try for shots now. They can just control things and get second or third and they're well in control of the game. And that's a good word to use too, control. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In a game of bowls, you can only control your delivery when you're on the mat. You can't control yeah. the end result. And uh, as a lead and a two, as we know, you get them around close and the opportunity is then for the three and four to dictate the terms of the game and decide how that end will end, uh, what the result of that end will be. But um, you can't afford to get too upset, but to get three shots there is certainly give the confidence to the uh, Parongia side. Yep. So yet again, the pink bowl of Anne Doreen appears to be the shot for the uh, North Harbour team from Takapuna, the Takapuna Club. She's bowled well. Her pink bowl has been pretty close to the kitty for most of the ends. Uh, 
This is going to be handy. There's a useful bowl coming in here. That's right. It's the uh, third for the uh, Takapuna team. Lauren Mills just parking one up close to the lead bowl of Anne Doreen from her own team. Unless that's got a bit of weight on, and I think it hasn't because she just waved it goodbye. It always looked narrow out of the hand. Yeah, Lucy uh, Shanks no, from no, no, the uh, Kahuria team wasn't too happy about no. that with her green Not bowl. She out, needed to be girl. a lot, uh, yeah, a little bit wider arc. She did put some weight on that shot, but far too narrow. Got a ghost in here. We just had the vacuum cleaner hose fall over on us. Good, Cheryl. Mills from the Takapuna Club. There's their number three. Just putting in a good position bowl should the jack be moved. Currently holding two shots. Can't afford to get too greedy, can you, Dave? You nope. need to just, you know, build the head and build the score and, and uh, you know, accept the situation. You never know what's going to come after your bowl. And you have to believe that they may be good enough to dislodge the bowls that are yep. around the head. And it's quite a tricky little draw shot for you black to add to that, of the black disc bowls to be added to, because if you touch that pink pole, by the look of that kitty, it's going straight to the white disc bowl, the black white disc bowl, just at about four o'clock from the kitty. Like yeah, very good sure. comment, uh, Dave. Correct. This is where judgment is required and uh, shot selection is key. Just drop the white, Cheryl. Glennis Whiteman behind on the uh, current end here with two shots. Down the backhand side. It's pretty Getting good delivery close, here. Nicely rated. Close. She certainly nudged the, uh, nudged the winning shot by way out of the head. And what's the end result of this, Dave? Do you, can you well, see it from... It looks like a measure between the black disc bowl at the front and the red one right behind it. I'm here, mate. Very good uh, shot from Dennis Whiteman there. Clearly moved it away from two shots. And that's what you expect your skips to be able to do. And she did it very well. Kept her bowl on the rink. Just nudged it out of the head. Come on, keep coming to me. As and the saying goes, Kevin, coming. that's what the skips get paid big dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Radio skips get paid good money, so we believe. So here we go. <laughs> it's um, Lisa Dixon. I wonder what her paid check will be after the end of this game. Here we go. <laughs> With your red bowls. Playing on her backhand. Just trying to come under side those bowls and change your hand. If it we keeps running, it gets a nice little feather. I think you indicated what the value of her paycheck will be, Kevin, because I think we don't no longer use checks, do we? So no, there'll be no checks being given out <laughs> at all. They'll probably bounce oh. too because I don't think banks actually, uh, you know, will cash them anymore. But anyway, let's get back to this game. We have yep. Dennis Whiteman just coming through and... I'm not quite sure he's holding shot, though, at the moment. No. Wouldn't have a go. I haven't seen any indication from the threes. The last, the second to last bowl, or last bowl's on its way now. Last bowl. We'll soon know what the shot is when the threes step onto the head. She's played that pretty carefully, so that would indicate she might be holding. Couldn't quite see there. We'll find out who's got the uh, mat uh, as they come forward. Generally, the person who picks up the kitty has won that end. That being the case, it's Takapuna, but she hasn't grabbed the mat yet. Oh, yes, she's already got the mat down. Yes, it was Takapuna, so they creep up closer to Kahuri at six points to five. It's been a very close game, that one, uh, Dave, and um, yep. every, uh, every end is crucial for both teams. They've uh, just gone past the halfway stage. They've got 15 ends. Two and a quarter hour time limit. You have to win three out of four to qualify for post section play. A loss on the uh, in one of your games is not crucial, but you need to win everyone else, every other game to uh, get through the post section. Anyway, here we go. We're um, 
just watch the ending of this end with the uh, Parongia Thames Coast as Kay Bun using her white bowls. And very uh, definite delivery action comes through. There is a, wa a small window of opportunity. Can she get through it? Oh, unlucky. Didn't miss by much, but there's the, the nuisance value of that short bowl. And it was her own white disc bowl that she yes, hit indeed. as well. In yes, indeed. So it just prevented her from, it seemed on line, but line that bowl just uh, you know, that allowed it to be deflected off and didn't get the results she'd like. I think the reaction of the players showed how close they, some of them thought it was coming through that because there was a little jump when it hit that front one by, by a number of the players. Looks like a whole group of black, doesn't it? Certainly does, and that's kind of blocking up the uh, it's got opportunity. In the gap again. Yeah, it's certainly, and it's a very tactical bowl there from the uh, Parongia uh, skip there, Galen Canaba with her blue bowls. Makes it very difficult to draw through there. There's plenty of bowls that can be wicked off, but well, Tim's coast, in fact, looking at that head, might have four back ones, but it's a matter of whether you can get them there. She's certainly giving it plenty of thought, and uh, that is so important. But behind on the scoreboard, 12 points to three. Play the sand, Robbie. What can she do here? Let's just watch this bowl with interest. Yeah, there's a group of four white disc bowls down the back, and she's pretty close to the she's skate. She's got a better line this time. It might even take the kitty. It mm. has. As I was mentioning, there's the group of what four. What a good bowl. She didn't have much room to uh, draw between that window there, and she moved the kitty slightly, but she'd be really happy with that bowl regardless well, of the result. She might have got unlucky with this one black bowl out to the side. Oh, it's one goes on the, on, the, uh, on the cloth, and out comes the measure. We'll see if she turned it into a good number. But it was a cracker bowl. Excellent bowl. There wasn't much window of opportunity to get through there, and... She timed it to perfection, just got a nice little slide off the kitty. Oh, it looks like by the way that measure's lying, there might be two or three here. And that'll be a great confidence boost for them. They need that. Yeah, that last bowl's that far short. Only one. Just the one, but a here. great result. And, uh, oh, no, no, they've all signal one, oh, but no, she's getting down to measure again. A few more being measured here. Just one. Just the one, but the Thames Coast team would be very, very pleased for that result. A good skip bowl was required and she delivered, so it's a 13 point to 4 game now. But again, as we said, they've kept control by just keeping that limited number down to 1. And effectively now with 4 ends to go, it's a very, 10 uh, behind we've got to get yeah minimum of 2 and a couple of 3s to catch up, which is not easy. Very, very much so, Davis. An uphill task now for the Thames Coast team, notwithstanding that very good delivery, they've got 10 shots to uh, pick up, three ends to play, and uh, you know, you're so right, the um, Parongia team just have to restrict the Thames Coast team to no more than one or two, and the, the ends will run out, and they'll end up winners. Let's go back to the uh, Takapuna Kahudia game for a moment or two. Very close contest here, Kahudia 6, Takapuna 5, they're on the ninth end. Yet again, that pink bowl of Anne Doreen. She's bowled very well as a lead and given her team every opportunity to, you know, stay involved in this game. Very, very good lead. A few loose bowls there, though, Dave. There's a few, one or two that are too, are too far short than you, far shorter than what you'd like to see at this level. Just a nice draw ball coming down here from, uh, I yep, believe that's Lucy Shanks with the green ball for the Kahootia team. Yep. Uh, 
nice bowl there as well to tapped off a front one of their own teams just come to rest close to the kitty puts the pressure back on Lucy Shanks for the Kahootia team she comes down on the forehand we'll just see out this game and then we'll give you the results up to now this is a very very good bowl it's going to clip that uh, pink bowl out of the head and trail the jack back now it's at the situation of where is that jack closest to which bowl was currently holding shot uh, okay Dave you can give some updates now as we uh, let you yep. talk about how the games have been going this morning we've got another very close game on rink four it's eight all between Tauranga South and Wakefield while on rink five the result, from earlier on it's turned around from Johnsville leading 4-0 to Galton now leading 7-4 after seven on rink six Hanua now lead 11-10 after nine over Far North RSA. So some really close games going on in this round. And definitely two of those with one the difference and no difference are very tight. Down here, Cheryl, just back to the Takapuna Kahutia game. Not quite sure as to who was holding shot. The kitty was moved and it was a very, very good bowl to do that. And so the skip. Dixon. She's obviously decided what her shot selection will be. And we'll follow this with interest. When the ball comes into screen, here it is now. The kitty is rather deep beyond all those bowls you can see. It was a long way short if the kitty's just behind all the bowls. Certainly was. Bites. Perhaps he might be trying to put in a block. I believe the pink bowl is still holding shot though. As Glennis Whiteman. Now oh, there's the kitty. There's the kitty. It definitely looks like a a black disc bowl holding at the moment. We can't see where that one has ended up, but the call from the teammate was a good bowl, Glennis. Must be somewhere close to the kitty. You'd expect uh, Lisa Dixon this time to have a little bit more weight on the bowl and get around those uh, front bowls. The kitty has been removed, remember. It's coming back into wherever it was moved to. We are unable to see currently. Which one is counting? We're not too sure on that. <laughs> Lucy Shanks mentioned. One's counting already. There's certainly one counting, but which club? We do not know. Depending on where this one ends up. Different line altogether, wasn't it? Back under the centre line, that one. Yeah, certainly surprised me, but uh, it had a bit of a cut there. Uh, there we go. Picking up the bowls. Interesting way to measure, a little jump. <laughs> They're measuring the back bowl. Where have they made a decision? One down according to Hi. Hi. Lucy Shanks' finger. Okay, so Takapuna got that shot. And in the end analysis, it was a very good shot. But the kitty was moved back. Their pink bowl currently was holding throughout most of the bowls. But they ended up getting it in the end, so it's 6-all. Well, I've been concentrating on another game. It looks like uh, Tim's Coast are having another reasonable end here. They might have three or four shots. Oh, their white bowl stickers oh, are... Just shy. They've got... You're right, they're about three shots here. So that's a loose end from the uh, Parongia uh, team. And sometimes it happens during the course of 15 ends, doesn't it, Dave? I mean... There's little you periods get, where you go off. Yeah, periods where the players just don't feature and they might get a little bit complacent, perhaps, or they just miss their line and wait and all of a sudden the game can you know turn quickly yep. as we watch the ball coming down now on the left screen clearly the white sticker bowls are holding shot three of them that's the Thames Coast team have we got a major comeback from this team it's possible
for hand delivery from K Bun. She'll Coming be trying, against the territory, if yeah, she gets she, past that orange, she'll count. She'll be trying for a nice little position ball just past the kitty, which she has done. I think that's the last ball of the head, so we'll wait, wait for the count now. Oh no, Prong, you must have another one. Is that last ball in the count? Last ball is in the count, you heard that so clearly uh, spoken. Go. All she's really got is a nice draw around to cut the count down. I don't think she's going to be driving at the short bowls up the no, front of the green. There's still a bit of space Probably to draw him. You only draw for second. That that's that's all they need. Count. Correct. That's all she needs is the second shot. And even if they go down two, there's, um, she won't be too concerned about that. I think the three was indicated by her foot to come in the forehand, and it looks like she's going the backhand. Backhand is. delivery is uh, the chosen shot selection. And it looked wide and heavy, and it was. Well, you can play there if you want to, Robin. They will probably concede three shots here, Dave. You can play there if you want to. Wait and see. One. Come underneath that bowl. It's up to you. I should have gone with my best. Was that two or three? J well, I heard the call, two, but the signal that they normally do is three, but I think it was probably only two. Well, that certainly uh, they rested the, the advantage back off the uh, Parongia team, the team's coast team. And yes, the call is three shots they've been given. 13.6 yep. down on the scoreboard, playing the 13th end of 15. There's three ends. They got three and it still didn't really improve this. Well, it improved the situation, obviously, but it still leaves them with a hard uphill run to the finish. But it's a good confidence boost to start getting... You know, yeah. some points on the board because, you know, there's more than just one game to play today. Not just this, not just this game. They've probably already played a game prior to this, earlier this morning. And uh, depending on the result of that, could determine whether they carry on in this competition. So it's a good confidence boost for the team. Yeah, Prongia had a loss first up this morning. They got beaten by Paratutu, 13 shots to 11. So that's a must win for them. And Thames Coast also got beaten first up by 17 shots to six. So for the Thames Coast team, if they lose this particular match... That's their tournament done. Their tournament is done. They do have to play they out the remaining... They have to play other games, but they can't make it. Yeah, they certainly can't make it through to the post section should they lose this game. They're leading off all right in this end again. We've got two orange bowls pretty close. Yeah, that would be Val Matthews as the lead for the Thames Coast team. And now it's the turn of Vicky Cole for Parongia. She has one ball already on the head, over the head in fact. Good track on it, Vicky. She'll be trying to get this one a little bit closer. Very good correction, buddy. Excellent delivery there from Vicky Cole. So it's the turn of Debbie Gainfort. All she's got to do is nudge the bowl of her lead up, which she has. May not be the shot though, Dave, but it'll be close. No sign from the Parongia skip. Cheryl Olsen on the backhand with her black bowl. She knows straight away it's far too wide. She's not going to come home from out there. Debbie Gainford with her orange bowls. And after an epic journey, I've just been informed that the Hokanui girls have arrived. Started their trip yesterday, flew out of Christchurch at 6 o'clock this morning to Auckland, flew down to Taupo, f should have been landing at 5 to 9 and have driven over here in a rental car. So well done to them because they are now in the hall. Oh, exceptional uh, attitude to, you know, 
not just give up the opportunity to play in this event and notwithstanding all the bad weather they've had and, and complications of getting here to be able to start this morning's game. Well done to staying with the program and arriving here and being able to continue to play this weekend. So well done uh, for everyone involved that allows that to happen. So this would be the turn of uh, Belinda Goodall as number three for the uh, Thames Coat team. Getting Excellent the delivery the there. Shot. They're certainly coming into their own in the latter parts of this game. They clearly hold shot there with the uh, white sticked bowl of Belinda Goodall. They're coming with a late charge in this game. Denise uh, Tomomo with her purple bowls on her first delivery. Yeah, you've got to have the weight to be here, mate. Another metre. Just falling up short. I think you'll find the Thames Coast, yes, they'll be uh, instructed to come on the backhand. I'm quite interested in that shot because I thought it looks like an easier draw on the... Uh, on the forehand, and a little trail could take it back to the orange bowl at four o'clock. Yeah, there's a trust aspect here, and obviously, you know, the skip trusts her, yeah. her bowler to on it, do what she knows she can do, but on that occasion, it just wasn't quite able to. Mm. This doesn't look a bad bowl either, my word. Certainly does, Dave. It's going to get a piece oh, of the kitty. Oh, just it. Not quite. That would have been interesting had she uh, touched the kitty there, but she had a little bit of weight on it too. Yep. She was, uh, you know, directing her attention at coming through the head and trying to, you know, scatter a couple of bowls just with a nice little touch, but wasn't to be. So the Thames Coast team with the white sticked bowls currently hold shot. As the crossover happens, and on the right-hand side of our screen, you'll see they're just taking out two bowls there, which were the bowls for the Takapuna team. Yeah, I think the Takapuna team there, the black bowls were taken out, or the black sticked bowls. So they go off to a eight-point to six lead. They've played ten ends. Beg your pardon, this is the 10th end. No, this will be the 11th because we have an update up there yep, now. Yep, that's right. Great, Great delivery from Kay Bunn there. There's the skip she just drew in there that's given her team two shots. Thames Coast team fighting back. Certainly uh, changed things a little bit in the last two or three years, haven't they, Dave? They have. Galen Canal was having a good look at this head before she goes down to the mat. What do you think her option might be? I'm not sure. There's an open draw on the forehand, but whether or not she'll play that or whether she'll play with a bit of weight on the backhand and try and scatter a few of those white sticking bowls. Okay, Dave has given us two options, a forehand draw or a backhand try and hit those two shot bowls and just dislodge them and perhaps move the kitty back to her own team's bowl. Looks like she's going on the backhand, so whether or not she's using weight or trying to draw, we'll wait and see. Let's watch this bowl with interest. Looks like a little bit over the draw. Yep. Certainly got some weight on it. It's a direct... Tap. It's called... What a boomer bowl. Full down, it'll be shot. It, there you it, go. Yeah, it just fell down and... I believe she's taken the shot, but there's an example of a skip just choosing the right uh, option. Shot selection, did it to perfection, split those two bowls and has gained herself the shot. Very difficult option now for um, Kay Bunn. And very unusually, Kevin, it was one of the options we gave, so we got it right. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well done, Dave. You got that option correct on the backhand. You gave him two options and she chose the second and... Delivered very well. So Kay Bun. This looks like it's going to be played with some weight too, but it's been lined up right up at head high. I certainly think so. On its way. Close. Kitty. Kitty in the ditch. That could be a good shot. 
You can tell by the claps and the uh, background noise there that she delivered that really well. Even though she dropped it, Dave, it uh, still it kept its yep. line. Kept yep. its line. And I'd say that she'd be counting in the drain because that was a toucher, so that'll be counting in the drip, in the ditch. And there's an orange bowl right at the bottom of the screen that's probably still counting as well, so they've got two. Oh, no, that kitty's gone a long way across. You can see it under that white spot. It may, that white disc on the, just under the camera there, it may be that it's a black disc bowl holding because the white bowl... Kay Bun played is a long way away from the kitty. One went one way, one went the other. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Uh, you know, she was after the kitty and she got it, but she didn't stay with it, and uh, the kitty scattered a little bit, and she's a little bit wider than the shot bowl, which we believe is the black bowl from the Parongia Club. Is this, no. this bowl comes in, and it's a little bit heavy. Going to go in the ditch. Prong is ind indicating one down, so maybe it is the shot on the drain still. So Prong, you have indicated one down. It was a long way away by the look of that bowl on the it drain. It seem so from here. Thames Coast, another point on the board, 13 points to seven down. Now they need two threes to get to an extra end, but they're still fighting back. We're about to play the 14th end, but we'll turn our attention now back to the right-hand screen with Takapuna and Kahudia. Yet again, as we said earlier, Dave, which bowl is holding shot? Yeah, absolutely. The pink bowl of Anne Doreen. Anne Doreen. Yep. <coughs> She's bowled very, very well for her Takapuna team. Her bowls have always been there and thereabouts. So direction, as you can see there on the right-hand screen, is to play the forehand for Lauren Mills, the number three for the Takapuna side. Yeah, good opener, mate. There's a study and concentration as she delivers her bowl. They're currently holding shot with the pink bowl, black sticked. So she's being asked to deliver a position bowl, which she has, over the head and deep. Tim's ghost lead a little short on the left screen, but usable, they're in line. That's a mat, mate. You just come out here, same way as your last. This looks a different uh, shot coming down now here. If it's got the weight, can it clip that bowl out or just get the shot? Great delivery there. Great delivery from the Cahutia team. Skip Glennis Whiteman certainly gave a few claps there, knowing it was a great bowl. She drew that superbly. You can split those, you'll have a good chance, and then it'll come to us over here. Hearing the. Uh, the comments being made by the skip for the Takapuna side. This is going to be a weighted bowl by the end of those comments because she said if we split that, it'll come over the side. So this should be weighted. Not too big a weight, but enough, I think. Certainly a narrow line. She is trying to rest these bowls in the kitty in the head. She's moved one out. Takapuna is still holding shot, though, I believe. Glennis Whiteman uh, seeking a particular shot from her number three, Lucy Shanks. Can she deliver? It's not going to have the weight, Dave. It's certainly uh, not the ball she was after there. A little bit short. Well, more than a little bit short, about three or four metres. She played a good one on the backhand with the first bowl, came right through for shot and then got changed over and we probably ended up two or three metres shy. So I do believe the Kahootia team are holding shot. 
They've got the white stickers. Definitely are. Lucy Shanks is first bowler in the shot. Lisa Dickens, Dixon, sorry, taking quite a bit of time as she walked backwards towards her bowl, assessing her option. That's the challenge of the game, isn't it, Dave? I mean, when you've got four players from each team, each trying to do their own job, and then the skip having to look at uh, what they have to do to either convert or change the head yep. or win the game for their team quite often. But, um, yeah, there's plenty going through their head as they line up for the shot. Yep, the thoughts going through their head Pretty right from the start of the head, build it, how they're going to build it, and then one bowl goes in the wrong spot by either their own team or the opposition and suddenly we've got to work a different plan. This ball was coming down with a little bit of weight, which was quite a surprise considering... Sorry, it's not a surprise. No, they are one down. They are one down, yes, indeed. She was trying to, I think, just get a nice slide on the inside and across and perhaps take out the shot bowl. As we've said before, a second shot is a good shot in bowls. You don't have to have the winning shot. Short. You just have to try to prevent a big count if you can. Well, that Takapuna Kahutia <coughs> game's been so tight, there's only been 14 shots and 11 end. If you get a big score there, it'll break the game wide open. Correct. Uh, good point is again, as Lisa Dixon, oh. <laughs> she comes down on her backhand. She's got a tighter delivery this time. Has she got the right weight and length? Oh, she's very close Looks to this pretty jack. Good this time. She's Played a cracker. What a good bowler there. Took the uh, piece oh, no. of the kitty. Who's is that blue bowler that's gone to? Well, that bowl could well be the Takapuna side. Should be Lauren Mills's third yep. bowl. She's wearing, she's got the purple bowl, so yep. that did change things. It was a very, very good delivery. Now, there you go, two and a measure down. Two and a measure. Good result there for the Takapuna team. Just what we just said, it could be the break that splits the game open. They're two ahead and another three here. Put them five ahead. Mm -hmm. Won't be three now, though. Looking at, oh, I don't know. Stopped, didn't it? Could well only be one down now. They're going to certainly take one out. And Put it's a measure down. now. No, they've decided one, I believe. No, I think they're still looking. Yes, they're down on their knees. They're going to measure. I've got to play the same shot down through there. You have to measure when there's a bit of doubt, don't you? You can't oh, just uh, do it by your eyesight. A measure will certainly take any doubt out of the equation. And in these games, if you're going to have a measure, get down and do it straight away. They're time limit games. You can't afford to waste time. Agree. You cannot afford to waste time, and uh, if you do, you can be penalised for slow play, can't you? It'd be pretty rare to see that happen, but yes, you can. One? Well, warned against slow play, not necessarily yeah. penalised. OK, so there is one shot there to the Takapuna team. Takes them out to a nine points to six lead. So a good last bowl there, because they had, as we heard, two in a measure before it, so she cut out. One, maybe two shots. And they're now playing the 11th end, I beg your pardon, the 12th end. 12th end of 15. Nine points to six, Takapuna ahead. And on the left screen here we have Paronga. Paronga, 12 points to eight, Thames Coast. Picking up their act a little bit, but it could be a little bit too late. They're on the 14th end of 15. We shall wait and see yeah, on this game. Looks like that's just been waved away. It looks like Paronga has got a shot on this end which will make it very difficult for Thames Coast on the last end if they're looking for five or six. Galen Kanawa has delivered a bowl on the backhand side. Looks to be nicely greened. Will it come back? Here it comes. Not far enough up, but we'll see what the shot is now. 
Here comes the tape on this end as well. They're measuring the orange bowl. Between that orange bowl and that black bowl up by up the nine, 10 o'clock side. Round she goes. One shot. One shot to the Perangia side. So we go to the last end, five behind for Thames Coast. Perangia 13, Thames Coast 8. There's a five shot differential there as they approach the last end. It's not insurmountable. There's eight bowls per team. But, um, but not easy. Not easy to get uh, five shots of a serious championship of uh, competition as we have here this morning. But uh, they're certainly not going to concede. They're going to play out the whole game and give themselves an even chance of getting five to force a, another end. Rongia's lead. Vicky Cole. Delivering her first bowl. This looks a pretty good delivered bowl too here, Dave. Yep. Just a fraction shy, but on pretty good line. Tim's Valley can't afford anything short in the end. They certainly can't. We've talked about that before. Short bowls are a nuisance. They're also, they prevent uh, the threes and fours. And guess what? Skips from getting in and getting the shot. And here we have another example. Two short bowls. It's not too bad, but it's, it's usable, but it's still shy. Often when you have a short bowl, uh, and within your head, you have to go back and think of just the position beyond the jack, or bowl to a position Good just beyond the jack, and it may well pull up on the jack. Mm. They're not deliberately trying to bowl short bowls, but uh, that was a lucky that's a better bowl. Prong here used a little short bowl of Thames Coast used for a wick up to the jack. Well, you really do have to play this hand, Robin. Bill <laughs> Matthews, Bill Matthews with her yellow orangey coloured bowl. <laughs> this looks a better delivered bowl coming down now towards the kitty. Just going to fall short, but Jack even is a good bowl. Fraction wide, but usable again. Doesn't look shy green this one, it's well out there. Cheryl Olsen won't be too happy about that bowl. Just very not, wide out of the hand. Just though. not getting it to uh, bite and, and, and come in towards the kitty. Opens the door a little bit now for the Thames Valley, Thames Coast team. <clears throat> Anything over the head with your first one's really good. She's going to be deep, but behind the kitty. That's a good delivery. Hold to me, Cheryl. For you. Could be wide again here. Yeah. I think it's going to no, come home quite, time, yeah. quite well. It started to track late. Yep, no, it dipped in very nicely, didn't it? Excellent bowl on the Perongia team. We're very happy to see that go down. A few high fives in the background that you saw that. This is the final end. They're ahead on the scoreboard, clearly 13 points to 8. And they're holding shot. Good position to be in. And unfortunately, Thames Coast are not up. Very difficult to make that bowl count now. You can play either hand, mate. Yep. Kind of hand. She's been given instruction either hand. So she's chosen her backhand. One of the options now for Thames Coast must be looking for the kill. Definitely an option. We'll see where this yeah, bowl ends up. Yeah, it's just... Couple down and needing five. Couple down, as you heard the call there. So that was a good position bowl. 
over the head as well. Good place there. Too much weight on here. Turn of the ferns now to deliver their bolts. The blue bowl coming down of uh, Belinda Goodall. And yet again, she can't again, get Mark. it past the kitty, which is what her skip wants. To be in that competitive zone with the two shot bowls at the moment. And Denise Tomomo from the uh, Perongia side. You're holding shot. She was narrow. That could have been interesting if it had a bit of weight, couldn't it? <laughs> she knew it wasn't good right from the time. She flicked her hands around as she delivered it, indicating that she got it away all wrong. James Coast, you can hear that call. You've got to be here. As this bowl is now on its way. Is there balls that she's going to knock under or she hit into or is she going to get a slide? Good end result. I'm quite surprised to see them still drawing this. They cannot, in my view, gather in a five with three shots short of the head. Yeah, it is time to attack. It is time to take uh, the initiative. But difficult at times, though, when you've got all those short bowls up front. But if you get the right line and weight, of course, as in all bowls that are delivered, you can get the result you want and scatter them out of the way and just leave it to the skips to draw to yep, get the shots. Right. The later they leave it, the more likely there are to be bowls in front. Correct. And that's where strategy comes into a game. Do you attack early or do you attack late? Yep. And often the skips have to make that decision and is often dependent on how their team has bowled up front. And especially if you're trying to chase the game as they are now, mm. it probably is calling for a direct... Uh, Attack to the head. We'll wait and see on that. I'll put more land, I think, Denise. <laughs> Kiwana skip, sorry, not the Kiwana skip, Puronga a skip. Gal Kanawa just putting a bowl in the potentially firing line of a backhand runner. Yep, can say it couldn't give her Makes a guide. Makes it very now. difficult to rub off that onto the jack, could take it out sideways. Very Good delivered ball from Gailey and Kanawa there. Putting the pressure back on her opposite, Kay Bun. We're watching the game on the left-hand screen. Has this got the weight and the direction? It's got the weight, but I don't think it's going to quite get the... Well, she's pushed a couple back, but I still don't see... There's still three short bowls up there, or actually four. Three on the left, of, as you look at the screen, and one on the right. So I'm still not sure how she gets a five out of that. But it's going to be the very, very can't difficult. Go through, Denise. How much trouble are we in? Parangia number three, knowing it's the last end, and, we'll and the trying to make sure we do the right thing here and don't open the door to get a big count. He's coming on her forehand. Interestingly enough, Kevin, when you see that board. It's only the, they've only played 13 ends according to the board. So are we one out? Is that why it's not been attacked? Perhaps. That's a good bowl. A good bowl there. Nice position bowl. Final delivery perhaps of this end and the game for K Bun. Actually, when I look at where we're, we're looking on the screen, Kevin, this could be the, only the 14th end because they haven't had a kill and they're coming back towards us. So... Maybe that's why we're so far ahead with one game over the other because we're one end out. And that would also explain why they're not attacking this head like I thought they would. OK, we'll go with that. Uh, yep, looks like and we've I got think uh, we've now just cut back to 14 to 15. Two bowls have been taken out. Parongia bowls, so it's making the yes, situation... Yes, it does make it more difficult. The blue bowl is definitely a Parongia bowl, and the so third one has three. been taken out. Could be four, so it could be over anyhow without playing the 15th. Four. Four have been taken out. Five. Five. Makes it too many to get the last end anyhow, so... Five shots takes it to 18-8, and there's no oh, way that Thames Coast can win that game now, four. so it'll be interesting to see if they shake hands. 18-8 it is. Parongia 
with a lead that there cannot, be, cannot be, be beaten. So, yes, indeed, uh, you're right, Dave. Skips up the far end. Skips have decided. They've done the maths. They can't get the uh, result. And uh, 18 points to 8, a good win to the Parongia team over the Thames Coast side. So that's the win they needed. They lost the first game, as you said earlier, Dave. So they've got one win on the board, unfortunately, for the Thames Coast side, who I believe lost their first game. They are yep. now out of the competition. They have just had two losses, but a very good and absorbing game. And some great balls played. So, Parongia, you go ahead. Unfortunately, Thames Coast, uh, although you've got to play out your games, you won't be going to post-section play. Yep, Thames Coast, as I said earlier, yep. were beaten this morning. They were beaten by the Gisborne team on the other rink by 17-7. to 7. So. so let's turn our attention now to the Takapuna and Kahudia game, and I uh, won't be surprised if we get to full screen. Here we go now. They're on the 12th end. And the bowl of Andorin yet again is the lead, that pink bowl coming down and... <coughs> Putting that the pressure right back on the Gisborne East Coast team. That name we've mentioned many times. Very consistent. Yes, she has been very consistent as the lead for Takapuna. And has kept their team well in this game. They're ahead on the scoreboard. 9-6. Marie Wright with her second delivery. She wasn't able to better or match and Doreen. And Doreen on her backhand. Nice high follow through there. Wonder how we're going for time out there, Kevin. Oh, I didn't take it on my watch when we started. Look at this ball coming down, Dave. Nice yeah. little toucher. Excellent delivery. Holding two shots. Pressure's really on the uh, Kahootia team now. See if you'll be all laugh somewhere there. Well, I was unable to uh, change the position on the head. I think Steve's got a speaker back from one of the players in the first game, and I don't, really, don't think he realised it's still on and we can hear everything he's saying. So Turner Robin Walker is the number two for the Takapuna side with the white bowls. Clearly holding shot, and all she's going to be trying to do is not trying to fatten up the target, just perhaps get a position bowling behind the kitty, which she is doing. Well done, good delivery there. Here's a skip's comment, good, good home. So it's Namiro Allen with her black bowl. Kahudia number two. And she's actually got a piece of the kitty. That could make things interesting, Dave. Yep. And we've just had... Uh, well, uh, Dave, you can give the update on the scores on the game so far. Just had Pauline bring them into us. Thank you, Pauline. And on rink four, the Wakefield Tauranga South after 14 is 10 all. It was 8 all after 10, so 4 1 since then, 2 to each team. On rink five, Carlton Cornwall have gone well ahead of Johnsville now, 13 6 after 11. And on rink six, Hanua are ahead of Far North RSA, 17 14 after 13. Oh, look at that shot come through. Excellent uh, bowl there with the uh, the white bowl with the black sticker. And that would have to be Robin Walker for the Takapuna side. So they currently hold, you'll soon see after this delivery, as it's Lucy Shanks with the green bowls to see if she can uh, deliver something special for her team. Certainly has a bit of weight on it, but it's clearly the black stickered bowl of the Takapuna side holding shot.
You heard it there, trying to turn Robin's bowl over. There's the direction. Shot selection being called from the skip. Lisa Dixon. It's a backhand delivery. She's going to come down and turn over the pink bowl of Andereen. Just a little bit short. That's where the kitty was. There you go. There's a call to say it's the last end, so it must be time running out. Lucy Shanks with the uh, green coloured bowls. White sticker. She's trying to get around those wing bowls and try to come up to the kitty. It's a pretty good attempt. Not quite. So clear direction given to Lauren Mills. They're holding shot. This is the last end. It must be the time has run out. Two and a quarter hours is the time limit. There you go, she's knocked up the pink bowl of Anne Doreen's. Clearly two shots, measure for three. If this is the last end of this game, they will run out the winners. But we'll just see the remaining bowls out. It's nine points to six. Take a puna ahead of Kahudia. We'll take some special bowls from Glennis Whiteman to change this score. The leads and the twos and the threes have done their job for this game. They can just watch and then hope their skip will do what is required to give them the win or in the case of the Kahootia team, get up and maybe force a, a drawn end and play another end. So, Glennis Whiteman is the skip for Kahootia. She's about to bowl here first. Chosen the forehand. She won't be happy with that uh, falling short and cutting across the line. Not, not so good there. By the look of that, <coughs> excuse me. By the look of that, we've still got four games going out there. It's a completion of time, so. Lisa Dixon, skipper of the Takapuna team. They're ahead on the scoreboard, nine six, and ahead on this end, with two shots. There's not much pressure on her. Just going to try and draw one up there, and get somewhere in the zone. She won't be taking too many risks. There's no need to. She won't be too displeased with that short bowl. Because it's Glennis Whiteman's last bowl of this game. And the, most the, she can on probably, the most she can get is one, I imagine. Or well, maybe two. She's got the shot, though. It should, could be. No, it won't be the shot. No, the black bowl. The, shot. the white bowl looks to be the shot. No, two up two to, up. to Takapuna. And that should be. If they have caught this the last end. What are they? It's, yeah. You mentioned that earlier, but perhaps not. It was one of the players that called it. This will be the last end. I'm not sure what the time is. Yeah. 
And she has decided not to play that bowl, uh, the skip for the Takapuna side. Takapuna picked up the mat quickly. Lisa Dixon. So it cannot be the last end. But they uh, didn't play the skips bowl. She didn't need to. They had two shots there. Now they have a lead of 11 points to 6. So maybe the call we got from one of the players of being the last end was incorrect, as we can clearly see that. There's a two and a quarter hour time limit. She may have been reading the clock wrong. So we're not quite sure how many ends they have been fully completed now. Perhaps this is the 13th end. It says on the scoreboard, end 12 or 15. Yeah, we haven't increased the score from the last end though yet. That's true. It should be 11 points to six. Or to 12, Takapuna. I wouldn't be surprised if they called that a three. Could well be three. And Doreen doing what she does. 6, 13 to 15 gone. Playing 13 to 15 now. Sorry, 12 gone. So Anne Doreen doing what she has done all game. Putting a bowl close to the kitty. Excellent exhibition of lead bowls. Uh, for Cahudia, just had far too much weight on that bowl. Nice smooth delivery from Anne Doreen. Trying to park up another bowl close to the kitty. It's coming home very well. Set it all the way through Kevin. Just over been. the head. Really consistent, and just look at this last end, even. Oh. Well, she's remained, uh, end, she's, she's remained on task throughout each of the ends. Yep. And uh, when she stepped on the mat, you know it's going to be a close delivery. And she's been a key component in uh, them in the lead at the moment, 11 points to 7. And have we said, that puts the pressure on the opposition team the whole way through. And if you're a lead in a uh, game of fours, you only compare yourself with your other lead. There's no other bowls that you can <laughs> compare yourself to. And she's clearly outled uh, Marie White from the Kahootie Club, hasn't she? Yep. Further down the line in a game of fours, you can't always compare yourself to the opposition player because you may be asked to do different shots. But as a lead bowler, you can clearly assess your uh, worth and your ability against your opponent, can't you? Yep, that's another good Takapuna bowl just come in, the white one of Robin Walker's. So building up quite a little head here already. They certainly are. Building the head is the name of the game, and they have three shots currently. Not a very good bowl there from uh, Namiro Allen. Just cutting across the head. And already the Gisborne East Coast Kahootia team are three down. On the head. We talked about that earlier. When you get three down, yep. it's sometimes time to attack, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to get rid of them or you've got to get close. And you do it early or you do it late. So yep. I think Dennis Whiteman is still asking for a draw bowl. And she's not quite able to... Get the shot the where the skip would have liked. So Takapuna is still holding three. Yeah, we were the probably, no, I was going to say they'll probably play one out here because there's a little group of three all narrow and all past the head of the white bowl sitting out there. Yeah, I think that shot selection is correct there, uh, yep. Dave. They are going to try and park one out there in case the kitty would move. She's not over till at uh, the last end, as you know, and they're not taking any chances. Didn't put it out there, however. Lisa Dixon out there with a grin on her face. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure they're confident they've got this game. Yep. Um, they would need a pretty good bowl to change the situation we have at the moment. 
Lucy Sinks pulls up short. Still three down. Take a Puna. Having all the advantage. Now where's this ball going to end up, Dave? She's certainly trying to... Got the cover ball out there this time. Ball. Yes, she has. She's got the cover ball beside the the white uh, yeah, sticker ball from yeah. Cahudia. Yep, that makes the triangle of three out there. Don't think Lucy Shanks will be short this time. She certainly isn't. I think she's put a bit of weight on this one. More direct angle to the kitty. It's coming through the head. Has it got enough turn on it? Nope. There's your answer. Certainly didn't. Unlucky, got the outside. If got it square or inside, could have got a totally different result. Well, what does uh, Glennis Whiteman as skip of the Cahootia team do here to try and get four shots? They hold, they're down three. It is the 14th end. It's not the uh, vital end yet, but this is where they need to try and cut it down to one, maybe two max. I don't think she'll drive. I think she'll draw. I think she'll try and cut it back to one maybe if she can. What's your thought on this one? Well, I'm not sure whether this will be the last played end or not. Um, but yeah, she certainly needs to do something. She needs at least one. If not two, just to keep themselves sort of the chance if there is another end. Good uh, number of spectators in this morning to watch these games, Dave. And uh, yep. it's good to see people supporting uh, Bowles and Hastings uh, for this national championship. Women's fours and men fours being played over three days. Yeah, deep bowl. Lisa Dixon down the back. She's playing safe. Two bowls for Glennis Whiteman to come. It is a narrow line, Dave, so she has got... That's Lucy of, Shanks' bowl coming up. Yeah, well, that certainly cut it back. Yep. Probably just the one down now. She had two options there to move that bowl up and, of course, uh, uh, you know, trail the kitty or take it away from the uh, shot bowl. So that was a good delivery. So it's time now for the three and the skip to have a chat and uh, decide what their best option might be. Certainly having a good look around the head, trying to see it from both perspectives, the player down the far end and as we are looking directly at it. The amount of time they're taking down here would give me the impression that the time limit has run. Need to get our own little clock in here, Kevin, because unlike some of the other greens we've been on, we can't see the clock from where we are today. No, we can't, and uh, we're not quite sure of the time that has been elapsed. Two and a quarter is the official time for um, this particular event. So there is a time limit. All the ends don't have to be played, but once you go to two and a quarter hours, the game should so Lisa Dixon, she's already bowled her first bowl and she bowled that deep. Glennis Whiteman having a good look at this head here and seeing where they can pick up a multiple. What will be needed? Kitty would have to be moved. They're only one down though. But again, by the time being taken for the discussions, I think the bell has gone. 
Yeah, I think you're right, uh, Dave. I'm pretty sure this will be the last end. Certainly taking a time, and that would indicate that it is the last end. You're strolling down to, to play a bowl and thinking about what she has to do. Right, she's attacking the head. To no avail. Not able to be and done. Shake hands. So they're yes, they turning. Do. Yeah, they're turning now and shaking hands. So that particular game, Kahuria versus Takapuna, has uh, run out a winning result for the Takapuna team. They got that shot on the end. So possibly 12 or maybe 13 points to seven. So we just completed round two, uh, Dave, in this uh, morning's uh, national uh, champion of champions women's fours. And we'll be back with you for the next games uh, within about 20 or 30 minutes. So that will be the uh, Lomas Far North RSA team versus uh, Hema, the, the skip of Carlton Cornwall, against the Wairau team Johnsonville versus Renault from Hanuia will be one of the games. It's the two games. I beg your pardon, the two games are there. There'll be two screens, split screen again for the next game. So... That's it for the moment, and we'll be back with you uh, for the next game uh, shortly.
Welcome back to the Bowls New Zealand uh, Somerset Retirement Villages Champion of Champions, Women's and Men's Fours being played here at the Hastings Indoor Bowl Stadium. Our coverage for this session will be a Women's Fours Round 3 match between Carlton and Cornwall from Auckland up against the Far North RSA Northland team on Rink 1. That'll be on the right-hand side of your screen. And on the left-hand side of our screen on Rink 2, we'll see Johnsonville from Wellington play Hanua from Counties Manukau, Johnsonville from the Wellington region. My name is Kevin Gledhill, and I will be joined in commentary with Dave Porteous, a living legend in bowls from the Hastings Club in region. Welcome to the program, Dave. And uh, before we get started, could you tell us the um, names of the teams in Rink 1 from the Far North RSA Club? Uh, yes, Kevin. Uh, Far North RSA, the skip is Anne Lomas, Jean Huxtable, Jewel Phillips, and Ra Zia Wrigley is the lead. Okay, and so they'll be playing against the Carlton Cornwall team. Carlton Cornwall team, as we all know, very, very accomplished uh, group of players here, and their skip will be Karen Emma, and their third will be Karen Yeong. Lisa Preto will play at number two, and their lead will be Linda Ralph. So they're playing on the rink one, they'll be on the right hand side of our screen. So moving on to rink two, which will be playing on the left hand of our screen shortly. Dave, if you could nam name the Johnsonville team and their positions. Yes, Johnsonville team, Skip, June, Wairo. Th the three is Lil George, second Janet Nehemiah, and the lead is Marani Davis. And they'll be up against the county's Manukau. A club side of Hunuia. Hunuia is just out of the Bombay Hills area, and their skip will be Raymond Reno. Their third will be Pauline Hayward. Their second will be Christine Mason, and Jerry Bremner will be the lead. Just before we get started into this game, you'll see on the screen the points table, and as you can see clearly from there, there are some teams that have won two games. You must win three out of four to qualify into the post section. Obviously, you can see there, without me going through all the names, but there's at least one, two, three, four teams that have won twice. And so they only need to get one more win to be able to qualify. And then moving down the, down the line, teams that have had just one victory, there's four teams clearly with one victory. They need to win two more. And uh, there's two teams down the bottom of the screen, as you can see, who have not had any wins at all and uh, no wins means, of course, if they've already played the two games, they are going to be struggling to uh, make the post section. So let's move on now and get into the game. As we said on the uh, left screen, it will be the um, Johnsonville playing the Hanua team. And on the right screen, we will have the Far North RSA against the Carlton Cornwall team. These games are 15 ends to a quarter time limit. And we've just started the, the match, both matches as you can see. The end one will always be on the screen as the end we are playing, not the end that has been completed. And we'll try to uh, spend some time on each uh, rink or each uh, left or right of the screen for perhaps at the end of the time and bring in commentary as you go along on that basis. So Dave, before we get into the game, you've been a long time member of the Hastings uh, Club here and the indoor bowls rinks. Can you, can you tell us a little bit of how and when this club started and the, and the indoor stadium was built? Yes, the, uh, uh, this stadium was built in 2001. Uh, so it's 20 years old. The first tournament was January 2002. Um, it was the club came about as an amalgamation between three clubs: the uh, Heratonga Bowling Club, which was a grass green, uh, had three and a half uh, grass greens; a Karamu Club, which was here where uh, the stadium is, but it was a grass green, and that was taken up. 
and the Heratonga Club, which was a chartered club that we amalgamated with, we formed the, the club and then while this was being built, we played down at the uh, Heratonga Bowling Club for a year as the amalgamated club and then came here and, and started here in 2002. And so we've been going 20 years. The green is 20 years old. It's still in pretty good condition. Uh, we are talking about replacing it, but we're not in any great hurry to do that. Still plays pretty well. Speed about 15 seconds, so that's not too bad. And um, we're reasonably happy with it. And members, do you have many members uh, in this club? Um, when we started, we, the amalgamation was 150 members. We're now down to about 70, uh, so we have reduced. Uh, but we've got a lot of new members, newer people coming in. There's only something like 20 of the original 150 are still playing. I'm one of them, of course, but uh, there's not many others. And you obviously uh, allow this uh, stadium to be used for the PBA competitions? Yep. We play PBA here in winter. We play most of our tournaments in winter. Uh, we have winter leagues with other clubs coming here. We do have summer leagues as well, uh, but we're mainly a winter winter club. The, we're connected to another chartered club, Heratonga Club Closed. We're connected to Clubs Hastings, and they have functions here so that on Monday, we finish here on Sunday, on Monday, a floor goes down over the top of the green and they've got co uh, functions in here for a week. Uh, so we won't be able to play bowls, uh, but it keeps the mother club going and so it keeps us functioning. So with the linkage with the um, RSA club alongside and other uh, community clubs you've mentioned, I guess you get a lot of good community support? Yes, we do. And... Uh, we, we run business house leagues and various other people. Uh, the, um, uh, they have uh, Special Olympics bot bocce in here on Monday nights, um, it, actually on this rink, on rink one, and uh, they practice to go, to go away, uh, oh, yeah. and, and they really enjoy it. So uh, um, yeah, there's about 50 uh, disabled people come and use that. Up in the lounge, we have indoor bowls uh, three or four times a week, you know, the small bowls. Um, and we have um, other people using it from time to time. We have a, a dance group that comes in on a Monday morning, um, gets a lot of people moving. Um, and so there's lots of different things happening here. And talking of some of the members, uh Dean Drummond is one of the more uh, known members yep. of your club who's done very well at both national level and so on. And tell me a little about his, uh, he's moving over to the Club Musgrove in the uh, yeah. Sunshine Coast to play penance, I believe. Yes. Uh, Dean, Dean's 27 years old. He's been in the club for ten, uh, seven years, eight, eight years since he was 19. Um, he has gone to Musgrave Hill. He actually went on Wednesday, and he's now a pelican. And I see him on Facebook. Uh, they're pushing him, and, and and he starts the penance on Saturday, tomorrow. So he's straight into it. Oh, that's good. And uh, you've obviously got other members who have done very well from the Hastings region yeah. as well. In fact, the Hawke's Bay Bowl yeah. Centre is a very, very strong region in New Zealand. Yeah, Murray Glassy is one of our well-known bowlers. Murray's actually a bit crook at the moment, got uh, had bowel cancer, and he's recovering. Uh, but he's he's pretty well known around. Um, Pat Golder, uh, and, and we are strong in the in the centre. We win the sevens pretty well every year. Tony Terry and Mike Isaacson uh, represented the uh, PBA in England two years ago in the pairs. Uh, so we've we've got players who've gone away and and uh, uh, done very well outside the complex as well as in here. Yeah, I know Tony Terry. I think it is, and also uh, Merv Brown yes. are also other members that uh, play out of this club. Yeah, Merv's uh, only <coughs> just come out of juniors. He's in uh, the lead in the Hawke's Bay uh, side. 
and the Hawks play fours. Uh, he's doing very well, um, and and uh, he's um, prominent in the club. Uh, but yeah, we have got very strong bowlers. We've won the sevens, the interclub uh, tournament here for the last three years uh, in Hawke's Bay, and uh, we're representing uh, Hawke's Bay again in Auckland in November. So uh, we're proud to say we're a strong part of Bowls Hawke's Bay. Well, thank you, Dave, for that uh, you know very informative information about the uh, bowls in the Hastings region and some of the players that you're aware of. But we'll get back to the action now as the first end is uh, being completed of the Far North RSA and the Carlton Cornwall Club. And you'll note there that the Far North RSA are ahead uh, one point to nil. They're starting the second end. They're on the right-hand side of our screen. The um, Carlton Cornwall team wearing the yellow and uh, black uniform and the Far North RSA team wearing that multicoloured top, as you can see. Um, the Carlton Cornwall team will be having white stickers on their bowls. We'll be able to indicate uh, who has the shot, and the Far North uh, RSA team will be having black stickers on their bowls. They're on the far right of the screen, and on the left-hand side, as we said, we have the Johnsonville team. They'll be wearing the blue colours in their uniform up against the Hanuia uh, side, wearing white tops as their uniform. The Hanuia side will have white stickers on their bowls and the Johnsonville team will have black stickers so we can clearly identify and hopefully inform the viewers who has the shot. So we'll put our attention on now the left-hand side of the screen which is the Johnsonville Hanua team game and the jack has just been moved. We'll soon pick up the players and their positions shortly as we move into these games. So... The first end on the Johnsonville and Hanua game in progress now on the left, and it's the Johnsonville skip, which will be June Wairau. She will deliver her first bowl. She does have a, a blue set of bowls, and remember, they have the black stickers. Hmm. So from looking at that, uh, Dave, it would appear that uh, the uh, white... Uh, stickered bowl from the county's Manukau team could be holding shot. Yeah, I think it might have just been moved out. I think uh, June Warrior might have knocked uh, one of their bowls in for the shot. So yeah. it's the turn now of Raywin Reno. She also has a, a blue set of bowls and she's the skip for the Hanua side. And this looks like a pretty good delivery coming down here. Bit of weight. Yeah. She has rested that bowl out of the head. And that will be the shot clearly now. That was a very, very good delivery. You can see that with the white stickers on. I think they could have three shots now. They could well have three shots. Thank you, Dave. And it's a challenge now for the Johnsonville skip, June Warrior. All skips have to be up if they're down on the head. They're three down on the head, so... Let's watch this bowl and see whether it can do the job that she would like. Mm. Not quite. Slid past, so you can see there two bowls have been kicked out now. Three. So it is clearly three bowls there. To the uh, Hanua, yeah, Hanua side from the county's Manuka region. They will take three points into the into the game, three points to nil. First end has been completed there. And we turn our attention now over to the right screen. And quite a few bowls are already around the head. That indicates it's the turn now probably of the skips. And we have yeah. Anne Lomas, the skip of the Far North RSA team. This would appear to be, I'll just check in a moment, the Carlton Cornwall players are looking at the head as they are going to give direction to Karen Hema as the skip. They do appear to be holding a few shots. 
So Karen Hema, left-hand bowler with pink bowls, white stickers on. Nice smooth delivery, good action, staying down low over the delivery. She's trying to come through and add to the count because the Carlton Cornwall team clearly have at least three shots there. Mm. And as you can see there, they've just indicated three. Yep. So that's put the Carlton Cornwall team on the board. They were down after the first end. Two ends have been completed. Carnwell Cornwall will go out to a three-point-to-one lead. The Carlton Cornwall team, it must be mentioned, are a very, very good uh, side. They um, are well known in the Auckland region and the four bowlers who are in this women's fours competition are all well performed in all of the disciplines, uh, singles, pairs, triples and fours and I'm expecting them to have a very good tournament uh, this weekend. Uh, they did win the triples I believe last weekend yes. and they've been you know, good right through in uh, singles and Pairs contenders in this uh, champion of championship event over the last three or four weeks, haven't they? Yes. I think Linda Ralph, who's just playing now, was runner-up in the singles to Tania Wheeler. Uh, so she's very well performed. So Linda Ralph, as David just mentioned there, very well performed singles player as she's just delivered her first bowl. Take note, the Cardinal... Carlton Cornwall team have white stickers on their bowls to keep a track of and the Far North team will have the black stickers. We're taking a focus right now on the Carlton Cornwall Far North RSA game. Very good delivery there from the lead bowl for the Far North RSA. That would be Razila Wrigley. It's a great game, Bowls, isn't it, Dave? Um, you can play this at any age, and you have members, as you said, who are young and join young, and members right through into their 80s and 90s who continue to play good bowls. Yeah, well, as we commented, Dean Drummond, Dean actually started at Kiatoa Club just down the road when he was 17, played down there for two years. He's now 27 and a very prominent bowler. Then we've, we've got Ian Mason, who's just joined, come back to our club from Havelock. He's 83, so there's a very well-performed bowler. Far North RSA uh, lead with her second bowl, Rosila Wrigley. She's playing with the red bowls. As we move on now to Elisa Preto, mm. she has a white set of bowls for the Carlton Cornwall team as number two. Very, very promising uh, bowler. Um, partnered up with uh, Leith uh, uh, Selby, I think it is, in, uh, in the Auckland region. And Leith Selby has been an ex-2012 uh, you know, world champion singles bowler. Mm. So they pair up together quite frequently. I believe they are partners or, or they're married. And... So she's getting good instruction from one of the best of the game. But Lisa Preto, yes, a very, very good bowler in the Auckland region and within the Carlton Cornwall Club. So it'll be Jill Phillips is the number two for the Far North RSA. Blue bowls. Left-hand bowler here. Tracking down nicely towards the head. But as you can tell from the uh, skip and Lomas that uh, she was wide by at least a metre. Lisa Preto. Nice smooth delivery on the forehand. It's probably a measure for shot. So she's putting in a position bowl and behind. When you play bowls, you're constantly thinking, aren't you, uh, Dave, to 
what the next player beyond you in the opposite team is likely to bowl and to try to ensure you cover their action. Yes, it's not just uh, getting the shot or doing your own thing. You've got the cover. You've got to uh, do what the skip wants you to do. And uh, a good back bowl is often very important. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. You know, having bowls around the head, building the head, and certainly having back bowls mm. allows the opportunity for the threes and the skips who can then control the game and uh, change the head and uh, dictate what happens. But without those bowls around the head for the lead and two, you're on the defensive, aren't you? Yeah. We find in here on carpet and you know, the various carpet greens around that you are looking to push the kitty, you are looking to trail, and so you do have to have back bowls. As on the other rink there, it's just showing a, a run shot. Um, it's very useful in here. And that run shot uh, has allowed the, uh, you can see you there with the white stickers, which would be the uh, Hanua team. The They've stick. got uh, a couple of bowls there. Oh no, yeah, perhaps it's the black sticker. The yeah. black sticker might well be the bowl that is holding shot, but it was a great bowl to, to get that result. Yeah. And uh, that would indicate that the Johnsonville team are currently perhaps two there down. Sorry, two shots up. Yep. I think Johnsonville's got two. Uh, I think the green ball's third shot. So turning our attention back to the uh, left-hand screen, there's a bit of discussion going on as to what shot she might play. Hanuia ahead three points to nil. They're a small club, only about 40 or 50 members, they told me when I was speaking to one of their members earlier, and they're in the Bombay Hills region, just out of the Papakura area in the uh, county's Manukau zone. So they've done very well to get into this position to be playing in a champion of championship uh, event as the ball comes down and just knocked forward her own ball out of the count. I think you can see there from what the indication from the um, Johnsonville player was that maybe there is two bowls that the Johnsonville team have currently in the head and they are the shot balls. Yep, yep. Yeah, Johnsonville look to have two shots at the moment. Johnsonville also a very, very strong club in the Wellington region, both men's and women's uh, divisions. They have some very, very capable players and always perform well at national events. One ball has been taken out for the Johnsonville team. Looks like it's going to be a measure now to decide the second shot. Good delivery coming down here on the uh, far side, the right side of our screen there. That was not quite sure, just... Yeah who that bowler might have been, but we'll keep our attention on the left hand just momentarily there. They've actually taken out the uh, shot, so the Johnsonville team, they clearly had one, they maybe have two. Soon see on the scoreboard, turning our attention back to the Carlton Cornwall Far North RSA, Karen Hemer, Skip with her pink bowls, They already hold two shots minimum, as you can see. They're both white stickered bowls. But the uh, far north RSA skip and Lomax, as she is entitled to do, has come down to have a look at the head. We're focusing our attention right now on the far north and the Carlton Cornwall teams on the right side of the screen. Clearly two white sticker bowls there. Maybe three, maybe four. Hmm. It's a drawable position though. You'd expect her to just look to a draw, Dave? Yes, I, I think she'll be drawing to um, 
try to beat the uh, blue ball. The indication that she will be drawing, and that's what the name of the game is, isn't it, Dave? It's a drawing yeah. game, and where there's an opportunity to draw, that's what your first option should always be. Yep. Yeah, you got to draw first, and but she has played some weight, and she's got one of them out. She did play with a little bit of weight, which as a skip is always what you have to do if you're three down on the head, as they were on that occasion. Could well have been four. But we'll soon find out when they change the scoreboard. But the Carlton Cornwall off to a very good start. About to play the third end, or they've already played the third end. We'll find out shortly when the score is changed. It was definitely three. Could well have been four. Hmm. There's only one. Maybe only the one, because yeah, the scoreboard it's... says Carlton Cornwall are ahead by four points to one, and they're about to play the fourth end. Hmm. Moving on to the left screen. 3-0, sorry, three points to two to Hanuia. And Hanuia oh. with the white stickers. Yeah, so Johnson and Johnsonville having a black stickered bowl, a holding shot currently. It's very important for those lead bowlers to get close to the kitty, isn't it, Dave? And, and uh, allow your number two to put a position bowl and then, of course, um, let the skips dictate uh, the course of action from there. Yes. Uh, uh, by drawing the shot, you give your team options, and you can cover or you can uh, draw another one. Or, or uh, But if you haven't got the shot, you've got to play other, uh, other types of shots, which are more difficult. It's always important also to remember that the lead and the two should... That is their role. Their role is to get two bowls close to the kitty, try to stay on the same hand, try not to have two options on both sides of the kitty, which then can allow a following player to, you know, get a, a, a little touch yep. off either side. So you generally stay on the, the hand that you prefer unless the skip calls you otherwise. Yeah, you probably only change your hand if, if there's a need to. Um, and... Uh, I see in the other game, uh, Linda Ralph has just uh, drawn two shots, so that's pretty good. So we will put our attention on to the Carlton Cornwall game right now. It's four points to one for the Carlton Cornwall team as Lisa Prito with her white ball comes down as a number two position in the team. Very good delivery, right up to the kitty, just falling short, but excellent result. So Jill Phillips, she will attempt with her bowl coming off her left hand to try and cut down the count. It appears to be a little bit narrow, but she has got some weight on it. And she's trying to push that ball out, which she has. Whether it's the shot or not, we won't know just yet, but it's probably a measure. Very good delivery, Jill Phillips. It looks like from the way Karen Hemo, she's going to have a look at it, but she wanted to have yeah, one down. So there you heard uh, from Dave, it's one down for the Carlton Cornwall team. They are down. And the direction she's giving to Karen de Jong, here number three, appears to be, looks like it might be a backhand delivery. I beg your pardon, Lisa Pro. Pido, second shot, my mistake. So Lisa Pido, second shot with the white bowl. She won't be too unhappy about that. It's over the head. So 
Jill Phillips. Jill Phillips coming down now. Just going to track a little bit too wide and not come home in the way she would like. You mentioned earlier the green running about 15 or 16 seconds. Perhaps they're taking a little bit of time to just, you know, get uh, into the game and and determine the, the weight and the length they would play with. Yeah, uh, most people practised here yesterday and I, I know they were um, conscious of weight and wanting to see the speed of the green. A lot of people when they come here think it's faster than it actually is. Um, they seem to think they're coming to an 18 second green. It's never been faster than 16 and it's probably about 15 at the moment. Okay, so Jean Huxtable is number three for the Far North RSA team. She is putting down her first bowl <coughs> of this end. And yet again, she won't be too happy about that. A little bit wide of the mark. Allows an opening for Karen De Jong with the black bowls, with the white stickers. She's coming down on her backhand. It's a measure for shot, but we believe it might be the black bowl. And she's going to try and push that one out. Didn't quite get the result she liked. She certainly was in the right direction, but it's still the black bowl of the Far North Club holding shot currently. As we await where this ball will end up. It's Karen Young's second ball. Big part, that was Jean Huxtable. But from here, Dave, it looks like it's a black stickered bowl. Yeah, it looks like the blue bowl with the black sticker has got the shot. Probably slightly jack high. It's important to have a discussion with your third, you know, when you uh, start to look at the options, isn't it? Uh, you're a part of a team. It is a team game, and every person within the team has a responsibility to do the very best for their team and has a contribution to make when there's a chance to uh, decide what shot selection should be made. Yeah. There has to be discussion, but the, the skipper's the person, she's got to play the ball, so she makes the, the decision. I agree. The skip has the final call. And so it is the turn of the skip. Karen Hema, left-hand bowler. She's looking to shift that kitty, and she has done so. What a good shot. Just shifted it enough to push it alongside the white bowl of Lisa Prado. Should have two shots there. It could even be three. As, uh, Potentially three, but... Uh, a blue ball. That just shows you the class of the skip. Karen Hema, very, very experienced uh, skip. Hmm. Very well performed in all disciplines of the game. She knew exactly what to do, and she delivered that with perfection. And Lomas is now trying to reduce the count. Probably not. There's probably two shots there. Hmm. Potentially three. As we watch the ball coming down now for the Johnsonville team. Not quite where she'd like, but it's over the head. It's very important, as we said earlier, that uh, bowls are over the head. It allows the skips and the threes to play to something and uh, 
if they're not there and you've got too many short bowlers, it can be a nuisance, can't they? Yes, certainly can. So there's been no change in the head position in the far north in Carlton Coulton game. Carlton Cornwall. <coughs> I've noticed um, uh, some of our better bowlers, Dean Drummond's an example, going to wider balls to make sure that they can get round balls, and particularly in, on the carpet in here. So they, they've deliberately chosen wider rather than narrower balls. That's a good point, Dave, because if you have a set of narrow bowls and you do have some wing bowls to get around it, it's a quite a difficult task mm. to get around them and stop in the position you'd like. So there was an attacking shot there from the... Um, that would have been the far north team, but they're definitely two down. You can see the signal made there, but it was an attacking shot to try to get the uh, advantage back, and uh, we've just been given the results of games that are being played right now so i'll leave it up to you um dave if you can indicate to the viewers how those results are going uh so papanui are playing wakefield papanui's christchurch uh and papanui is leading uh, after five ends are leading six one takapuna uh playing hokanui who had a Real hard job to get here, uh, so they're probably a bit jaded. Um, they, uh, Takapuna's leading 5-1 after four ends. Um, Paratoot from Taranaki after five ends are leading Kensington 4-2. And Otaki from Kapiti uh, leading Marlborough uh, are all square with Marlborough after five ends, five all. OK, back to the action on the uh, right screen with the Carlton Cornwall and the Far North RSA you just saw then. Very, very good first bowl from Linda Ralph. Just just ahead of the kitty as a, as a lead. Getting your bowls close to the kitty is all the skip can want from you, and uh, she's done that with perfection. She will now line up for her second bowl, the Far North. RSA lady, Razila Wrigley, couldn't uh, better or match that bowl. It's a very, very uh, good composite uh, composition from the Carlton Cornwall side, so Cornwall side, as I said earlier. They've been well regarded in New Zealand circles at national level in whatever discipline they play. And this combination you're seeing out there now is a very, very accomplished uh, group of four players. Anyway, attention, we'll move back to the Johnsonville-Hanua match. I think you'll find there, Dave, that the white stickered bowl from Hanua is the shot bowl currently. So I think uh, yeah, they've certainly got one shot, and then it's a measure between the blue bowl at the back and the white stickered bowl short of the check. So Hanua's definitely got one shot. As I said earlier, Hanua, you know, a very, very small club, very few members, both men and women, though, in the small club just out of the Bombay Hills area. And for them to win their club title, first of all, and then the county's Manuka Champion of Championship fours, I spoke to one of their players earlier, and they were wrapped to get that position to then be able to come here to Hastings and play in this Champion of Championship event. Uh, so they're very pleased to be here and putting up a good show. It's three all at the moment. Johnsonville. Very, very strong club in the Wellington region. So that'll be a good contest, that one. Yeah. So a bit of a run shot came down there with the black stickered bowl of the Johnsonville club. Yeah, they're attacking early to make sure that um, they try to dislodge the shot bowls. I think you can see there there's probably two, maybe three, Dave. Yes, could be three. So that's the skip for the uh, county's Manukau side, uh, Raywin Renault. Now 
No, that wasn't the skip. That was Pauline Hayward. Beg your pardon, the skips are down this end. That was Pauline Hayward with that last bowl. So now up to the turn of Lil George for the Johnsonville team. She's been asked to have a little bit of a run. But narrow. this is not going to do what she was being asked to do. Just run by. Clearly shows their indication to attack early rather than late, though, Dave, and, and try to scatter the bowls when you get the chance. Yeah, well, she's got a good back bowl, so if she is able to move things around, she's the kitty should go towards her bowl. Pauline Hayward. Taking some time to focus on this delivery. She's trying to add to the count. They probably have two, maybe three close bowls. Beg your pardon, she was the skip. We got that slightly wrong. Two bowls have been taken out. They're measuring for the third. And if we go back onto the uh, right side of our screen, it's clearly obvious that there is four bowls there for the Carlton Cornwall team. Both their lead and two have put two very good bowls each around the head. Karen de Jong trying to yeah, put a position bow in there behind in case the kitty were to move, which she has done very well. She's bringing it around to try and get it in behind the head. Jean Huxtable with her delivery. She's just going to try and come in and dislodge the shot bowls, which is a pretty good attempt. But she got the slide on the wrong yeah. side, didn't she, Dave? Yeah, she came off the bowl rather than pushing it through. And she'd be a bit disappointed. She may have got third shot out of it, but um, Cornwall's, Carlton Cornwall's certainly holding two. And there is a good discussion going on in the middle of the rink as they cross over, uh, determining what shot they would choose here. Carlton Cornwall holding two. Clearly holding two. Their lead and two have done a very good job and their three has just put the position bowl in, which is doing what you normally try to do once you hold shot, get some position bowls in. So where's this little pink bowl going to end up? Karen Hemer with her pink delivery. Yet again, going for a position. Mm. She's prepared to accept there's two shots, maybe three. It's time to put a position bowl, should the jack move. And Lomas. She's coming down on her backhand. She certainly had to wait for that shot, but the line just wasn't quite where she'd like it to be. Yeah, she's a little bit wide. It was good weight because it would have moved things around, but she was a bit wide. <laughs> Staying with the Carlton Cornwall Far North RSA team. Karen Hema. She's not quite going to get the results she wants here, unless she's trying to put in a bit of a block on the backhand for her opposing skip could well have been what she was trying to do come on Janet oh. I think the far north lady is certainly trying to break the head up and she looks to have played a pretty good shot here still a little bit wide you said it correct there, Dave, just a little bit wide. She had the right weight for it. She was trying to, uh, you know, bowl through the head. 
and try and dislodge the uh, shot bowls. Two have been taken out. And take note, they're both white bowls. That's Lisa Prado. Mm. Two bowls there. No, three have been called. Yeah, the blue one. Was. So Carlton Corn will march on now to a 9-1 lead. It's a great confidence boost for them. So let's turn our attention back to the Johnsonville Hanua game. And it's the black stickered bowl at the front. Mm. That's the Johnsonville bowl. That is the shot. So where did you see that bow end up, uh, Dave? Yeah, the uh, Hulua lady was trying to uh, beat her own ball, her own second shot, but she uh, was a little bit heavy. So it's Lil George yep. with the red bowl. Right yeah, again, just taking Round a to, right up to it. little bit too wide of a, a line there. She's not going to come home with that ball. Pauline Hayward. She's already played one bow on this end. At least you're up here. Just, uh, just your weight. The green bowl is on its way. It's a pretty good bowl here. Looks to be on a pretty good line. Mm. Just going to run past. I think she's trying to move the kitty back to her own ball, so she was just a little bit heavy. The red bowl of Lil George is now on its way. And she's putting in a position bowl there just in case the kitty is to move as you correctly identified Dave that um, that's what the previous player for the uh, Gandhi's Manukau side who knew were trying to do just wasn't able to trail the kitty at that stage the uh, Hunua ladies had four back bowls so you needed to get amongst them to stop them getting a big number and getting a big number you know, in the 15-end game can be the turning of the game, can't it? You know, you've got to try to eliminate uh, getting big scores against you. Yeah, you've got to keep things tight. Dropping a big number makes you, uh, okay. put you on the you back foot. So you've you got, got to keep things That's tight if you can. <coughs> Radio. so we have Raywin Renal, skip of the county's Manukau side, Hanua. Got a rather a tight line and a bit heavy. A bit heavy. Your line was really good. She so is one down on the head with the black bowl of the Johnsonville team. June Wairau with her delivery. They hold shot. Can she add to the count? I think she's just a little bit short, just out of it. Okay. There. There's a good crowd coming this, after, this, this morning, afternoon, to, to watch the bowls uh, here in the Hastings Stadium, isn't there, Dave? Yes, um, we do get good crowds here. Uh, it's comfortable to watch inside, you're not out in the cold. So we do get people here and we've got all the facilities to cater for them. Excellent facilities. Uh, my first time at the Hastings Indoor Bowling Rink and I think you've got great facilities here and you can be very proud of what you can offer the Hastings community with your facilities here. Yeah, as I say, it's been here 20 years. Um, we've uh, always thought we're not 
as well advertised as we'd like to be, so we've put some caricatures of bowlers on the outside. You may have seen them when you came in, um, just so that people know we're here, but uh, we do get good community support. So the Johnsonville team picked up a shot there with their uh, black sticker bowls. And uh, we move now our attention over to the far north RSA and the Carlton Cornwall team. And as you can see, the Carlton Cornwall team clearly ahead, nine points to one, and yeah, making a, making it difficult for the far north RSA because they've always had bowls around the head. The first two bowls of the lead and the number two. Yeah, Linda Ralph, the lead, has got two shots there, and, and there. I think the lead. Uh, Lisa ball, might have uh, a third yeah. shot. It just puts a lot of pressure on the opposition team when the score starts to mount and you just can't match or better it as a leader or two, then the rest of your team you know, have to do the job for you. And uh, when no one's trying to bowl short or not get the shot, but uh, you're up against class opposition. You've really got to focus and, and you know, when you step to the mat, have your whole intention and your objective to get a good ball down the track. Yeah, it, always if the lead and two can get their balls there, it does put the pressure on the team. It means the rest of the team has to play probably attacking shots, and it's not as easy. So we have the skips. Walking down now to assess the situation. They don't need much encouragement here. You can clearly see that there's two bowls, the shot bowls, the two blue bowls with the white stickers. And that would be Linda Ralph's bowls and also Lisa Perdue's bowls are pretty close as well with the two white bowls. So Karen Hemer would just be trying to add to the count. Getting around the short bowls and but she's not going to be able to do that on this occasion. Could be a nuisance bowl, nuisance bowl if a runner decides to be played. But uh, Ian Lomas, I believe, will just try and draw. Yeah, I think she's looking to draw. There's plenty of room to draw in there. Coming home well, but just a little bit too heavy. But uh, should there be a movement of the kitty, it will be to her advantage. It's the turn of Hema now as Skip for the... And she's done the right thing, just nudging up Lisa Perdue's bowls. Yeah, I think she was deliberately playing to the back to prevent a run. Over. Direction being given now by Jean Huxtable to her skip and Lomas. Yet again, it's a draw. Getting close to the kitty here, Dave, look. Yeah, very good ball. Oh, a little bit heavy, but... Just over the head and a bit heavy. So yeah. two bowls at least will be taken out for Carlton Cornwall. That might be all. So having a good look. It is time to measure. Karen De Jong is the number three, will do the measure. They have two shots already. Good home. No, just the two have been called. That takes the Carlton Cornwall team out to 11 to 1 lead. As they're about to start the eighth end. <coughs> That's on the right hand side of our screen. And moving back to the left hand, Hidouya, six points to four. They're currently on 
in six. Remember, there are 15 ends per game. Two and a quarter hour time limit. So I think Johnsonville could be holding three uh, shots here. So it looks like that, Dave. Yeah. There's the black stickers there. Yep. There are the ones that the county's Manukau side need to try and dislodge or get a bit of a wick off them. This is a good ball coming in here if it's got the nice weight. Probably a fourth shot. Yeah, it's our turn. We've given them a head start. Come on. Pauline Hayward. She's on the forehand. Yeah, that's okay. She's trying to bump up the bow on the front, which she has done to perfection. Just slipped in behind the kitty. What a great bow there, Dave. Mm, yeah, very, very good bow. She knew what she was trying to do, and she did it. Oh, exactly. She was given the direction to boost up that short bowl. She hit it square, just came directly onto the kitty, and that was the best option by far. Yep. That's a great confidence boost, not just for her, but for her team. Come on, Razia. We've got Linda scared now. Come on. Hanui uh, ahead on the scoreboard, 6-4, and they just got the advantage back because there was clearly three shots they were down. Maybe two they were down, but they're certainly not now. Yep. Good shot. We'll remain uh, focus on the left-hand screen as the skips have a good look around the head, assessing their options before they walk down and prepare to deliver their bowl. The green bowl, though, of the Hanuia side that is holding shot. You can play either hand, you choose. Radio Johnsonville. Skips first delivery. The intention is clear. The intention is to try and dislodge that green bowl of Pauline Hayward. So what do you think the county's Manukau side will be doing here, Dave? Oh, I think... Uh, Johnsonville's trying to move the kitty, so I think they'll try to be over um, if wherever they decide the kitty will go to, and they'll try to play to that spot. Looks like she's asking her to play the forehand just over the head. Oh. No, she's chosen the backhand. Yeah, I think she's just gone for a back ball. And the skip has the final say. Yep. And she decided the backhand deep bowl would be the option. They do hold the shot. So June oh. Wairau. Yeah, skip of the Johnsonville team. <laughs> she just bumped up a, a white stickered bowl. That's not changed the head though. No. So they'll take the one and gladly so. That was a very, very good delivery from Pauline Hayward with her green bowl to get that shot back. That uh, wasn't looking too promising for a while there. But no. Hanuia now out to a seven points to four lead. They've completed six ends. They haven't got to the halfway stage yet. Turning our attention now back to the far north RSA and Carlton Cornwall uh, good track. match. This is a little bit different than the previous ends, Dave. They're a little bit looser bowls this time. 
Yeah. Most of the bowls are short. Yeah. In front of the kitty. Far North do have one over the head. It's maybe in a chance of having the shot. But uh, the Carlton Cornwall bowls are all quite short. Yeah, Karen de Jong's uh, black bowl there with the white sticker correctly just bumped up uh, her teammate's bowl to now take the shot back. This could be an interesting bowl with that nice little touch there. Oh, it could well be. It's probably a measure. It's hard to tell from this angle here, Dave, but that's the shot or not. Yeah, it came just across the kitty. I think it's fairly close. Uh, as you say, it could be a measure between that bowl and the Carlton Cornwall um, and the Ralph's bowl. So with Hema, skipper of the Carlton Cornwall team, Carlton Cornwall uh, Bowling Club is a very, very well established bowling club in a nice part of Auckland and, and uh, the facilities there are exceptionally good. She comes down with her bowl. And it's now the turn of and Lomax. Probably the shot at the moment is held by the blue big bowl with the white sticker, which would be the Carlton Cornwall bowl of Linda Ralph. Well, she's receiving some instructions here from Karen de Jong lining up for her delivery. A few practice swings. Staying low over the bowl, isn't she? And, uh, you know, guiding it down towards its intended target, the palm to the heavens. Yeah, very, nice very, very good delivery. Uh, you know, delivery style. Just wasn't quite able to get the right uh, line that occasion. And Lomax attempting to get around the wing bowl, but just didn't have the weight for that. Needed to have a bit more weight put on that to get around those wing bowls. So the <laughs> far, north finally, finally far North team looks like they may well have, perhaps, yes, perhaps they may have wow. gained that <laughs> shot. Yes, it was the Far North team, so that'll please them. The skip has uh, walked up the uh, rink, looking to perhaps change the length of the end here with a shorter end. Didn't quite get the check where she was hoping it to be. It's always a good strategy, isn't it, or a tactic uh, to change the length yeah. of the head uh, when you're down especially and you get a chance to, you know, just change things up a bit. Yeah, if you're down on the board, you've got to change things around. So either you bring the mat up or you play a shorter length uh, end. Um, I do see a lot of uh, skips like like to uh, have their skip, have their lead, bring the mat up. Maybe it upsets the other team. Very important, though, when you do change the the length, uh, as you just said there. But um, Razi uh, La Wrigley, with her red bowls, was unable to take advantage of that and, and they put the yeah. pressure back on the Carlton Cornwall team. It just allows now Linda Rolf, as you see, look at that bowl. Yeah. She now has the shot, and that advantage has been yeah. taken away directly. As you said, the skip asked for a shorter length, and the lead bowled it a bit further than she uh, wanted, so the lead had to 
had to correct it and get there, the and crack. she did. Give she has, crack. however, played a very good second hey, ball good and giving giving a chance. She played that with a bit more weight, a bit more direct to the kitty. Um, she knew her mistake. The first bowl didn't uh, get the effect of this. As we talk about, you know, first bowl effectiveness. She didn't have that, so she corrected that with her second. But unfortunately for her, there's still one down on the head. Yeah, there's a bit more room to draw, so that might help the rest of the team. Jack has been dislodged, but it's still a drawing ball position. There's no other bowls that can uh, get in the way of the, a nice, you know, straight up and down draw. Jill Phillips will try to get one close for her team. She's done it pretty well. Good delivery there. Lisa Preto lining up, all focus and attention at the job at hand. Of course, when the kitty's been moved, you have to change your line slightly, and, and it's a matter of working out how much you have Same to do again. that. Agree, uh, Dave. On that occasion, Lisa Prado not quite able to get both the line and the the weight as she would like, but she has a second bowl. And bowls is all about correction, isn't it? Uh, yep. You know, you might not get one the way you like, but you've got a second bowl to refocus. But this is a good delivery coming down with the uh, black sticker, but just pulling up short. Certainly had the right line. Where's this ball going to end up? Well, Lisa certainly put more weight on, but she's got too much weight, in fact. Yeah, that's a case of overcorrecting, isn't it? Yeah. Still, as you say, once you've played a short ball, you must be up with your second ball, and a lot of the time you will be over, but she's got a very good back ball if there is movement. Huxtable's ball coming in now, trying to add to the count. And all of those bowls that you see on the rink at the moment on the far right screen are short of the kitty. They just haven't been able to get that length. It's a little bit shorter than the ones they've been used to playing. So they're taking a bit of time adjusting to how much extra weight or less to take off. This is going to be a good bowl coming home here. Yeah, very good bowl here. Brilliant shot there to get around those wing bowls. Nice arc considering the jack had been moved. And that would have been Karen de Jong. Through here, sort of a little bit of a race. Through there. Delivered that to perfection. This bowl's got a bit more weight, a bit more purpose. Nearly. Can it clip that off? <laughs> That's like okay. playing pool, mate. It was uh, going to hit there and slide off and perhaps take that uh, shot bowl out of the head, but not to be. Yeah, but it got the edge of the ball, it may very well have moved it off the head. You can see the little bit of extra weight she's thrown on that uh, delivery as it came out of her hand. And she's just trying to get up close to the second shot, maybe get second shot, but not able to do so. <coughs> Having second shot is always a good ball, isn't it, uh, Dave? In yeah. a, you know, oh, a, a team of four. In a competition or a yeah. tournament, um, well, as we said before, you're trying to limit the damage. You're trying not to drop a, a number, and so if you haven't got the shot, you've got to try to get the second shot. Yeah, good advice. Getting the second shot is uh, just as good, if not better, sometimes than getting the shot. Well, particularly when you're ahead on the board, you're, it's talking about making sure you don't drop numbers.
So what can Ian Lomas do now for the far north RSA team? There's a lot of balls in, in front, so it's hard to move the ball, but she's playing the backhand and probably looking to play a bit of weight. We'll watch this ball as it comes down into the head. Starting to break now. Can she get a wick and move it in closer? It was a good attempt. But clearly, the black ball with the white sticker, Carden Cornwall, holding shot. We can turn our attention back to Johnsonville and Hanua right now. Hanua ahead, eight points to four. And the good ball from Pauline Hayward, that green ball was clearly the shot yes. for this end. It's the eighth end. Beg your pardon. That wasn't Pauline Hayward's ball because it's a light green ball. It was uh, Jerry Bremner with the light green ball yeah. that is holding shot currently. Apologies for that. She's the lead player for the Hanua team. They've now got Christine Mason playing. She's a bit narrow, but she was trying to play up to the ball. So easy to do, isn't it, to uh, just miss your line? Yeah. Um, at times, uh, you don't try to, but just for that particular delivery, sometimes things just don't go no. out of your hand the way you'd like. No, and we find this particular rink, uh, the side they're playing, the forehand side coming back here, is uh, a lot tighter than some of the other rinks, and, and it takes a while to adjust. Now it's the turn of Christine Mason. She has a, a purple coloured ball. She played a better ball here, okay, but Janet. still not up to the Looking head. Just trading with this particular <laughs> length. Just mm. not being able to get that ball to extend out a little bit further. It may be in the delivery, just not extending their uh, arms towards the target. Oh, this is a good looking bowl here, David, as it comes down and rests close to the kitty. Excellent delivery there. As Janet Nehemia, she's uh, played right next to the kitty. She'll be happy with that bowl too. Very experienced bowler too. Now it's the turn of Pauline Hayward with the uh, darker green bowl. She's got a bit of a, a feather there off the short bowl. Right, so we'll turn our attention back to the Carlton Cornwall team. Clearly ahead, 12 points to two. This is the ninth end, and they're bowling very well as a combination. It's Karen de Jong. Big pun. Linda Ralph, her first Linda. ball coming down. Yeah, good delivery there, just over the head. Yeah, it's always good to be just over the head for the lead, and then that gives options to the team. Rosilo Wrigley for the Far North RSA team. You can see it's not on the uh, screenshot, so she wouldn't be happy with that delivery. Back to Linda Ralph now. Clearly the uh, black sticker bowl over here in the Johnsonville Hanua game have the shot, uh, Dave. Yes, that's still Janet, uh, um, Janet Nehemiah's bowl. She's still got the shot. This looks quite interesting as the red ball comes down and just dislodges that ball out of the head. Probably 
probably still only one. Might be no, probably still only one shot. But uh, Johnson will look to have uh, a lot of bowls on the head. Uh, who know? Uh, only got the one second shot. The delivery there from Ra Zila Wrigley. Not quite the shot, but uh, in a good position around the head. It's the white ball of Lisa Prado now coming, arcing towards the head. And he were pleased with that delivery. Clearly, Linda Rolfe has the lead for the Carlton Cornwall team. With the blue bowl, has the shot. And this is going to be the second shot, I believe. All right, it's going to be the shot, perhaps. It was a good ball from Jill Phillips. In the far north. Can this ball hold? It can, <laughs> it won't be the shot, still got it. but it's around the head, and that's all that's important. For the first and the second uh, bowlers within the team, that's your job, that's your objective. Nothing more, nothing less. If you do that, you've done a good job for your team. Yeah, good line again. Jill Phillips now. This has real promise, Dave, if it uh, keeps its line and weight. Yeah, just probably a bit short again. We'll keep our attention on the far north Carlton Cornwall game for the moment. There's... Karen Young into the black bowls. Very good bowl here. Just resting on those shot bowls, and she has now taken the shot. I think yeah. we're one down. Oh. Yep, that's us in there. Yeah, the final uh, three, uh, Skip thinks she's one down. So You'll notice, Dave, also they're all playing on the same hand. Well, not so much this one. Take the jack in the ditch. She's trying to Ooh. get that jack away, but... Unable to do so. It just means if there's bowls on the one hand, as you come down on that hand, you've got something to work off, haven't you? And it's yeah. a good strategy. Yeah, it is. It's, it's good to play it into bowls and stay there, or you've got something to stop you. Um, that playing the open hand is often very hard because there's nothing, nothing, nothing to help you. Karen De Jong won't be too displeased with that bowl. It's over the head. And uh, the hold shot. She's got a bowl it. behind the head. Round it. Oh. Hard luck. Could that be the shot now, Dave? No, I think it's still a bit short. I, I think it's uh, the white sticket bowl might still have the shot. The far north lady, yeah. The far north lady felt the uh, uh, there was a measure, but she thought she was one down. They're on the ninth end uh, this game on the far right of your screen. Twelve points to two, Carlton Cornwall ahead. They've certainly uh, shown their class today, haven't they, in this game? Yes, they certainly have. After this end, there's only six ends to go, and it could be. 10 or 11 behind, so uh, uh, Carlton are, uh, are trying to uh, dominate the game. 
Okay, Dave, if you can give us an update of the scores uh, on the other matches being played right now. Yeah, we've got an update on the scores. Uh, Papua Nui, after 10 ends, uh, Christchurch, they're leading Wakefield 12-6. Uh, Takapuna, after 8 ends, are leading uh, Hokanui 11-4. Paratoot from uh, Taranaki, after 10 ends, are leading Kensington 8-7, so it's quite close. And um, uh, Martinborough are leading Otaki after 10 ends, 10-8. Thank you, Dave. So uh, back to the action now, and we have the pink pole from the far north club of... Uh, well, it's the far north RSA club from the far north. She's just rested that shot off the um, Carlton Cornwall team. Very, very good ball with her pink. Well, we'll wait and see down here. It may not have happened. There. Oh, no, sorry. Yes. Beg your pardon. I think the pink, the pink ball, ball is Karen Hemer's ball. My mistake there. I just happened to see the two skips have a little hug and I just wondered perhaps it might have been because the um, Far North team had just got the shot but that wasn't to be it's clearly the uh, shot of Karen Hema the skip yeah I think uh, Carton Cornwall have two shots there green speckled bowl of Anne Lomas She's coming down with a bit of weight to try and flick that out of the head, but unsuccessful. Two down is the call. Yep. So Carlton Corn will now march out to a further strong lead. They're 14 points to two. They've played nine ends. Very comfortable margin, isn't it, yep. Dave? Yep. 14 points to two, as you see there clearly. It's going to be a tough uphill battle for the Far North RSA team to peg this bat. They're on the 10th end. So it means uh, Far North have got six ends to get 12 shots, two, two shots an end to uh, be even. It also means when they do win the end, there's a chance to look at strategy and changing something that they're doing yeah. in their game, yeah. being it shortening the length or lengthening the end, bringing the mat up, yeah, keeping it know. right back on the two metre, whatever, but... Um, and then they've got to have confidence in their decision that their bowlers can actually deliver on that end. Yeah, it's no good changing things if you can't, uh, if it's not going to help you. But, but if it's not working, you have to change something. Linda Ralph's playing very, very well here. Very As you'd expect too, a top bowler. She's a very, very a good yeah. exponent at singles. She's won plenty of singles titles, as we mentioned earlier, and she's showing now why that is the case. Uh, it's great to have a very, very good singles uh, player playing lead in a team of fours too because yeah, you're almost guaranteed to have something close around the head. They're very, very good at draw bowling. If we watch her action now, for those viewers, you'll see why she is so consistent. Nice, smooth delivery coming out of her hands nicely. Seems to pick the line straight away and the weight. Yep. Not quite uh, as good as the first ball, but nevertheless, two very good bowls as the lead. You might get lucky. <laughs> Just seems like, uh, Dave, if you don't get your line, you're going to get punished here on these yeah. rinks, I mean, if you don't get the yeah. break point in the right place and if you don't stretch the ball out yeah. to there, it's going to cut under the head a bit. Yeah, uh, they don't run away badly, so you don't get badly punished, but if you're no. under the line, you're, you're not going to get the shot. And uh, uh, like all, all carpet greens, uh, it's uh, you've got to be consistent. Yeah. Just round that uh, one, 
we think because you haven't got wind, and, well, I do think there's a lot of hot air in here, but um, you, um, you you need to be more consistent. If we go back, you commented earlier about Dean Drummond. Dean, when he was here, he used to finish work at two o'clock. He would put two hours practice every day, playing on each of the rinks to see what the inconsistencies were. He, he really put the time in, and I'm sure he will continue to do so in Australia. Well, it is a, it is a sport when all said and done, and uh, you know, perfect practice is important to um, ensure that you can step up in a competition and know that you've done the work behind the scenes and the practice rinks yep. so that you can have confidence when you step into, into a game. So practice is important in all sports and especially so in this one. Yeah. It, it, Although it, it seems it, a simple skill, just stepping forward and, and putting a bowl down the rink, there's a lot more to it than that and it's the consistency is what you're after in bowls. Yeah. That's it. You need, need to be able to do the same thing all the time and the only way you can do that is if you practice all the time and... and perfected. And so muscle memory kicks in when you are playing yeah. the game and you don't even have to think about it, you just step up and your muscle memory kicks in and you know for that length how much weight to put on it and so on. Yep. Lovely weight. Radio back to the Hanua uh, uh, Johnsonville team, it is the turn of the skips, they're on the ninth end, Hanua ahead 8-5, small country club out of the Bombay Hills area up of uh, Papakura, County's Manukau area. So it would be Raywin Renault. She has blue bowls with the white stickers. She's having a bit of a run here, so they're clearly down on the head. I think she's one down. Just leave you beat that. Oh. Well, wow, what a great shot. Uh, she, she got the result she wanted, it knocked that bowl out, and as they're kicking them back now, it indicates that was the last bowl of the head. They certainly have one shot. A great skipper's... Uh, bowl there as they measure up for the second. Yeah, she certainly played into her own bowls to knock them up. Uh, again, knew what she was doing and she got the result. Certainly a great bowl. Might have two here. We'll see. It was perfect line, it was perfect weight. Kept the bowl on the rink. And we'll soon see in a minute. Just one, I think. Just the one, we believe. But if you march along one at a time, it's uh, still mm. keeping your nose in front, and that's all you need. One bowl per head. It's now nine points to five. You know, ahead from Johnsonville. So that'll be nine points to five as they're about to begin the tenth end. Coming back to the far north RSA and Colton Cornwall match. The kitty has been moved. It's off centre, but you'll clearly see two white stickered bowls holding shot. Yep. Yet again, they've got bowls around the head, so if the kitty does move, they know they've got a chance to pick up the shot. And uh, as a team, collectively, they're doing everything they should do. They know their roles, and they're playing very, very well. I think Carlton were holding two or three there, and Far North played weight, but, but Carlton had back balls too, so they kept the shot. Right, yeah, let's watch this pink bowl of Karen Hema. Coming down towards the kitty. We can't see where it's going to be ending up just yet. They do have two shots. On that angle there, we don't see the pink bowl in shot. No, they might have gone in the ditch. It could be far out to the right. I think she was trying to make sure she was round the blue bowl so she didn't knock it on. No, stay there. You just have to take a flash of more green.
ball has been delivered from the far north team. That looks like it could be a good ball. What a great ball, just pushing up the black ball that was a little bit short of the kitty, but that's certainly given her the shot, and you can see there, Karen Rema has been given the instruction. Let's have a run at this. He's lining up for it. Could this be on target? Yes, it is. Cleanly clipped out the kitty. What a brilliant shot there. She's probably killed it as well. The toucher is in the ditch. Where did the kitty end up? We don't see it on the rink at the moment, Dave. No, I think Lin Linda Ralph thought that it was killed, but uh, it must be close to the Yeah, peg. okay, so come in this way. Where will I have to stop? We'll find out okay. shortly, so it must still be alive. Okay. They haven't conceded that end as a kill. The um, Hanuia three placing her foot uh, where she would like the ball to be. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. The far north RSA team, I got that wrong. I was momentarily distracted. And yes, they have kicked the bowls back, so as you see there, it's a one shot uh, end there to the far north RSA. Decision time now, they've rested the advantage back. They only have to side on the length of the head. I'm anticipating it'll be a shorter end. Just to change things up. It, wasn't a short bowl inside, it is, they've thrown a shorter end, Jack. That's what you need to do, don't you, Dave, when yeah. you've just Thanks. won the end and you're behind on the scoreboard, you've got to think of something different. Yeah. At that time, she was asked to throw it short and she, she got it fairly short. It's only a couple of metres over the um, peg. Caught in, uh, sorry, Carlton Cornwall though, out to a very, very good lead. 14 points to three, or 14 shots to three. Yep, nearly. Uh, very, very consistent at uh, whatever length is chosen. They combine together very well as a team. Won many Auckland uh, centre titles and club titles and have featured in each of the uh, Champion of Championship uh, women's events in this last you know, period of weeks that we've had. Yes. As I say, Linda was here earlier in the singles and got to the final, but lost to uh, Tony going, Wheeler. Roger. I think that was uh, Warren Rapper's first uh, 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 Bowls New Zealand champion to champion title. So Tania was pretty happy about that. Yep. Tania was a, a regular participant in the PBA here. Now she plays in uh, Nine Eye, but uh, she used to come here a lot, so we know who will. And Linda has been here in the PBA. Oh, a very, very good bowler, Linda Rolf. Yes. Mm. Very consistent, very consistent, uh, and uh, deserves all the uh, credit and the accolades she has because she plays very, very well. As you say, PBA uh, tournaments as well. And, uh, I think you need to come that way. Yeah, she puts in the time so and she gets the results. Sure. She was number one woman in the PBA for a number of years. She's not now, she's not playing this year. She's having a year off, but uh, she's certainly been very prominent in the PBA for a number of years. For any of those uh, viewers that don't understand what the PBA is, it's the Professional Bowls Association that uh, run tournaments throughout New Zealand. They play singles matches, and if you win, um, it's a winner-take-all type of competition. You, you don't get second chances, you don't have three out of four wins to qualify, you just have tournaments where playing singles, you win, you move on to the next round and so on and they have the world singles and they have Scottish singles and they have ranking singles and they're played in all of the indoor venues around New Zealand so where there's an indoor venue they have PBA uh, bowls and they do have that in Auckland, they have that in New Plymouth, they have that in Hastings as we know we're here, in Invercargill, down in Dunedin and of course in Nainai. Just inside yep. your own. PBA was actually started in England by Peter Bellis, who uh, was then a professional playing in England, 
and uh, he's a life member of the New Zealand PBA. Um, Peter, of course, very well known bowler, uh, got world titles. Um, he he doesn't play in the PBA now, but he still supports it. Well, that Professional Bowlers Association uh, just allows many people uh, to you know pay up your membership for the year, and then get the chance to um, play singles. And uh, it's a very very good opportunity to improve your game. Rightio, if you get back to the action here as it's uh, Lisa Preto's ball coming down, just yep. over the head, but a very, very good bowl, all the same. But it's the red bowl, I imagine, of that would be Razi Wrigley, which is currently holding shot. Hard luck. And they also have the second shot as well, because there's two black... Two black um, stickered bowls just in front of the kitty. It's a bit of a target here, but I don't believe she's going to have a run. Uh, Karen de Jong is going to draw. Just uh, seeking some clarification on what uh, shot selection she should have. We are now focused on the Far North RSA Carlton Cornwall match. It's a backhand delivery. She's taken a wide path to the jack. Let the ball do its natural job now as it is. Very, very good delivery there. Just where the skip wanted it. She's actually, uh, by putting that delivery in there, even being down on the scoreboard, not the scoreboard, but down on this end, yep. As uh, there's another one coming into the head that could make it interesting. They could have three bowls there, I believe. But she hasn't called for her number three to have a run. She put one position bowl in first. <laughs> Let's see what happens on this uh, delivery. She's having a small run this time. Might get a r lucky result here. <laughs> oh, what a result. <laughs> then off, but not quite going to get the uh, shot bowl, but it could well be the second, or at least it's... I think she's one down. She could be one down to the blue bowl, but they were three down. Dave, result. there's a great result. But, you know, there's the, the tactics and the strategy of the game. She first was, her skip asked her first of all with the first bowl yep. to place a position bowl before she had a run. Yeah. And the run was just over the head, so she yeah. knew that should the kitty be moved back, she was in a position to still pick up the shot. Yeah. It, would, it wouldn't have been as effective as a run if it didn't have a back bowl to correct, play back. Correct, correct. So, so she put the positional bowl in first. <laughs> yeah, she put the positional bowl in first on the direction of her skip, but yeah. she put it there on the understanding that she would then have the first go at trying to change the head, not yep. the skip. Yep. Let her have the job. She's experienced enough to do it, yep. and she's capable of doing it. And, oh, and then if that happened and it was split open, you know, obviously Karen Hem can draw to yep. you know, rescue or save at the end. Yep. So very good tactic and very good strategy. Knowing full well your player is quite capable of doing that shot. As you said earlier, you have to build ahead, and that's the way you, you, uh, a good skipper is able to build the head because they know that what their players can do. We're still focused on the right hand screen as Karen Hemer's bowl, as skip for Carlton Cornwall comes in, delivered to perfection. Correct weight, correct line, and length. They currently hold shot. They certainly have taken it away from the, the wing bowl of the blue bowl on the left, which uh, was the current shot prior to that one coming down. <coughs> the 
and Lomas with her green speckled bowl is just unable to get in there and rest that shot away. She's having a good look at the, her options and she's experienced in uh, doing whatever is called for her or whatever she decides to do. Nice delivery, nice controlled, good rhythm there. It's time to kick the bowls back. Certainly one there, David. Yeah, one, one for Carlton Cornwall. Linda Ralph's getting the So having completed 11 ends of 15, the Carlton Cornwall team race out to a 15 points to 3 lead. It's going to be tough for the far north RSA to peg that back the way the Carlton Cornwall team are playing, isn't it, David? There's only four ends left now, and so it's pretty pretty hard for far north. So let's move our attention now over to Hanua and the Johnsonville team. Hanua, they've got away to a pretty good lead. It's not insurmountable. It's 12 points to five. Once again, we're on the 11th end. Only four ends to play. And Hanua are holding the shot there. May have two. Uh, the, uh, the light green bowl of uh, Jerry Bremner, yep. we believe, is holding shot. That's the front bowl, the light green front bowl. Little George from the uh, Johnsonville Club. So that's a bit heavy on that delivery. The dark green bowl. Pauline Hayward is on its way now. Could well be sitting on two shots there, Dave, I believe. Both those green bowls are the Hanua's side. Yeah, I think even the purple ball might be in the in the count. And the purple as well, that could be three shots. Hmm. Maybe even four. Hmm. Perhaps not. The black sticked blue bowl could be the uh, third shot. Yeah. Little George is trying to move that black bowl, I think, or come inside the green bowl. She's a bit wide and a bit heavy. Well, it's clearly obvious that there's two shots there on the Johnsonville Hanuia match, and they're both Hanuia's bowls. And there is a big conference going on now in the middle of the rink as to what we might do. This is the last three or four ends, as we know, and that's when games are won or lost. And the chasing pack, you know, Johnsonville with only five points. They're down on the head by three. This is where they start to make decisions, be it wise ones or poor ones, that can affect the outcome of the game. Yeah, you, you have to take chances, and sometimes the chances don't work, but, but if you don't take the chance, then you don't get there. Well, there's a so risk and reward in every game of bowls you play in. There is. And that's the challenge, and that's why we enjoy the sport. Yeah. Raywin Reno. Come on, Joe. Yeah, it'll skip. Good work. I think she's playing over the head to uh, uh, get to the Johnsonville balls at the back. And you're correct there. She has delivered a bowl that is deep and wide, and it may appear to be a, a wasted bowl, but she may, if it comes back onto the rink and didn't go in the ditch, it could be a useful bowl should the kitty move. They're clearly holding three shots, or maybe two at least. Yep, just 
So she was being very protective of her position and keeping a note of where we are in the state of the game. It's not just scoreboard pressure, it's uh, how many ends left to go. <laughs> that may change things now, David. Uh, I think Johnson's now got the shot, uh, but they probably need more than one, so they'll still be attacking, I think. Sorry. Yep. Uh, who knew it's definitely one down. So she may well come to try and get a nice little touch on her own pole and bring it in for two. I don't she'll be, think she'll be too aggressive. I spoke to her earlier uh, this morning and uh, as I said, her team was really wrapped to actually be in this position to compete, having down. won the county's Manukau champion, championship yeah. title, to have the right to be here. And so they're in a good position in this game, David. Yes, they are. Uh, June Wairau's three asked, asked her to uh, try to draw inside her own bowl uh, to get two. She knows one's not enough, but uh, she's a bit short. <clears throat> Again, there's only four ends to go, so, and she's got to get six points. Yeah, one bowl has been taken out. It's the black sticked bowl yeah. of the Johnsonville team. They have now six points. They've scored six shots, and Hanua have 12. And We'll soon find out whether it's the 12th end or whether we've played the 12th end. No, I think this, this is the 12th end. Okay, we've got the 12th end coming up and uh, oh. Johnsonville, just when they needed to get the length, they wanted to have put the kitty in the ditch. Yep. Not, not a, a good delivery of the jack. That's how important the jack, delivery of the jack Yep. It's so important, isn't it, in a game of bowls? And if you take it nonchalantly and not too yeah. seriously, you can end up coming undone, can't you? Yeah. Well, what happened there was uh, Johnsonville skip wanted a long end, uh, and the lead put the kitty in the ditch. She's now lost control, and yes. and uh, Hudua can decide the length. They're still going for a long length, but they must have decided that's their strength. This could well be a two metre to two metre length they've chosen. The mat seems to be fairly well back. So the lead bowl for the Johnsonville team, that's uh, Mirani Davis. And she's cut her line. Yeah. She won't be happy about that, although it's coming up yeah. in a reasonably good position. Weight wasn't too bad, but she was a bit under the head. Jerry Bremner now with her light green balls is the lead for the Hanuia team. Not quite. I think she was asking, should I change my hand? I mean, you don't normally change your hand as a lead bowler, do you, David? No, even if there's a bowl on the road, if, you, if you're getting... On the head, it's a good bowl, even if it's only second shot. This is a much better line and weight. Yeah. She'll be pleased with that bowl, coming right up to the kitty. Good correction there. Yeah, good correction. Well done, Mirani Davis. How small was it, Dave? Yeah, not much. Yet again, our attention is still on the Johnsonville Hanua game. As we watch the Delivery of Jerry Bremner, her second delivery. She's played uh, to second shot. Uh, she didn't change her hand because she had her own bowl there. Uh, and so she's got a good bowl on the head, which is helpful. And as we look over on the uh, far Right of our screen, Carlton Cornwall yet again have won that end. 
and it was 14 points to three, and it's now 15-3. And they're about to start the 12th end. Only three ends to go. It's a 15 end game, two and a quarter hours time limit. You're watching the uh, national champion of championship women's and men's fours. The men's fours will start after this match. They'll be the first up this afternoon. And the women have played three rounds this morning. This is the third round. So it's the champion of championship bowls New Zealand competition played here in the Hastings Indoor Stadium. This is the final event of the calendar for this series of events, the champion of champions. And it's been a very, very good uh, four or five weeks uh, we've had, haven't is not it? Yes, it's been excellent. We've had two of the events here, and we've really appreciated that. They had uh, one of the events in Dunedin. I think that was the singles, yes. was it, or the pairs? No, the pairs, the singles were here, the pairs in Dunedin, triples in Nine Eye and fours back here. Last year we had the triples, so uh, we've... Had a good run here. And you need to have a minimum, I think, is eight rinks to be able to play these events. Yes. And you do have eight rinks here in the Hastings Stadium and uh, some other places around New Zealand unable to do that. Paratutu up in New Plymouth only has the six, six yes, rinks. they only have six rinks. They so they cannot host such an event? No. Nine I actually has nine rinks, but they only pay on eight for these events. Right, yeah, it's back to the action. Um, Carlton Cornwall. Lisa Prido. Very well performed, nationally ranked bowler. Very nice and smooth delivery. Very consistent. She's going to try and do the job that uh, Linda Ralph didn't quite manage in her first bowls, and she's done just that. Just over the head. Great delivery. Yeah. Very, very good ball. The lead in number two in this uh, fours format is so crucial, aren't you? You saw a situation there where Linda Ralph wasn't quite there with her first two bowls, so what did Linda Prudu do? She stepped up and made sure that her bowl would be the counting bowl. And that's just a case of working together as a team, isn't it? Yeah, if the lead doesn't get there, the two must. All right, Dave, you've got some further results to uh, inform the viewers. Uh, in the uh, Takapuna game against Tokadui, Takapuna are leading 16-5 after 12 ends. Paratoot are leading nine, uh, sorry, are trailing 9-11 to Kensington, so that's changed round after 13 ends. Uh, Martinborough, Tania Wheeler is leading 15-10 after 14 ends, so they're five up playing the last end. We don't have the score for Papanui of Wakefield. So there you go, you've got an update there of how the other women's uh, fours matches have been progressing uh, as we move into the afternoon. It's ten past three here at the moment. As the ball comes down here for the Carlton Cornwall, uh, sorry, beg your pardon, the uh, far, north. far north team. I was watching that bowl trying to determine what colour sticker it was. There's two bowls clearly, the shot bowls for the Carlton Cornwall team, and that would be Lisa Prado's bowls. She's bowled very well in this match, as you expect. Far North team. They've also had their moments, but they just haven't been able to be consistent enough to put real pressure on the uh, Carlton Cornwall team, have they? No. And when the lead and the two get there consistently, as Carlton Cornwall have done, uh, it's very hard for the team. They've got to play shots, uh, which um, Far North just did then, but they still haven't been able to dislodge the shot balls. 
They've got a good ball over the head, which they can now play to. I think I just happened to see the scoreboard down the far end, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the scoreboard indicated it was 17 points to three. Um, we have on the screen 15-3. We can check on that a bit later, but it appeared like it was 17 points to three. When the far scoreboard down the far end showed up, Here's a run shot. Yeah. Once again, that short bowl getting in the way and yeah. becoming a non-effective uh, non, uh, bowl. Yeah, but she had to play weight. She had to try to change things. And, um, I agree. She had to try and change things. And, yeah. and uh, very difficult bowls to get at when they're sitting in the, uh, yep. around the kitty like that because it's got to be a direct shot. Yep. It's not coming into the kitty too much. It's really direct and trying to smack them both out of the way. Yep. But a short bowl in the, yep. in the uh, draw, drawing line or close to it, as you saw, it smacked into that and well, ended Linda up getting no, had, no result. Linda Ralph had two short bowls, which she wouldn't have been happy about, but, but in fact, one of them prevented the drive. So Ended up being a good very, position very bowl. Yes, we, indeed. Yeah, I see it is 17-3 now. Scoreboard has been corrected and... Uh, Karen Hema delivering her first bowl of this the 13th end of 15 and she's playing sensible just parking one up behind the head close to the ditch you notice the Colton Cornwall players there giving a small clap knowing that's the correct position to be in. Here we go. There is a drive coming down now. Yep. It's a bit wide, uh, but she had to get round the front ball, and it's very difficult. I don't think there'll be much change in the decision-making shot selection that uh, Karen Hema will have here. She'll be once again trying to place one around the head, just in case that jack were to be moved. She's certainly taking a wider arc here and a bit more weight. Yeah. She's going to finish in a good position if it remains on the rink. Yeah, I think, think she's uh, tried to play to where the kitty, where she thinks the kitty might go. Exactly. Always looking one step ahead. Yeah. Ooh. She bounced that one off the yeah. rink, and that's not going to be a good result. Just didn't get the arm extension, yeah. I don't believe, there, Dave, and uh, the end result was it was going to you know, swing away pretty sharply, and it did. Yeah, you usually, usually find if they uh, dump them in uh, like that that they haven't got it away correctly and uh, that one was narrow. That might be a three shot. Yeah. Three shots, I think, have been... No, no maybe two. just a two. Two or three. We certainly saw two there. We'll see what happens on the scoreboard. I think you'll find it's a minimum of two, and Carlton Cornwall going back to a two metre, two metre length. It's a good strategy getting to this stage of the game too, especially if you're trying to chase the game and you have to have run shots if they're getting shots yeah. around the head. There's less chance for the accuracy, isn't it? Yeah, and if, if the other team has to pick up numbers, then if you play at full length, um, and that's the length you've been playing, um, you know your lead and two are getting there, so... Um, and look at what you've just seen. Yep. Excellent first delivery from Linda Ralph with her blue bowls right on the head. Applying all the pressure back to the far north RSA team. So let's um, turn our attention now. It is 19 points to three, and it's a pretty foregone conclusion they will win that game. So back here with the Hanua side, 14 points to seven ahead. They're on the 13th end. All the advantages are with them as well. And the Hanua side 
with the uh, white uh, stickers on their bowls, currently holding shot or shots. Yeah, they've certainly got certainly got two, maybe three shots. They played very well, as I said, for a small country town, uh, and they love their bowls. They've got about 50 members there, men and women, and they certainly get out there and practice, and it's a good community uh, environment, uh, the Hinua Bowling Club. Radio, so that's the turn now of Sandy. It's the Johnsonville player. Yeah, it's uh, Lil George. Is she walked away from that ball, not very happy about her delivery. She might get lucky and get a slide, but not to be. Lisa Prado coming down on her forehand. Her team has already got the shot. She's just going to try and park one up close. No harm being short when you have a shot on the jack like they have now. Just in that situation, no harm in being short. Could be a nuisance bowl. Preferably, your best to get uh, behind the head, but uh, on that occasion, it's not a bad bowl to be short. Because we are expecting, you know, some drives to come, perhaps. You got another one. I think. No, Jill Phillips wasn't happy about yeah. that bowl. You saw her give herself a bit of a head slap. Not too happy with her delivery. When the pressure comes on, sometimes uh, you rush things a bit and uh, you don't get the delivery you'd like. Let's turn our attention back to the Hanua Jansonville game. Yet again, we have probably two at least white right. sticked bowls. I think Lil George, the red bowl at the back, might be second shot the way uh, the skip commented. So um, it might be just one to Hanua. They have a commanding lead, though, a good uh, differential of seven with two ends to play, so they're not going to be too concerned about all they're going to be doing now is try and restrict the opposition to one or less, yep. sorry, one or two, two or less per end, and they'll win this game. That could be two shots to uh, who knew and now, um, and it puts bowls on the road the way... Uh, Johnsonville were playing, so it does. It's a real a obstacle of course now, isn't yeah, it? Uh, to try and get uh, under them, around them, and as you said earlier, if you have specific bowls that can get around bowls on you playing on carpet, yeah. it is an advantage. So now a bowl, you have to adjust your position on the mat and cut the line and think of ways to come under the head so that you can get the shot. Yeah. Especially with a narrow bowl, if you're a lead, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, can narrow, be difficult narrow sometimes bowls at times. For drawing are very difficult, um, pl particularly when bowls are on the road. Here, I think uh, Johnsonville's probably got to play weight because it's very hard to draw the shot. So there's Dave's assessment of what's going to happen now. Will the Johnsonville team try and deliver on that? It's the turn of June Warrior, the skip. She's on the mat. She's certainly got some weight on this. She's running it down the middle. Kitty in the ditch or the bowl. It's fairly close. I think she's got the bowl. Got the bowl. Good shot. Good delivery and good action. A good uh, result there. Hasn't changed the overall picture because there's still probably one down. Well, she she turned her. Uh, set her own bowl down and I think she might have it, it might be close to the shot now but again one's not enough so she's got to still got to do something forehand delivery Raven Renault We're not quite sure who has the shot. 
but this like looks like it could be a pretty good attempt at getting it, yeah. and it is. Very good bowl. And with her white bowls, beg your pardon, her white stick and bowls, that's clearly the shot, which is very, very good for her team, being ahead 14 points to seven currently. Jumara is going to run again. She she has to move for the balls and the kitty. She is taking the run shot. Here it comes. Looks on line, Dave. Yeah, good shot. What a good shot. And a kill, too. She's killed the end. Yeah. Very, very good shot and a good uh, delivery from the skip there, June Wairau. If that's been a kill... The, I'll uh, play that end again. No change to the score, 14-7. There's only three ends to go, so it's more than two at the end. If we move our attention now back to the Carlton Cornell and Far North RSA, it's the uh, black sticked bowl of Razi La Wrigley. Holding shot. A little bit too late, though, for them, I believe. They're just not going to have a number of ends to win this game. They've been a willing competitor, but just haven't had the class of the Carlton Cornwall side. So Carlton Cornwall's had bowls on the head all the time, and uh, it's been hard to get numbers. They may have two there, but even two... Although yeah, there's quite a few short bowls as Karen Hemmer lines up her delivery. She won't be too concerned, even though they're one down. They will get this game and move forward with confidence to the next round. Radio will stay with the Carlton Cornwall game momentarily here. It is the red bowl of Razila Wrigley that holds shot. The, down on the scoreboard, 19 points to three. They have the shot. They get a measure, I think, for the second. It's purely academic now because the game has certainly, with only one end to play, run away from them. We'll soon see what the result of this measure is. Just the one, just the one to the far north team. 19 points to four. Well, I'm not too sure if they're going to concede, but uh, they haven't shaken hands just yet. Yes, sir. Yes, they have. Yeah. They've decided that's enough. They. Um, have no chance of winning this game. So that game is a pretty comprehensive victory to the Carlton Cornwall side. They beat the uh, far north side for RSA from the Northland region by 19 points to three, a very, very good victory there. Do you have a summation of that game, uh, Dave? Yeah, Carlton Cornwall had uh, bowls on the head all the time. Uh, Linda Ralph and, and um, uh, Lisa Prudhoe were uh, very dominant. Uh, very, made it very, very difficult for the far north side. They had to play attacking shots, and uh, it becomes difficult. Um, when you have a good lead or two, it, you, you will win most games. Certainly, uh, that was the case, uh, Dave. The Carlton Cornwall side had a very dominant position as their lead in number two and number three. The whole team, in fact, just outplayed and outmaneuvered, um, outskilled. Uh, the uh, far north side not to be outdone though the far north side competed well but it wasn't their day and it was a 19 points to uh, 3 I believe it was in the end victory to the Carlton Cornwall side we move back to a full screen as we watch the final two ends of the Johnsonville Hanua game and yet again you'll see one bowl around the head the light green bowl yep. Jerry Bremner the Hanua lead, he's got, she's got the bowls, that bowl, that is currently the shot, they're ahead on the scoreboard. 
Pressure on the Johnsonville now. Little George with her red bowls on the backhand. Looks a pretty good delivery this one, David. Yeah, she's pretty good. She's She's got it pretty close. She'll be happy with that bowl. I think it could be the shot. I think, in fact, I reckon you are right. But yet again, a little bit too late for this particular match. Yeah. Well, if they get to the three, there's this end and two more ends to go. If they get to this end, they've got a chance, but they have to get at least two. Yeah, a wide delivery there from Pauline Hayward with the green bowl. Little George, John Civil number three. Yeah, looks well pointed, bowl. Dave. Very similar to her first delivery. Yeah, very good bowl. Definitely the shot. Probably got two. I would suggest two shots definitely there. Yeah. Johnsonville holding two shots as Pauline Hayward undercuts her green there, which is not a good bowl. Falling short as well. So it's time for the lead two and three to, to walk down to the changeover zone. Leave it up to the skips now to assess their option. Not too much discussion going on between the team members. June Wairau. She's all concentration delivering a backhand bowl now. All she'll be trying to do is add to the count, but not fat in the head. She's played a very, very good bowl, but probably a little bit short of what she wanted. You heard the comment there, the last bowl was short. Wanting to know if it's actually counting. Seen some good bowls come down from Raven Reno in this match. She's quite capable of drawing it cold. Forehand has been chosen. I think she was playing, tr trying to play weight to move the kitty, but she was too wide. Again, the skip now for John Seville. Add to the count. They've already got two. It's a measure for the third shot. Currently sitting on two. Yet again, not quite able to add to the count. And maybe three shots there. She seemed to signify three. Bit more aggressive shot this one. This is bold with a bit more purpose. Definitely three shots now. But she didn't get the result she was after. So that will be three shots to the Johnsonville team. They still have a chance. 14 points to 10. She's not over yet. 
but it appears that may have been the last end. They have decided to concede, so the Hanua team that making their uh, shaking hands, that would mean that perhaps the time is up. And so the Hanua team, from just away at the back of the Bombay Hills up in Pavakura region, have uh, run out the winners here 14 points to 10 against a spirit of Johnsonville team. It just didn't quite uh, have the consistency throughout the match, so your summation of that much, Steve? Yeah, I think Johnsonville weren't able to get the shots early, and they were behind. They then had to start forcing uh, the shots, and they didn't always get it. Uh, and while they came well at the end, uh, I think you're right, the time ran out, and they uh, were unable to, to get there. So it is a good win to Hanua, small club. Um, Johnsonville uh, were, were trying hard, but they didn't get the uh, shots on the head early on. So that's it uh, for the round three of the uh, women's force competition at the uh, National uh, Champion of Championship. Um, women's and men's force being played here at the Hastings Indoor Stadium. We'll be back... Uh, shortly for the playing program in the afternoon which will be the first round of the men's fours be back with you again shortly
Good afternoon and welcome here to the wonderful indoor stadium here at Hastings where we're going to bring you live action now from the Somerset Champion and Champion 4s and we'll be bringing you the live action now of the men's 4s. Earlier on today, play got underway and uh, the women's, uh, uh, women's got underway. They played a few rounds, of th three rounds of section play. And uh, just to check on how your club, your team is getting on, uh, may I suggest you go to the Bowls New Zealand website and there's the Champion and Champions Hub there and you'll be able to see uh, how all the teams got on. And it's been a wee bit difficult for everybody because there has been a couple of uh, pull-outs at the last minute because of uh, airport closures, uh, COVID, all sorts of things. So just go to the Bowls New Zealand website and uh, all, the li all the live action uh, will, be, will be there. Uh, we're going to feature the men's, which is just playing their first round now, and we've got two matches, that being the, the uh, West End Club of, uh, from South Canterbury, skipped by the well-known evergreen Barry Andrews, of course, former top cricketer as well. Uh, Barry Andrews, Gary Ford at number three, Tom Taroa at uh, number two, and Shane Chisnell leading up against the Patoni Central side of Stephen Ditford, Brendan Nye, Dave Goody and Dave Grant. That uh, is just getting under, that game is just getting underway. And whilst we're talking, please, about West End and South Canterbury, uh, may I give my uh, best wishes on behalf of all the bowlers uh, to uh, Russ Botting down there, who and wish him a speedy recovery. He's uh, had a few challenges of recent times, and uh, all the best, mate. I know you'll be watching and uh, hope uh, everything all goes well. The other match we'll be covering is the team from right down the deep south from the Edendale Club with Shane Elliott skipping Brian Coyle, Coyle at number three, David Twite Thates at number two, Dan, Dan, Dan Fivash leading, and they're up against the man of a two side from the Takaro Club with Trevor Belk skipping Alan Burton at number three, Mark Smith at number two, and leading is Dave King. So looking on your screen now, you can see on the right-hand side the uh, Edendale Takaro match, and on the left and the left hand side of the other side of the screen, of course, is the West End in the famous uh, yellow and black Taranaki colours. Uh, they're up against the Petoni side of Wellington, Edendale of Invercargill, and Takaro of the Manawatu. So, afternoon, and uh, good, to have, good to be back again. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. I, uh, I'm pleased to be back in the So let's uh, hope for a good game uh, for both these games that we have on screen. So this is the first round, of course, for the men of section play. 15 ends. And you'll see there, here's the Barry Andrew side. Oh, just coming up low of the jack. And just so you know, from the watching from home in the South Canterbury uh, Wellington match, it is the South Canterbury side with the black uh, on the back stickers on their green and white for Petoni. <coughs> so it's the first end of 15 <coughs> on the left hand side of our screen, the West End Petoni team, as you can see. And the shot that's holding it would appear to be the black uh, stickered ball from the West End team. From South Canterbury is the one you said uh, the skipped by Barry Andrews. Barry Andrews, of course, uh, a holder of numerous uh, South Canterbury titles, and of course, also uh, a winner of New Zealand fours a few years back. Also, for those who may not be aware, played I don't know how many games, hundreds of games uh, for South Canterbury cr cricket, Hawke Cup cricket, and a leading batsman in that in the area. So, very, very proficient sports person in the South Canterbury area. Has had been and done a lot for sport in that uh, whole region. And I'm sure you know, uh, Kevin, that uh, he's had a, a green named after him, the Andrews Green in the South Canterbury um, Club of West End. So, because of his years and years of experience as a greenkeeper, huge honour to have a green named after you. The leading insurance salesman in South Canterbury he was. So you'll see in the Takaro Edendale match, it was the men from the Manawatu who opened the scoring with the very bright yellow uh, shirts with the, I think, what is that on the back? An eagle on the back, is it? And the Takaro. And of course, Takaro now forms part of a, a, a well, it's part of a merge club now, is it? Northern and, uh, and Takaro. 
um, merged to uh, together. Takaro Tui, of course. Wow, that's uh, so. In years gone by, of course, the uh, uh, Tui Brewery uh, to the brewery is just the just on the road from where the Takaro Bowling Club is. So the first end gone in the West End Petoni game, and Jack will be delivered. And here at this wonderful indoor stadium here at Hastings. Great, superb surface here. And we will, uh, Kevin and myself, the two Kevins, don't get confused. Uh, the, we'll, we'll alternate between the two matches. We won't just do bowl by bowl. We'll just do, uh, we'll, we'll do an end of each and we'll concentrate now on the, you can watch them both. And we'll watch that first at Edendale Takaro. And it was, of course, Takaro, as we know, who scored on the first end. And on a well, fairly short length head. And both bowls, leads bowls so far, short of the jack. And we've seen right throughout these events, Kevin, if, if I would have, not a criticism, but just um, a, a frustration, I would say, throughout. All these teams have, have just struggled to find that dead weight to the jack. And, and, then, this, and then they... Under green, you can't play under the centre line on this carpet. Uh, you'll certainly pay the price. And it was interesting last week. I had with me uh, in in the comment, commentary. I had uh, young Raymond Martin with me, who's a real expert here on the on the carpet all around New Zealand and the UK. In fact, well, he was telling me how you really got to adjust that, got to adjust that weight uh, playing here on the carpet. You always got to be looking to be a meter uh, because you, your bowl will pull up a lot quicker, it'll do the work around the bowl, but it, but of course all you can finish up doing is blocking up blocking up hands, so good open set, two good bowls there, from the Edendale lead, Dan Fiveash and Mark Smith, the number two now on the backhand you know, one of the dangers as well Kevin on this surface, if you try and steer your bowl to where you want to go uh, you'll finish up uh, going under the head and in a non-effective position. This ball is going to come out lower the Jackson, right on the centre line. And as we found out last weekend in the triples, if you, you've got to get those effective balls on the head to be able to, one, stop losing a major uh, number on an end, but also to, to, to make shot play afterwards. Otherwise, you, you're struggling here, here under the head straight away. You'll see there... David Thwaites, the number two for Eden Dale. I think your point is so valid, uh, Kevin. Uh, those two lead bowls and the two for the number two in a team of fours are so crucial. Their objective has to be getting their bowls close to the kitty and or over the head. And as you said, short bowls can be a real nuisance and they get in the way of when the attack has to come, especially if you're down on the head. You can't afford to have... Too many bowls short of the head. Well, the the uh, the uh, now the Edendale the sorry Tagaro side would be quite happy with how that head is stacking up now because you know they've got a bowl which is Jack level which is counting. Now we'll see David Thwaites will try and play through that bowl with weight. And one good thing when these things occur, of course, it does make the make you get up to the head, but it just looks as it's going to drift outside the target area it's down through between the brown and the blue with a metre of weight to play through that blue bowl. And now the important thing now, Takaro, they'll be trying to, now you'll see straight away on the backhand for Alan Burden, just trying to get that metre of cover in behind the jack. And it's so important to have cover, especially when, you know, these teams may well attack early if there's a shot down or two on the head. I mean, you like to build ahead and get two or three shots first, but... You know, when the opportunity is there, you've got to take it. And as you saw earlier, that uh, there was a runner shot uh, trying to dislodge that bowl. So he's chosen early to attack rather than wait till late. Well, that uh, slightly under green bowl from the Tucker number three, Alan Burton has worked out quite good, actually, because it did move the jack. And there is a wee bit of shelter on the jack on the front. So Brian Coyle, the number three now for the Southlanders, on his backhand. And being a left-hander, he's got a better, he's just got a better arc down through, but always way under the head, and you know that's and it becomes an ineffective bowl. And now that, as far as the Edendale side are concerned, they they desperately now need to get another, they need to get a bowl on the head, and 
and if you can see the Takaro skip Trevor Belk, he won't mind if, there's, if the uh, Jack actually gets moved to fraction as well. No, but it clearly shows to me the intention of the Edendale skip was to, you know, try a run shot and attack early the head, try and split them open and then just let it become a drawing game for the two skips. Well, the Takaro number three. Alan Burton has just done that. He's gone that metre and a half in behind the head. And, you know, the, the target, well, now going to change his hand and try and run on the backhand. I saw that the forehand's the best option with bowls to work off coming down through there. Uh, you can be a fraction wide here, of course, and get nothing, but can be a fraction narrow and collect the bowls as well. So here he is. Let's see. Brian Coyle. He's on a little on a pretty good line, he's playing with weight through the head, this is well played well played by the uh, Southlander against the Jack of course Manu two. Takaro got a bowl in behind the head so well played by the the Manu two men oh very so good Eden bowl uh, the Edendale men, sorry my apologies yeah. <clears throat> that Edendale bowl as soon as it left his hand you knew it was directly on line and uh, the correct weight and just trailed the jack back, so it was excellent delivery and uh, well done, uh, Edendale. Well, two shots and sitting right on top of the jack, so it's only just a scoop draw down on that uh, on that backhand side now for the man of a two skip for Trevor Belk. Certainly couldn't get to the target area on the forehand, it's on its way. Just to see how much weight it's got under this short bolt here to get down to the jack. Will it hold up long enough? Needs a bit of generous sliding going on, won't do so, so now from what was a precarious position for the Edendale side. They can draw safely around that front bowl. They've got a metre to draw around that, and uh, they've got a counter. And uh, just, well, I would think the other hand's the best option because don't want to get tangled in the goldy orangey bowl, which looks to be just about on that draw line down through there. But we'll just see. And it's coming now. And... Going to get around a bit. It might have it. How's the weight going to be to hold up the count? And Julia got applause. Well played. Three three shots. Big thing here for Takaro is to uh, just get second shot. That's all he'd be trying to do is try and cut the count down there. Three down on the uh, head at the moment and getting second shot is all he really need to do. Well, he's on a good line to get second shot. If he gets past his front bowl. Even on a slide, he might get to second shot. May not do, may not do so. And I see in the uh, in the uh, West End match, V Patoni. It's Barry Andrews up against Stephen Ditford. It was a Patoni that scored on the first end. Stephen Ditford trying to get down to the jack, just falling low of it. And we'll see what happens here with Barry Andrews. Whether he will now play with reaching weight. Could well be West End that are holding the shot over here with the blue Sorry. bowl, perhaps on the uh, West End Patoni game. Not playing it is uh, Barry Andrews taking the the prudent and didn't want to give anything away. So that uh, means the West End team now have the first points for them. So we have a one-all right. ball game at this point in right. time. Right. This is, uh, they've just played the third end of 15. As we turn our attention back over to the uh, right split screen with Edendale and Takaroa. Jack has delivered his jack, but I think you might find that's gone in the ditch, which is pretty unfortunate to uh, him and his team. So the Takaro side for the men of a two, of course, now a combined club, the famous northern club, the Scoglin Sims Club, you know, known iconic club, along with Palmerston North, of course, in the Manawatu region. Well, Takaro now and uh, and and Northern are now playing under that uh, one banner, and uh, all the best to the Takaro man, Mark Noble, who is uh, who is now hey, safely behind. ensconced at uh, Limited on Spa as part of the New Zealand Parasite as they prepare for the Commonwealth Games. He's been and, of course, was in the last Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast uh, a silver medalist, playing with the, the late Barry Winks. And uh, they lost they lost gold to Australia on the very, very last end. So 
good luck to our para team and the para and visually impaired guys and girls who are over there in the UK and of course to our our, uh, our own main team of course and uh, we'll be keeping up to date with that progress. Bob New Zealand website of course once it gets underway we'll be keeping you right up to date with uh, what's going on with the Black Jacks progress right throughout their, their program at the uh, at the Commonwealth Games, and I can assure you of this, uh, that they're in very good conditions to play on at Leamington on Spa, wonderful complex, but believe me, all of them have got challenging draws against the home nations. Now, West End, the Tony match, just saw the drawn right on top of the jack. So here is the Stephen Ditford Number two, Dave Goody, and got a well played, got a nudge, got a nudge on it, did Dave Goody. Now playing number two for uh, Barry Andrews is a very, very promising time to a young Ma Maori boy from the West End Club uh, down there in the, in the, in the Timaru region, has featured in a number of age group events and is certainly a promising, uh, a promising young player. As you watch this bowl of his come down towards the jack now, just what we spoke about, there he is, draws jack level. The jack had been moved off the centre line. Oh, a very good bowl from Tom Tyro. You're correct uh, there about uh, his, his uh, successes in bowls. He's only about 25, 26, and he puts a lot of time into practice and uh, nationally ranked as well. So we have the, um, it would be the Patoni player coming down now with his, uh, I think it would be his second delivery. Yeah, yes, it would be. A th the, uh, black, wait. the black sticked bowl is clearly the shot at the moment. The West End team holding shot. Tom Tauroa about to deliver his second, playing at number two from the West End team. Yeah, on the backhand, that very smooth. You see that delivery. People watching this, you can, the delivery does so much to where your bowl is going to finish, and there it is on exactly the same line as where his first bowl, uh, was, as far as the line was concerned, missed a metre of weight, but was on that line now. Stephen Ditford saying to his number three, to uh, Brendan Nye, to play down with a yard of weight, play through the counting bowl. The big thing here is you don't want to steer your bowl down that line. You've got to let the bowl work down through that line. And that's the, there it is. That's the danger that we just spoke about, given if you try and, try and steer the bowl. Well, I kind of uh, felt the way his delivery uh, came through was he was doing just that, that, Kev. I mean, trying to steer it. He had a flick of the wrist at the end and just didn't get the extension of his elbow out on the line of the target. And uh, you saw the result, undercut his green and it just sailed away. Yeah, you certainly on the surface, well, on any surface, you certainly got to let the bowl out there, trying to get round the Tom Tara bowl. This will be a pretty good bowl, just finishing on the outside. But it's still the South Canterbury holding shot, Jack Level. Now, Stephen did, this is a good bit of skipping now. He saw the risk of how they tried to play that, and he's frightened now that they're going to steer away under the head. So go to the forehand on a more natural line to where the shot bowl is. And he'll be trying to uh, rest that shot bowl if Tom Tyro is out of the head. And is on a good line, just needs to get underneath it all the way clean, won't do so. But does give another, another bowl here. on the head for the... For the uh, Petoni side, on the back end now is the Gary Ford, the number three for uh, Barry Andrews. And then look to get the bowl out. No, he hasn't, but it might hold on the line. Coming down to the Tom Taro, yeah, bowl will do so. Sits on it and counts. Literally now becomes a one-hand event. Oh, a very good bowl from Gary Ford there. Just followed his skip's direction uh, to perfection. And it's just uh, giving his team two shots close to the jack. So, got to go jack hunting here with a metre of weight. Does the uh, Dave Goody and 
trying to get down to the jack, but she'll steer it outside that line. Stephen did fit the skip of the, uh, the side from Petone Central because Stephen did fit formerly of Canterbury and uh, played representative bowls for Canterbury for a long, long, long time. Just recently moved up to the North Island. Uh, very, very experienced player. Uh, and, and, and he was um, one of the top leads going around the provincial scene for sure. Uh, led for a number of years in the peers uh, for Canterbury and uh, very, very formidable player. Andrew's now the former AMP man on the bank, on the backhand. Been around a long time, very, very tough competitor. And the interesting thing there, Kevin, is you'll see. Barry Andrews bowling outside the, 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 the turquoise bowl right up is just about in the draw line to come back outside the head. And the, so here's Ditford now playing down on his back end, trying to reach. Going to get caught up in that turquoise bowl, bowl? No, just by it. So that line's very tight down there through that to that bowl. So as Barry Andrews uh, lines up now for his second uh, bowl, he also won the New Zealand uh, Fours, I believe, title back in 2007 in my research prior to coming here. And so, as you said, a very accomplished bowler in the West End South Canterbury region and has won many titles and even at national level, as I said, the 2007 National Fours. Yeah, it won the New Zealand Fours in Christchurch. So I'm sure it was at Burnside, just falling lower the jack. Played for a number of years with another very, very good player from that region, Dave Hanson, who uh, moved to Australia. So can Ditford now make that adjustment? That lower the bot, no, the jack bowl, just in a difficult spot. He's on a better line, but got, will it come all the way back to the jack? He's hunting towards the jack. This is well played yeah. by Ditford. Might just get the side of it. No, he doesn't. Just goes by. So unlucky. That was a very, very good delivery. And... That was what he was trying to do, just try and rest on those uh, shot bowls. But just could, couldn't quite do it, but a very, very good attempt. Played with controlled weight. Yes, indeed. Now, remember when we were sitting here, the angles don't always give us what the actual... You know, we, uh, yeah, it's not always exactly right, right because of some of the angles uh, and can look differently. And we'll just see what happens on the board. I was sure it was two. And in the other match, Edendale from the Deep South up against Takaro from Manawatu. Takaro just scoring a one. That'll take it 3 2 now in front of uh, Edendale. Edendale, a very small club in the Southern region, isn't it? And uh, as you mentioned earlier, I think uh, they've got some, some uh, renown for making cheese. First cheese, one of the first cheese factories in New Zealand, down by the river. Down by the river, so Kev says. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But it's good to see a small club like that being able to not only win their, only their club title, which you have to do first, and then win the Southern Regional Champion of Championship. Absolutely. To get the opportunity to play in the big dance, as we say up here. And it's good to see them here from a very small club and doing very well, too. So, Terry Crowley, if you're still around, trust you well, mate. Trust all's good. It's Terry Crowley, was a, he was the manager of the Edendale My Dairy favorite, Factory mate. for a number of years ago. So, good opening bowl here. T Edendale leading 3-2. The orange bowl of the man over two. Takaro man, Trevor Belk. Very important. We've spoken about this many times. The first two bowls of the lead player, and any time you're playing bowls, be it pairs, triples or fours, but especially in triples and fours, you need to have those two bowls close and around the head. So it allows, you know, the two and three to have something to play to as they take their time on the mat. So Shane Elliott just going by the jack level. It's fine where it sits there, just in behind the jack. Now I'm interested here that that we've seen Dave King change his hand. Oh no, yeah, my apologies. Just the way we stand on the mat, I thought he'd change his hand because he played a good bowl with his first. Going to come over the head. Nothing wrong with that. Remember, 15 ends and these. Uh, Somerset National Champion to Champion Fours. Just an interesting point there, Kevin. I mean, 
if he did change his uh, hand, uh, it would not be a necessary a good option because, you know, you're now putting options on both sides of the kitty for the bowlers to come after you to rest on and, you know, have a shoulder to play to. You want to stay on the same hand, don't you, if you're a lead generally? No, oh, especially uh, if you get short bowls, can cut her up. Here's a good bowl coming from. Oh, just going to fall lower. The Jack gets applause, does the uh, Dave Five Ash bowl from his skip, Shane Elliott. And one of the great things about these champion of champion events, we've been on the road for a month now covering these events, that um, we have got players from North Cape to the Bluff playing in all these events who have respectively won their individual club uh, title and then, of course, gone on to win their centre title. And now here they are endeavouring to, do, to win New Zealand title. And it's always pleasing, as we've seen in these events, uh, as we saw last week, for example, uh, in in Wellington, we, we saw the the team from uh, Foxton Beach, Foxton and Beach, who have gone through that traumatic time of having their clubhouse burnt down. Um, but their boys lined up and uh, won the triples last weekend. So this uh, this event here is the accumulation of a lot of games of bowls right around the country Peter to get Tom. to these champion and champion events. And as you said, with the Fox Island Beach team, uh, Ross Ellery had a very, very good uh, tournament and played exceptionally well to get his team to win that uh, triples event. A yeah, very well-performed player, Ross Ellery. Of course, it did give him and Linda Ralph last week. Gave them both five silver here, star, five uh, silver badges or their, their silver. Their, uh, normally, in the in the bigger let's say the national championships, you play up to five, you get a gold star. And in these events here, it goes towards a silver star. And last week we saw we saw Linda Ralph of the Carlton Club in Auckland win hers. And as Kevin rightly said, we saw uh, Ross Ellery uh, win his as well. Ball coming here, just trying to sit on, gets applause. <clears throat> Takaro side on the backhand, not quite sure. Who's got shot there? One thing you don't do with this because the angles just try and guess it. It's it's close because the angles that the camera under the head. So one would assume I'll well, get an idea from the shot. One down. One down. One down is the uh, Takaro. Sorry, is the Edendale side. So playing that backhand, reaching shot down, trying to get down to the bowl, through the bowl. He's coming on his forehand, Kevin, and uh, he's been given direction to come on this hand and, and try and get in close and rest that bowl out of the head, perhaps, or just get a no, position bowl. Running wide with weight. Eden Dale, though, apparently down on the head, the blue bowl. This appears to be the shot. They've got the white sticker. We are focusing on the Edendale Tuckerow match at the moment <coughs> as this delivery comes down to try to <coughs> add to the count. It's a white stickered bowl. They probably hold shot currently, although we can't assume that. So come down on that. That backhand swoop shot. Will that Brian Coyle come down, find that port on that swoop on the backhand? Perhaps not as just a bit less weight than what he played with his previous. Look quite good out of the hand. It's on a different line, this bowl, is it? Yes, it is. That's the line. That's the area you need to be in. And he's close to getting that result inside the maroon bowl. Gets a touch on it. Sits one of the bowls up. Great effort. Oh, a great effort. He certainly lined that up uh, directly and had the right weight, just trying to tip over his uh, red bowl, just getting a touch on that, but just didn't get enough of it to get the shot, I believe, Kevin. No, oh, you'll see that the thing is, though, that Kevin, they're, they're, they're playing with that sort of weight. You're going to get the turn out of the bowl at the finish. Playing with the weight that he played with his first bowl, you're not going to get you're not going to get that metre, or well, two metres of turn underneath to the, to the centre line. And he played that with really perfect weight to try and get that uh, that result. So based upon that, we think it's 
pretty much you can see the triangular bowls there two white two uh, white disc and a black one the uh, maroni color bowl in the middle Takaro trying to get an inside slide off the bowl here sits on their own that shot itself sits on the back of the jack that certainly makes sure that makes sure of it gets rid of the, the measure excellent uh, bowl and delivery there from the uh, Takaro side here they were probably sitting on the shot and they probably have now got themselves two shots but excellent uh, delivery just come in and rested on the red bowl of the Edendale side so the skip now yeah, Shane Elliott try and reach through the port you see the white disc they've got two second shots to that bowl the Jack Low and Jack High bowl trying to work all its way back now. Needs to get a slide off the inside of the bowl. Can work for him. No, it won't. Cuts the line off. Makes that line that much harder. Very good head though, Kevin. There's some good bowls close to the uh, kitty there. And all the bowlers, you know, especially from number two through to their skips, have played very well on this end. Well, all got back to, uh, towards the centre line. On the backhand is the Takaro man. Trevor Belk, and it's going to be under the head. It's steered away under the head. Indication was it was two to uh, Takaro. And two very good bowls too. So Edendale skip now, faced with the decision as to what he should use. Well, it's one of those heads, to be fair, the way the angles of the bowls are, that not, it's uh, not a lot one can do because you're going to have to get quite a bit of pull on the draw that last metre to get down to that target area. If we can sit on one of them, they're going to go by. Head that, not going to come all the way back to the centre line. And it will be... He certainly uh, put a little bit extra weight on that. You can tell from his delivery action. Very nice, smooth and rhythmical uh, delivery action, but it was just too much and didn't quite get the result he was after. But nevertheless, that was a pretty good uh, end, Kevin. Four ends gone now, and 4-3 to the men from the Manawa 2. And in the, just didn't see quite who scored in the other match. We'll see. It's the uh, Petoni side who have got the mat in the match against, uh, that's the uh, Stephen Ditford skip side up against the Barry Andrews skip side of uh, South Canterbury. Mac Jack's been delivered right to, let's see, the two-metre mark. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a fairly long end, although the mat is probably up a couple of three metres from the two metres, so it's a good three-quarter length. So, Shane, uh, so David Grant on the mat. And playing what I would say, down this end of the green on rink one, you're going to got, you've got the best draw back to the jack from it. It's always been a thing on carpet for some reason that you seem to get those end rinks. You certainly seem to get a better draw. Uh, back to, to that centre line, but he went well by, so Shane Chisnell now from the, uh, sorry, <laughs> Shane, uh, David Grant it is from the Petoni Central, lovely little, it's a very hospitable club in uh, Petoni, and just going to breeze okay. just past the jack, but good weight, jack level weight. That's a good starting bowl from the Petoni player, and it is West End from... Um, so right now we've got the David Grant, who went by with his first bowl. And that's going to disappear under the line. So here's a great chance here for Shane Chisnell to really put the pressure on from the lead. Well, certainly the opportunity is there for him. It's a pretty open opportunity here. He just has to draw up close to the kitty and make it a very good uh, situation for the West End team. So Chisnell on his forehand just going to dip under the line. Just yeah, see it scoop a bit under the line. May have weight to finish just lower the jack. And that's fine since it's just outside the centre line. And that uh, just make, just puts pressure on those angles. You can't see that distance or angle from the mat. 
So number two for Ditford, Dave Goody. On his forehand. And just notice that. You see that flick at the delivery point. And how long is it going to hold up for? Holding up well now. Will it get all the way with weight? Needs a slide on the bowl. We'll get a slide. But just finishing lower the jack, though. That could be second shot, uh, but the shot clearly, I believe, is with the West End team with the black stickers on their bowls is the young and promising Tom Tairoa playing at number two in the West End team from South Canterbury. Study and concentration as he comes on the backhand. Good delivery, nice rhythm, following it through. Palms to the heaven, as we say. And, and has uh, undergreened it significantly. Yeah, he certainly has, so he didn't actually get his lot. And his hasn't lot. got enough weight. Got enough weight. And it's imperative that on this carpet that you're taking your line a metre past the jack. Yes, indeed. And you're taking your width out at where the breaking point is, not where, not under it. So, number two for the Ditford skip side. That's gone by. And so... The line here for Tom Taro is a is a really outside Barry Andrews feet. That's his visual line. And from that it will get enough draw on the back end right back to the to the centre line. But he's gotta have a, a an arc that's going to be outside. He's underneath with weight and that might even take the shot bowl out. Ball, it's mate. fine, leaves another bowl there. And Barry Andrews would be happy with that, although he would have liked to have seen it a wee bit wider on the green. But it's definitely, and the difficulty here for the Petoni side is uh, for Brendan Knight to get that dead draw weight around that front bowl where it's going to draw down to the jack. He's on a good line as the number three from Petoni. How's the weight? Deserves good weight here. Well, see, well, if he had the good weight then, now the difficulty is. Uh, well, the challenge, I should say, is now to try and find that line down there for the remaining, the Stephen, well, one more bowl to come for the number three, of course, and the Stephen Ditford's bowl, because just uh, tighten that line up down through there, Kevin. Around the greens we go, and I'll quickly go around those scores while they're getting for the next delivery. In the Thames v, uh, Thames v Manuela game, five ends gone. It is Thames leading 7-6. Point Chevalier, Alex Reid, 4-2, leading over Coopers Beach. Of course, Alex bowls New Zealand employee and uh, does a great job, does Alex. And all down to the Paratutu game. Paratutu game up against Kaikarai from Dunedin. And that's the Darren Gooden skip side from Paratutu. They're trailing after four ends, 5-3. 5-3. Riverhead of North Harbour up against the boys from the East Coast, Tolaga Bay. It's the Tolaga Bay boys who have jumped out to a lead 6-3 after three. And Tauranga South up against uh, Martinborough. Oh, it's the Gary Murawai skip side. It's Martinborough leading 4-3 after four ends of 15 ends. OK, back to the left-hand screen as we see the West End of Petone match. It's clearly the West End bowl of Tom Tairoa, the green bowl with the black um, sticker. That is the shot, just at Jack Even. Uh, and, and there's very little shot opportunities on there for Stephen Ditford, really, because the, the Jack, on that other hand, on that ditch hand, the Jack line is sort of been uh, covered up. Well, there's a few obstacles he has to overcome to getting close to the kitty. There's too many short bowls there that he has to navigate around or under, and uh, you're right, given it's going to be a difficult uh, uh, shot to try and wrest that bowl away from the head of Tom Tyro. So, Ditford endeavouring to get down on that forehand on that forehand line. He knows his line has to be absolutely perfect to get that to, get that, to, to come back to the centre line. There it is, as we Said he's going to get the front bowl. That's his own bowl. Turns it into the head. Will make shot of it. Well played. Controlled weight. Turned the bowl over. Yeah, very good delivery and very good result. Uh, he knew what he had to do and he got the uh, touch on that bowl, which then pushed it forward 
And so he's now taken the uh, shot away from Tom Toro and the West End team. Very well, good delivery and result. Now Barry Andrews pondering, trying, trying to draw around that bowl now on that forehand. He doesn't want to run into it. That, that bowl of uh, the bowl of Stephen Ditfitz, which is sitting lower the jack. So here's Andrews. Very, very, he's real Mr. Experience in uh, South Canterbury. He's under the line. And uh, that won't... It won't do the trick that's way under the line. And coming down to have a look at it is Stephen Ditford. Well, I don't really know where he got to come to look at Stephen. <laughs> well, I think he's looking to see if he can even perhaps change his hand going, trying to get to that black ring bowl. He could well be looking at doing but, that. But, you know, you can, cut, you can try and cover all eventualities, don't you? But you've got one bowl, he's got one bowl, and... and the line for now for the line now for Barry Andrews directly to the jack uh, is, is it's, it's a tough challenge to get to that jack. Well, I think he, what he's trying to anticipate is what uh, Barry Andrews might do after him, and he knows he has the shot, and uh, he's aware of that, so he's just going to have a look at the head and then play his bowl. Well, trying to get to the the jack down through there. The thing you got to remember is. He knocked the bowl up to get shot. Yes, he did. Right? So he's on that outside line, needs to get underneath his own, their own bowl there, doesn't do so, and falls back. Now, that does help the line a wee bit for Barry Andrews down there. He's down having to look at it. That's the beauty of having two bowls, Kevin. I mean, you've got the first bowl to decide what the option is and the second bowl to correct, and... Uh, Make another judgment call, and this is what uh, Barry Andrews has got to do right now. He's down on the head. Patoni have the shot currently, but it is a drawable uh, bowl, I believe. So we'll have live action for you right throughout the weekend of the men's and ladies' Somerset Champion and Champion Fours, which is the last of the Champion and Champion events on a good line as the Andrews Bowl needs to hold up now. Needs to hold up neat to the jack and it's just going to go by. Got a slide of it. Makes two shots of it. Excellent uh, delivery. Well played. There. The experienced Barry Andrews just controlled it. We might actually have three. It is well played, Barry Andrews. Just drew down. And it's interesting, Kevin. When that other bowl, the Stephen Dipfitz, got moved out of the head with yes. his. That actually opened the vision, that opened that line down for Barry Andrews, which wasn't there before. Well, he certainly had a dead draw option, and he did it perfectly. He uh, got everything right on that delivery. He'd be very pleased to see that ball come through and throw the jack and give his team two shots. So well done, Barry Andrews. Excellent delivery. Takes him to a 6-2 lead. 6-2 lead. Remember, 15 ends these matches. And back to the Edendale-Takaro game. Edendale out of the Invercargill centre. And Takaro out of the Manawa 2 centre. And it is Edendale leading by five shots to four. And good opening bowl there. Locked right on top of the... Locked right on top of the jack. Is the David Fivash bowl. It's the Takaro bowl. Takaro bowl. As you said, uh, Kevin, there, the red bowl, which is the uh, shot bowl of the moment. So, well played. And, yeah, great bowl, Shane. Uh, Good mate. Concentrate on that Edendale game. It's the bowl, as I said. It's the bowl of David Fiveash of the Edendale Club. He's got that locked on the jack. The yellow bowl or orange bowl of David King has just lowered the jack with the white disc on it. And here we've got the... Coming down on the... To get down towards them, going to be short though. There's the bowl of the Takaro bowl, and that automatically now really cuts that other hand off. Coming down to the sweep onto the bowl there, which is the shot bowl, falling low of it. And now's the opportunity for Edendale to build it. Bowls, mate. It's Edendale that just played. Just going to run into short bowl, the men of two bowl. Mm. 
Mark Smith just trying to improve his line. No, he's getting tangled there, mate. Down here. Just goes by. And persevering on the Edendale side. David Thwaites persevering to try and get down through that backhand port. Four bowls to get through. Nice delivery, this David Thwaites. Very smooth. And um, stay steady. Doesn't like it, though, out of the hand. You can see that under the line. Trying to get to the red bowl. And Willard had good weight. Well, not really, because he's better more than likely. The bowl stayed alive, so he can now attack that with weight. It's important for the the uh, Takaro side. Takaro from the Manawatu. Get another bolt on the head. Takaro side currently holding the shot with the white sticker. <clears throat> so Alan Burton. Down here, mate. Been around the scene in the Manawatu for uh, a number of years, and he's. Uh, come down on that forehand, thread the needle on the forehand down through the short bowls. Always well, going for the shot bowl, was the right way. Gets the jack, moves it around the corner. And to be fair, uh, Kevin, let's say there's a wee bit of luck, but that's the weight you need to play. Oh, it certainly was a good shot. He got the result he was after. The uh, white uh, stick and bowl now is clearly the shot, and that's what he was after. You can uh, the Takarawa men, uh, you know, was looking towards getting that shot back. You can uh, use a lot of bowls trying to get to a one shot a result. So Brian Coyle head went down very quickly there from the sorry sure. just to hear that saying sorry to his skipper uh, Shane Elliott and yes I can see why falls very very short. So Alan Burton now will try and. Of course, if he, if he just touches the jack, he can make three shots of this on the backhand with the blue bowl, the blue split, and white disc on the backhand. Very intense look on the delivery. And we'll see if it does get down to... Has it got the weight to get all the way down? Look to be struggling and is. So... Poor delivery there. You'd expect uh, something different when, uh, you know, the kitty has been moved slightly back. You've got to get a bit more weight on your delivery and not a very good bowl on that occasion. So the jack's been moved off the two-metre mark. 6-2, West End of Timaru leading Petoni of Wellington and Edendale of Move Southland leading Takaro of Manawatu, 5-4. And we've got a spectator in here with Henry Etta. Petoni having uh, the shot on the West End Petoni game. They Good have line. two white sticked bowls close to the kitty. So on the backhand oh, now right is the uh, Edendale skip. Shane Elliott. You'll see the yellow jack sitting there. And of course the black sticker of the Edendale bowl. Not just going to quite need to get it. Well... We'll wait right and see. I'm not going to try and guess. Jack's been moved off the two-metre mark. There's, there's uh, quite a bit of room, and the angles are a wee bit dece deceptive. So Trevor Belk now. Not too much. See whether he can make sure of it. And as we look at the West End Petoni uh, fixture, West End ahead six points to two. <coughs> as the two skips go down there to contemplate their delivery, Barry Andrews will be bowling first. He's had a good look at the head. And he's uh, lining up to come on his backhand. Steady and concentration here. It's on its way and it's coming down now towards the head. Has it got the weight? Looks like it has. It's going to get a nice little slide off the edge and take the shot. What an excellent shot there, Barry Andrews, for your West End team as a skip. Yeah, well played by Barry Andrews. Now can the man of two, two men from 
Tucker out, a turn on the, you'll see the black bolt, the mark got turned into the head, this is going to get all the way down, is it, the Tucker out bowls on a good line, how far is it going to run, just went by, saw a hands on head from the number three there, and indication from the number three from the uh, Takaro side, and you'll see in the just saw in the uh, Ditfit game, Stephen Ditfit play reaching weight through the head with the white disc on, dislodged the shot bowl, finishing lower the jack. That'll be the shot sitting there, and five four, Edendale leading Takaro, Edendale of. Southland, Takaro of the man over two. So what can Barry Andrews do now? And we will don't run too fast, Barry. Trying to play through to turn that shot bowl through the head. Just more than lightly a bowl wide. Had the weight to turn either the black bowl in front or turn it through the head. Well we might Tony just... team uh, currently holding shot with their white Stickers on that red bowl, so the skip from the Patoni team just having a quick chat with his number three as to what option he might have. Do you know what? I'll tell you a secret. Every end, Steve Dipford will have a look. <laughs> Every end, we've he, been told there from the Kevs. He loves a walk. He loves to walk, does he? he loves a walk. Walking's good exercise. You get plenty of exercise. Not when you're on a time limit. No, you shouldn't do too much of that. I agree. A time limit game, you can't be. Uh, Spending too much time walking up and down the rink. So, didn't do him a lot of good. <laughs> no. But played a good bowl with his first and made shot of it. And that's a one to the Batoni side. West End now leading 6-3 at the halfway mark. 7-15 in this Somerset National Champion of Champion 4s here at the wonderful indoor complex here in Hastings and in the Deep South match, Edendale from the Southland Centre up against Takaro, the man of a two. <laughs> Takaro, the man of a two. It is 5-4 to uh, Edendale. So, in the dip fit, well, the West End Petoni match. So, that's the Petoni boys in the blue tops with their lead, David Grant, Dave Grant. He wouldn't be happy about that bowl. It certainly didn't get uh, line length and weight uh, correct there. As a lead bowl, he wouldn't be very happy about that. You've got to have them over the head. So, Shane Chisnell, he'll quickly try and... Uh, take advantage of that. Yes, indeed. That's your opportunity. He's opened the gate and uh, he's got to be full on concentration now to get that shot and uh, apply the pressure back to the opposition team. Look to be under the line, out of the hand and it's under the line and short. And so we will have section play here in both the men and women's here at the Somerset Champion and Champion Fours. We'll have... Uh, section play t today and of course tomorrow and then post section play on Sunday and that will wind up the circuit which started uh, a month ago when we were in fact here for the singles and then of course we had the the Watch pairs them, down in Dunedin and the triples last weekend in Wellington and now the fours here in uh, Hastings and that will bring to a close the the circuit. So here is in the famous yellow and black of West End Club. Of course, the other iconic bowler out of uh, Timaru uh, is the the great Leo Leonard, the racing car driver. Leo. Yeah, good bowl there from Shane Chisnell as the lead for the uh, West End team. He's given the advantage to his team. Petoni's now opportunity to try and get a bowl close. That's the nature of this game. Get in close or get in behind the kitty. Uh, try and build ahead. Well, uh, Dave Goody 
He's just going to get down to the centre line, get to the jack, well played. Just sits inside what is the shot bowl, sits on top of it. Barry Andrews just be instructing his number two. Don't be frightened of it. Reach it. I think he certainly has to reach it. Um, just reaching weight, uh, just a metre, maybe three perhaps. Well, just about getting bowls on the head. That's the job of the number two here for time tied up. He's going to be short and under the line. You can see that very quickly. Out of the hand, needs a generous slide, but he's on the outside of the generous slide, not the inside of it. So, and Stephen Ditford making the right call here. Try and make, although you've got the shot, try and make contact with the jack, take that shot away uh, from the opposition by getting to the jack. 6-5 Takaro of the men of a two leading Edendale of Southland. Here's the bowl of number two of Ditfit. Had the weight that we were just talking about. Perhaps a wee bit too much weight though. Yep. Just needed to draw Mind past the bowl. And that's a shot now that Barry Andrews is saying to Tom Tyra, don't be scared of reaching it with a couple of feet of weight through the head. I notice also, and most of the bowlers uh, that I've seen today, they're taking a bit longer backswing, uh, Kevin, because of what you said earlier about, you know, reaching and over the head. And they're just getting a little bit more. Once again, he had a good backswing there, but just couldn't quite get the follow through to get that extra length. Well, you can't play on carpet just out of the hand because uh, you, you, you just can't get your weight right by just playing out of the hand. You've got to get that backswing to make sure that you're getting through the bowl and following off. If you watch, for example, a number of our top players, and you watch all the players in England, uh, Alex Marshall's more than likely to be Scottish, yeah, but Alex Marshall's not like the best advertisement Gary, for that they're part, actually part moving through, off mate. the mat through to me. delivery. So they're, they're, they're delivering from, they get their backswing, but they move forward and they go with it, and that just makes sure they're holding up. Yeah, very good point, Kevin. Uh, that's a good learning curve when you're playing on carpet. Uh, that's an excellent point, excellent comment. Looking for a slide here, a generous slide, won't get it. Because well, other, the other thing which it does as well is it just it makes sure that, uh, that you're getting the bowl away as well on the same arm, arm and leg, arm and pace, arm and leg, and, you, and you're just getting more consistency in the line. Way outside the line here is this, this bowl of the Batoni side. And Just Andrews here now, trying to get his number, his Ready number here. three, Gary Ford. Ford, a very, very well-performed player in the South Canterbury Centre. But it looks to be, but it might get another bowl on the head if it gets inside or gets his bowl. Well, it does give Andrews another bowl on the head. What enables him to do now is possibly down the, now he can play the other hand. Correct. And Correct. search down through the bowls. <clears throat> oh, I agree. He does have that black bowl. He does currently have the second shot. We're not sure whether it's the shot or not, but it appears to be the purple uh, bowl with the black sticker. May well just be ahead. So he can reach that bowl now, turn the jack, got a jack in behind. Correct. And uh, now why, aren't the, why aren't this Timaru side playing in green and black? Well, you'd think they would, wouldn't you? Because that's the colours. You know, Timaru, South Canterbury Rugby is green and black forever and a day. And uh, you'd expect that, but not to be. So here is Stephen Ditford, former Wellington player, for Canterbury player, now to Wellington, trying to get down to the jack. And won't have the weight. And his man, we have to instruct his man to... Yeah, and I've got that to work off. So, Barry Andrews, he's had a look at the head. Yeah. And just a matter of how much weight he needs to play down through that port if that's the shot he elects to play because he could get the back of the bowl and squeeze the black, uh, the black uh, disc bowl out as well. But he's going the other hand, which is quite surprising. But Andrews had a good look at it, and he's got a different view of it than us. He's out there. On the ring, he's seen it. He's seen where the line is. Very good point. Uh, sometimes when you're trying to assess what shot to play, when you're looking around the head, you've got to step in front of the head as well as from behind to see what the player has got in front of him rather than just from what you see when you're looking well, at the my head. My only advice would be is that it's a great Dave Baldwin 
said to me is, you know, you play down the hand where you're not obscured, and I just think yes. playing down through there, and there's a natural V going down through there, um, whereas on the other hand, you've got to try and sweep down under a target. So Stephen Ditfit, former Cantabrian, now out of Wellington on his forehand, got the bowl out, and a very seem to have a good green on the... It, Just getting it obscured so again bowls. from the very the uh, Wellington man. I have to tell him to uh, see where the Andrews. Oh, he's just realised he's in front of the camera. Oh no, he's just been stood further in front of it. <laughs> <coughs> so Barry Andrews trying to get that shot down through there. Hard shot. Might get a slide. That's a great attempt from Barry Andrews. Well played. Needs to fall. Sitting on its edge, but I don't think it's going to fall. They have 30 seconds, of course, Kevin, to decide if a bowl falls if they're trying to measure it, but uh, not on this occasion. I think it stood up, and so that end is over. They've had uh, seven ends of 15. We shall await the score. Was it one or was it two in the Edendale Takaro game, which we'll go to now? They've just finished in seven, in seven of 15. And it was the Edendale side that scored. And they trail 5 6 as we start the seventh end. And it's the time of the Edendale. Lead to place the jack. Has he changed the length or was he uh, playing to a length that he skipped once? Obviously, the lead throws the jack to the length that he would like to bowl to and then let the rest of the players just follow suit. So he's lining up his first delivery. Very, so the, the jack. Good, the uh, sorry, he's got a good, very controlled action here. The jack delivery length on this carpet is. Very, very important. As you, whereas it can change on grass, if you find a length on carpet, you can. And it's interesting when we go to, when we go to play in a few weeks' time, in a month's time, and we will have those teams for you. I think uh, the North South match, the North South uh, event coming up, that we'll be playing on. The, there's no lead. Pre there's, a, there's it's jack placement, not jack delivery. Okay. So is uh, is it as is quite common practice in the UK is uh, uh, check check marking on the on the rink on the so six apiece now in the Edendale Takaro game the black hat from the man waving is the Takaro yes hello sir the Takaro man giving us a wave on the forehand is David King. And again, this bowl looks on a good line as it comes back towards the centre line. It's going to get to the centre line, will it? Yes, just on it. Uh, two good bowls there from the... Most definitely two good bowls from the Edendale lead. So pressure here on Dave King to match the two good bowls of Dan Fiveash. Following that, well, he's got the bowl out on a good line. How's good the height. weight, though? This will start to work back now. He might sit on one of these or get the port. Uh, well played by the Takaro lead. Sits on the bowl. One, two, three, four bowls all in the line there. Well played by the two leads. And they all match. <laughs> it's a bit of a colour match. So David Thwaites, the Edendale number two with the blue bowls. He'll follow down. No, he's under the light. He'll be disappointed, but he'll be disappointed with that. But if it gets to the jack, but oh, oh, my thoughts were if it got to the jack and sat on the other side, it's not all bad. Now looking for the trail. Mark Smith now playing down in between the orange and the red pole to get to the jack or shot pole. And the biggest thing of him, don't be frightened of being up to the head, and he's not. He's endeavouring to reach the head. And just... Tip a bowl through. It's one of the Southland bowls that you turn through, right through to the centre line. 
And it appears as though the black uh, stick and bowl of the Edendale club is uh, leading, has the shot at the moment. Certainly does. On the forehand now is, on the backhand throw is the, the uh, Edendale, the uh, Edendale man, and how not going to hold up though, needs to play in there, needs to be well underneath the, his first bolt, front bolt, of course, two ineffective bowls agree, on the mate. centre line. Well, There's a chance good. for the Takaro number three. Brian Coyle can get a touch on the jack, set the bowl, move the jack. And it's under the head. Like that. That's better. So Takaro saying to Alan Burton, get on this generous draw side. Well, it's a clear draw side, I should say, oh, on the backhand. The number three for the Edendale side. We'll be bringing you live action right throughout the weekend here from the centre. And Hastings coming down to sit on the orange, get the inside of it, and will do so. Makes two of it, moved it back slightly. Oh, a very good uh, bowl there. Just got the edge, as you said, and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, slid into uh, towards the kitty. For the shot. And what it does now for Alan Burton, the number three for Takaro, just cuts that line to the jack off a wee bit the way it turned the bowl over on the forehand with the blue bowls as Burton looked narrow, looked out of the hand to be narrow, but it's out now, coming back now towards the centre line. It was a great attempt, but going to be wide of the target, but another bowl on the head. But the good thing here now for the Edendale side, they can draw into that port area there. They can draw comfortably in there. They've got a back bowl, no risk. This is the sort of head where you can really put pressure on the opposition. On the backhand is Brian Coyle. And it's on a good line again. How far is it going to hold up, get past the front? Going to do so, is it? Yes, it will. And will sit right on the centre line. Well played by the number three for Edendale. Coming under that. Just as you said earlier, Kevin, uh, a greater... Backswing there and a greater follow through. Managed to get it to reach to the head. And he'd be pleased with that delivery because it uh, did exactly as you said. Uh, you know, just a little bit extra backswing and, and you know, move forward to get that uh, bowl to end up where it should be, close to the kitty. Uh, Takaro boys, Alan Burton and Trevor Belt trying to find an option down here on this forehand side. Here's the bowl of Burton's and three down. And it's a, it's a good attempt here. How far is it going to hold to the centre line? Is it going to hold all the way cleanly through to the jack? It will do so. Well played from the Takaro man. Three down there. The triangle of bowls. Two black bowls or charcoal bowls and a red bowl. The difficulty is you can't. Well, we'll see what shot option we go for here. For the Takaro guys. Oh, it's good to see the Edendale team, uh, you know, discussing what option to play now. They got the whole team up there to chat with their skip. That's good to see in a team game. They've all got a contribution to make. So, not a lot of shots on here. Well, they've got three round their head. There's the Edendale skip, Trevor Belk. He'll endeavour to try and reach it. There's not many shot options on the other hand as well. Here he is on his Forehand, nice delivery, smooth out of the hand. And needs to get round the front, trying hard, but will be outside the line. Needs to get the side back of the bowl. Very good attempt. Uh, you know, you saw there in the delivery action, nice, uh, strong backswing. Good follow through, you know, leant forward over the bowl. Didn't quite get the result, but it was a good uh, delivery, all the same. And his intention was clear, but this didn't quite get the result. Yeah, because if you got the back of the bolt, you had a chance of side slicing into the head. This is a good attempt, attempt here from, not the weight though, but my goodness, he was on a great line towards the head. Now, this is that interesting shot playing down through here because he's got to play with more weight. You'd think if he got it clean, it would kill because he'd have to play with quite a bit of weight really to hold that straight line up under the head. I agree. He's been given the instruction, though, to have a go at it. 
Oh, it's a good shot option. Just about, just the weight you're going to have to make sure you play. There it is on the backhand. Don't know about that weight. That'll disappear under the centre line, I think. Got a side slice. Got the, well, it was always going to the outside, always going to the jack area. Did it kill? We'll see in a moment. Another end finished in the West End. Timaru Patoni match. And it is the West End boys who got the mat again. And it is alive. And so it's now Trevor Belk. I thought I saw, yeah, a black pole. So he just wants to make sure this pole stays up and will do so. So one would assume that would be a one to the Takaro side for the man of a two. Jack's been delivered on end eight of 15 in the West End v Patoni match, and it is 6-4, 6-4. It is West End of South Canterbury and Timaru leading Stephen Ditford from Petoni, the and Wellington both, representatives. And both games are very close and even, Kevin. Uh, not too much, you know, between the two teams, though West End have got out to a four-point differential, but there's been some very good bowls played from both teams. Perfect weight, mate. So good, good weight opening bowl there from Dave Grant. The Blue Bowls, the lead for the... The lead for the Batoni Central side, and the lead now for uh, the <coughs> for the Barry Andrews. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's the Batoni uh, player. Batoni player now. Sorry, my apologies. Shane Chisnell. Now a bit of a break. Eight four now. Eight four to the South Cantabrians. Every end we've gone to. Um, Kevin, as we've seen, we've seen that Dave Grant is con just struggling to get anything to the centre line. Uh, we've seen about six bowls now, and, and all of them have been not getting to that centre line. Opens the door straight away then for Shane Chisnell, and he's taken advantage of it, put the bowl out on the wider side. Now it will move back towards the centre line, no doubt. Mightn't get all the way back, but... Now, and I see Stephen Ditford saying to um, Dave Grant, this is where I want you to come. And just about to see out of the hand what that line will look like on the forehand. Well, definitely look to be on a better line than his first one. And it is. Got the hand out. And, yeah, you'll see the reward any minute. You'll see the reward. As it comes back towards the centre line, doesn't get all the way, but there you can see straight away, Kevin, if you get that arm out there, don't try and force the bowl inside, the bowl will work back towards the centre line. He was only missing a metre of weight, but of all the bowls we've watched, that's more than likely promising for them because it was coming back to the centre line. Tom Tarawa now on the backhand, Timaru, number two. Can it's all about bowls is a confidence game, isn't it, Kevin? And if you get a couple of bowls close to the kitty, you know, it gives you confidence to then step up the next end and do the same again. But if you've a couple of bowls that are short and you start to think doubt step, steps into your mind and you need your other team players to actually keep giving you encouragement to ensure you get back on task and, and get the job done. So, yeah, a couple of loose ones from that player, as you mentioned, uh, for the uh, Patoni side. So on the backhand is Dave Goody, and he's gone out on that wider side. And 8-4. Barry Andrews just saying to Tom Tara, just improved by just under a metre. Now you watch the young fella, see the feet. The feet have got that angle on them, so that means feet and arm will be parallel delivery as he steps out, stays down and should he's not going to though, he's under the head now, that's really about weight that's all it was, I mean the line looked pretty good but yet again, just pulling up short and uh, he'll have to address that as the game wears on they're on the ninth end of 15, they are ahead on the scoreboard but uh, you'd like your number two to correct uh, those small errors creeping into his game and get closer to the kitty. So, Stephen Dipford's number two. Going out, changing hand is...
Dave Goody, he's got a bit of bowl here as it comes down towards the jack. Has it got the weight? No, it hasn't. Yeah, because what's starting to happen here, Kevin, is just, here, just, it just ties up those hands Wait for the mate. threes and skips. To the, you, know, you get those short bowls in front. Just well, it makes it very difficult once you see all those short bowls to navigate your way around. And you've got to be encouraging your players to get over the head. Come on, let's get over the head. You know, you've seen the bowls now. They're all short of the head, so there must be a... Pretty good message. response here from the yeah. Timaru man. Going to come past ball. the head. And Barry Andrews will be happy with that. Comes back to the centre line. And in behind the head, the first bowl, in fact, is over the head. And that's the target now for the uh, for uh, Brendan Nye, the number three for Stephen Ditford in this champion to champion Somerset Bowls New Zealand fours here from the Hastings Centre. Good looking bowl here. It'll just break towards the head and we'll make shot of it. Oh, well, very good bowl, Kevin, as you can see Whatever there. White you wanted. The white sticker of the um, Petoni team came in got and three seconds. just took away the advantage that the West End team had. They were sitting on three yep. shots. Very good delivery under a bit of pressure. I just did everything correct. Well, big opportunity here, though, for the number three for uh, <coughs> Gary Ford. And I see he's going, surprisingly, going to the backhand. Oh, he's going to drive the bowl. It's on its way, trying to get the bowl clean out of the head. Well, he's on the wrong side of the head to get rid of the bowl. I actually thought he would have played the other hand and tried to drift down through. I didn't even think he'd drive. I thought he'd try and play yeah. down underneath. Yard of weight. Open the door. It's yeah. open the door for Brendan Nye here to draw another one. And he's on a good line again. Just needs to get past the front and will do so. And touches the jack, did it? Two shots. Got a bowl over the head. Now, straight away, one bowl can change the whole. So, what does Barry Andrews do now? Barry Andrews can't drive at anything now. He can't draw, I wouldn't think, out to the white disc got to come down through here. I'm pretty sure he, he would see that and an uh, you know, experienced bowler that he is, he's not going to do anything silly. They're ahead on the scoreboard but he'll just try to you know, put a nice draw bowl in there and uh, just try and get the shot back. It's certainly drawable as you said. Oh, he is there sensibly and rightly on the forehand, former South Canterbury cricketer of some note. He's one of their he's, he's a life member as well. Just looks to have dipped under the line with the hand, though, just tipped inside. All of a sudden, one end. That's correct. Uh, you know, there's a few loose bowls this end, but I watched closely his delivery that time, Kevin, and his backswing was not nearly as far back as some of the other players, and he paid the price for that, as you said earlier. Your point was very valid, that you need to have a, a decent backswing and make sure you get that follow-through and step forward in the delivery line. Well, he might get a hand here, the Timaru side. Might get a hand, might get a hand under the head, <laughs> under green with Stephen Ditford. And I'm not sure, but that black bolt was certainly, the black disc has certainly been uh, under the counting area. And Barry Andrews now, is he going to get all the way down? If he can slide underneath this front bolt, he'd be happy with that. Gets a slide, no he doesn't. But he certainly uh, put more um, attention to the delivery there and certainly had a bit more weight. He knew he had to get uh, closer to the jack than his first delivery. So he'd be reasonably pleased with that confidence boost of him and his team. So Stephen Ditford now try and remedy the situation. And here he is, the former Cantabrian, on his forehand. Trying to get all the way through to the jack. That's asking a lot. Sits the bowl out on the outside. <coughs> Don't think, right, yeah, it is the Timaru side of a shot. Timaru shot, yep. Right. The lesson there, you're playing, getting at the back end of the game. Sure, you're only one or two down on the head, but... You know, you knock the opposition bowl in. You only got two bowls, one in, another end goes by, you're one down. And it's uh, as uh, any old coach will tell you that's been around the game a long time, 
you know, the importance of making sure that you're trying to draw shots outside the bowl, not inside the bowl. Very good comment there, uh, Kevin. I agree with you entirely. And uh, there's lessons to be learned every time you play bowls, every time you play an end. And I'm sure they'll take that learnings from that uh, end and, and try to correct it when they get the situation again, perhaps as the game wears on. But you're right, uh, just given another opportunity to the West End team. They now go ahead by five shots. Good differential, playing the 10th end of 15. So over to the okay. Edendale Takaro match where it is Edendale. Right. And it was two to Edendale. They jumped to the front, 8-7. Eight, 8-7, seven. Eight, seven. that's correct there now. 8-7, the Edendale side. That's the Edendale side, skipped by Shane Elliott with Brian Coyle at three, David Thwaites and Dave, Dan Fiveash five leading. Up against the Takaro side from the man number two with Trevor Belk skipping, Alan Burton at three, Mark Smith at number two, and Dave King leading. Been very impressed with the Edendale side, as we mentioned. Small country area out of the uh, southern region. I mean, pretty close to Gore. And, uh, you know, for them to come up to this tournament and play so well, just shows you the strength of the Southland Bowls in their region. Well, Southland is uh, you know, very, very strong. Send it. Got some very good bowlers down there. You know, Sheldon Bagley, Howley, Craig Merrily, Tinkler. You know, they've got uh, very, very strong centre down there in the south and of course they too have got an indoor centre on the jack just gets a touch on it does the southland lead damn five ash yeah we'll be getting an update shortly of the, the other matches around the the, the green <coughs> Right, yeah, as we watch this bowl come into the head, we're on the Edendale Takaroa uh, split screen on the right hand side. Edendale ahead by eight points to seven. The first bowl has been delivered, and it's a good one at that, too. It's close to the uh, jack. The elite has been bowling very well with the red bowls. So his second delivery is coming down now. His task will be, and his objective is to get another one close, but just a metre and a half low on that occasion. Pressure on now, though, for the Takaroa lead player. So, Dave King, the lead for Takaroa. <laughs> trying to get past the... Trying to get past the metre low bowl. And have a look at that head in but a moment. And he's... David Thwaites. And there you saw, got past the low, the uh, front bowl, did the bowl of Dave Kings on the back end now is David Thwaites. With that knee bandage on. Well, we'll see in a moment how that line looks coming down. They're going to come just under the jack. If it's got dead weight, it won't go far. That's a good bowl from the number two. Two shots very early on in the piece. And now, of course, we see Kevin that for the Takaro site. It's a one shot to one hand end for them on the back end. No show get into the shot now on the forehand. On the back hand is that Mark Smith. Looks as well to be on a good line. Following down, coming down towards the centre line, but not going to have the weight this becomes. You don't want it. All of a sudden, straight away, you know, you just got to make sure you're getting, getting those good bowls around the head. Otherwise, you're, a, you're under big pressure. Certainly are. And uh, we've found already this afternoon's games that, you know, there, there have been some loose ends and there have been players just not being able to get beyond the kitty. Oh, look, David Thwaites, he's taking full advantage of this. Going to get a touch of the jack around the corner. Now the Edendale guys uh, certainly got the triangle there. You'll see the three bowls with the black discs on them uh, holding three. Mark Smith now, the number two for Takaro, knows that he must get his bowl up towards the head. And amongst these three, certainly he's put more weight into this. He's on a good line towards, get towards the jack. Is going to do so, is he? We don't know, can't see. And looks it's getting chalk out. There it is. You'll see it still there. sitting. On the Takaro bowl. So it is still one shot. Well played from the 
Mark Smith, the number two. And the Brian Coyle now, he can draw up there as well comfortably. On his forehand, but he's crimped his green, that's for sure. You can see that. That's under the head. Now the big thing now for for Alan Burden and being pointed out by a skip Trevor Belt. He can play up there with confidence, try and reach that shot bowl. That's what he'll try and do. Will the very experienced Alan Burden on the backhand just got a bit of a tilt of the hand at the delivery point, but we'll see where it goes to. He's watching it closely. It hasn't got the weight to get all the way up. Yet again, there's far too many short bowls on this end uh, to, na to navigate. Makes it very difficult for the uh, players to get around that and get the shot bowl, doesn't it, Kevin? Oh, it's, it's becoming very, very <coughs> difficult to, uh, t to get to the shot bowl. And what can Brian Coyle He's tried to steer that luck, through that port and yeah, so you'll see there's a number, as you rightly said, Kevin, there's a number of bowls lower than Jack. Sure, the Jack's been moved, but not that far. And now Alan Burton, the number three, trying to get that draw all the way around. Not easy. So here he is on the mat. On that backhand, as we play in 10 of 15. And... Working hard, but just going to, not going to. Well, to the, yeah, I believe he appeared to drop that ball slightly, Kevin, and that probably just took off a bit of that weight that he needed to get into that uh, scoring zone. Well, the good thing is for the uh, both sides here, I did get a feather off a bowl, which has now opened the draw up down that side of the rink there. And the other match, of course, the Barry Andrews match v, v. Stephen Didfit. They are playing the 10th end as well. So, on the mat. <laughs> now, you saw there, a one down to two up. Oh, a very good ball from Barry Andrews. Fortunate there, showing, bowl. Yeah, fortunate bowl, but showing all his experience and trying to bowl towards that uh, bowl, which would, you know, bounce it up into the head, and it's given his team two very, very good shots, so... He chose what to do. So, and, uh, well. watching this bowl here, well played. Well played there from the, the uh, Shane Elliott. Oh, I had to play it and, and We've seen some very good heads and some good uh, decisions made by their skips and their threes in both these games, haven't we, Kevin? They've certainly uh, tried to get up and beyond the head and, and make it count. Oh, the, looking for the jack of Shane Bow. <laughs> Put it in the bloody road. This time he's it, it under the line though, and really now, oh, see what the Southland man, Trevor Belt, couldn't get through to there. And I think, really, to be fair, it's one of those hands. Just try and draw down to the red bowl, that's it. Right in, if you get the inside of the red bowl just on the dead draw, you could make another counter of it. So, on the mat now is the Edendale skip as we play in 10 to 15 on his backhand on its way, full length head. And it's in that area that we spoke about, very much in that area that we spoke about. Here's a good bowl coming here if we can just sit oh, and does, but great touch the turn the jack over. Still holds shot though, Kevin, and uh, that's all he could do. And I think he did a very good shot because now. There's a resting bowl for... Um, well, you'll see there that the, 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 the uh, Takaro now trying to get the inside slide across to the jack level bowl. And their, their skip, Trevor Belk, is going to be under that line. He'll get, a, he'll get a slider right, but it'll be on the outside, not the inside. Another end gone. And the Edendale men hold on to the shot. I'm pretty sure they did. As I said earlier, I've been impressed with the way they've played from their lead through their uh, whole ranks in the uh, team and, and really showing that they um, are a very competent, uh, competent side. So Stephen Ditford was up having a look at the head. Yet again, as you said, uh, he obviously wants to get a few thousand steps uh, 
Must do. Uh, monitor. But we all know if he today. wants to get a result here, he has to play up there with weight. There's no, you know, one doesn't have to have the Encyclopedia Britannia. You know, he needs to play down there with weight to try and reach and turn something through the head, get some movement on the jack. And he's on a good line to do so as well, but he's going to hold up long enough. It needs to now needs to get his own feather and does. Got the feather. And as yes, you see, the big side, it's aspiration there. Got a touch of the jack. And may well have made three. We'll see him but a moment. It's another end gone. And going back to the Edendale Takaro match, you see straight away the lead bolt right in behind the jack. And that really has been, to me, it's been uh, one of the main things in this match. It's the, the work, the, the uh, consistency that David Fivash has given uh, off, off, the, uh, off the front, the Edendale lead. And David King trying hard here to get all the way down. Not going to do so, but literally when you got where those balls are there, 12-4, yeah, that was a great little break there for the Timaru side. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, Eight-point differential playing the 11th end of 15. It's all up to the uh, Patoni side now to try and wrest that advantage back. David Fivash again on the backhand. Well, and the good thing is he's just going to say, I'm going to draw around that front bowl of Dave Kings. He's not going to worry about it. And he duly does that and will come down to where his first bowl is. And you're standing there as a skip. You'll be pretty happy with those two bowls. Oh, yes, indeed. From Kevin, your lead. As, as you said just a while ago, that uh, the Edendale lead has certainly uh, made his team competitive in this game and kept them in the game. And he's led very well up the front. Very impressive. He has been. And... Dave King now doing on that backhand to try and get past that metre down towards the jack, past his own. Looks as though he might just get a slide of it. Sits on the bowl. Well played. Very well played by the Takaro lead. Dave King just came past. Well, he certainly put enough uh, weight on it to get past the jack, the as key we need is, to do. Right, so I come back to the point, given the key on this surface is... You've got to play that metre of weight to come back to the jack and you'll get a result. If you don't, unfortunately, you won't be, re yes, you yes. Won't be rewarded. So here now is... Uh, this is the David Thwaites. Good, another good bowl. And it was none so more even than last week uh, when we were in Wellington uh, at the triples. And Ross Ellery, the, mm. the skip of the winning side from Foxton and Beach. He continuously played with yes, reaching right to yes. the head, turning balls out consistently in and around the head, and it just builds your percentage shots up. So here is. I'm not going to get head. to the head is the number two is Mark Smith for the Takaro side. And we saw David Thwaites on that forehand side just draw lower the jack. But is the shot itself... On the forehand is the number two again from Takaro's side. It's going to be on the outside of the target, but that's fine. It's going right. past with weight, good though. But it's uh, also very good if you look at the Edendale side in this particular head. Oh, I think all four bowls have been played all over the head. And, uh, you know, that's a cardinal sin when you're at this uh, level of the game and the skip wouldn't be too happy about that. You know, you've got to encourage your players if they're having a, a dull moment or a poor end to just stay on task and uh, just focus every time you step to the mat. And that's your objective, to get it over the head, as you said, a metre beyond and uh, let the rest of the team, you know, follow Same suit again, and mate. get confidence from it. Oh, well, it just enables you to build heads. Yes, indeed, yes. On the backhand now is... Brian Coyle. No, he's not. He's playing his. That's pretty good, too. Forehand. He'll get a good draw through here. Past the orange. He'll get a good draw to the jack and will do. Sit inside there. Sitting right on the centre line. Yeah, that's two down was the indication there to uh, Alan Burton, the number three for the Takaro side. On the forehand, it's the call. Draw down on the forehand. And 
And he certainly got the ball. Oh, there we go. Stick, you can see. He knew. Straight away, he knew straight away. Steered it. Yep. No, you can't do that, as you've mentioned a few, oh, yeah. few times already got today. Right, you've right. got to be able to get the right, you know, line and the weight, but you've got to get it out there and get a nice, smooth delivery and, and try to get past the kitty every time. Well, one of the great things about carpet is, of course, it hasn't got some of the vagrancies that Cotchler or the others have got. So you know very well if you, if you uh, take your green, um, you're going to get duly rewarded. So here is the number three. Brian Cork, he steered it, it's under the line. And yeah, you might have heard in the microphone, you might have heard, Alan, you might have heard the skip Trevor Belk saying to Alan Burton, just ignore that bowl, get around it, and, and the bowl will come back to the centre line. Well, you've got to trust your bowls. The bowl has to do the work when all's said and done. And if you trust your bowl to do the job and get the right line and uh, wait, it'll come back to the kitty. That's what they're designed to do. Well, the other thing is it gives you another bowl for your skip on the head when you change over. Oh, you indeed. can look at it where it is now. It looks to be clearly two down, which is a, at this point is, a, is good for the Edendale sides and the Barry Andrews skip side from Timaru from the West End Club, leaving playing Stephen Ditford 12-4 now, 12-4 as we play 11 of 15. So looking good for the boys from Timaru. But clearly obvious in both of these uh, matches at the moment on this end, there are quite a few short bowls. So it's something they need to address uh, going forward. Uh, and just once again, getting that extra weight on the bowl to get just beyond the kitty. So what can Shane Elliott, the, lead, the skip from the Edendale side, what can he do here? He's moved on the, over on the map on that forehand side. Try and draw down underneath. Well done. Well done, mate. Around this blue, if he gets around it, need to have dead weight. Yeah, the challenge is being able to get around that uh, wing bowl, Kevin, and also cut in sharply to the uh, kitty. And it's not going to cut in sharply, so it's just a matter of trying to get a placement bowl over the head that uh, you know is within the scoring zone. Oh, yeah, you're right. oh, right. You're right, and it's about having that dead weight as yes. you get to that bowl. So with that last meter of running, you've got that mm. meter, clear meter. But it's, with that white disc down in front, it is a very, very challenging shot to get around there and get down yes. to. Yes. Yes. And really, for the Takaro uh, skip uh, for Trevor Belk, that's literally all he can play because there's not really any other shot options on. And then I see it is Tom Taroa holding two shots uh, over in that uh, Timaru match. And this is a big bowl here now. This uh, last two bowls here in the Edendale match because they're holding two shots. Very good delivery action from the skip. Uh, I've watched them bowl in this match and every delivery is the same rhythm, mm -hmm. and the same momentum. They might have a result right here. Well, he just got the blue on the way through. But was certainly on. So there you'll see as well Alan Burton just saying to his skip, you've got to be outside that line. That's where you've got to be. Barry Andrews' bowl coming down now for the West End team. He trying to add to the score with the Tonto Rowers bowl. Just not quite, but he's in a good position to add to the count with his second bowl. Not easy, is it? So another head come to a close here in the Edendale Takaro match. Is that's two that have come out, I think. Yep. Yeah, two it is. Eleven seven now. Eleven seven and Stephen Ditford now on the mat as they play in eleven of fifteen up against the Barry Andrews skip side. And down on the head is and he knows as soon as he let that go, he was under the head. He was searching for something. And at least a couple there to the the Tom, the Tom uh, Taroa bowls will stay there, I would say, counting. Oh, there was another bowl locked on. May not be, but definitely one anyway. So another end gone. And looking... Looking quite handy at this point in time for the uh, men from South Canterbury. 
Just a nice little, well, better than little. They've got a handy. Well, they've got a very good uh, team, a very well-balanced team. They've got, as we said, uh, a very experienced skip in uh, Perry Andrews, a competent number three and a very promising young player in Tom Tairoa and Shane Chisnell doing his job as lead too. So they deserve to be in front. They've played some good bowls. So here again is my man of the match. Indeed. The Edendale lead, lead, Dan Fivash, who's opened up on this to 12th end and sits right on the jacket. It was 14-4, and it is 14-4 now. Barry Andrews of West End of South Canterbury leading Stephen Ditford of Petoni in Wellington. And Dave King, the Takaro right. lead, just trying to get up to that Good opening bowl, and Dave Fivash has been very good, but all don't, don't underestimate Dave King too has been very, very steady. But the difference is that Dave Fivash has been able to get just more consistency, I would say. But equally so in the uh, rink, uh, West End Petonia, they were not featuring that right now in their thinking. Uh, Shane Chisnell has also bowled very well, and he's got a bowl right on the kitty putting the pressure on to the, you know, Petoni side as we go back to the edendale Tokoro game. And under the line is Dave Fivash, but still reasonable weight. As you look at the scoreboard at 11-7, it's about getting bowls around the head. And what can Dave King, the Tuckero man, played a good bowl though with his Come first. On, There's the orange ball coming down for the uh, Takarawa side. It's going to be deep <coughs> over the head. That's all right though, there. Holding second shot. They'll be quite happy with that. Now, here the Timaru side, David Thwaites, will come down on that backhand, try and sit that second shot ball. One here, mate. So another bowl on the head for the Timaru side. And at this point in time, their main concern is to get bowls on the head and not look like dropping bundles. Good ball there. And one end can change things around. And South Canterbury boys sitting pretty comfortable at 14-4. Back to the Edendale match. As it is the Takaro side trying to reach the shot bowl, but going to be under the head. And... The skip for the Edendale side, Shane Elliott, just encouraging his number two to get really just get a bit wider on the rink and out to the orange bowl, Jack High Orange Bowl. Looked out of the hand though to be under the line, still holding on. Might get the front bowl of their and does. I won't, well, again, good and bad. Yeah, good and bad, yeah. <clears throat> certainly opened the opportunity up to reach through the head now for Takaro on the backhand, reach through with ditch oh, weight, line, searching you know, through those two yeah, Maroni coloured bowls is that it looks to be going to get a slide, is it needs a slide gets the slide, was always on <laughs> certainly was he had a couple of options there I mean he was running towards the kitty and the bowls and he got the wing bowl out the front which slid back off and He's got the result he was after, though, I believe. I uh, would we'll just say, I'm not sure that we can get that camera right around there to where that jack has moved three, out, to, right out to the side of the Four rink. Uh, doesn't look like we can get the camera all the way out there. We'll just try. There we go. And we can see, clearly see, it is Takaro. There's the orangey bowl of the, their lead, Dave King, which is shot. Look at this, though. Look at this from the boys in Timaru. Applause to their supporters up on the bank. Draws right down over the jack. And Alan Burton now, the Takaro man. Well, I question where the line needs to You can see where the line is, and that's going to be well under the line. 
but still up on the, still there if the ball or things get dislodged. So here is Brian Coyle now. Very important to get another bowl on the head. Look at that four shot lead, holding the shot. Doesn't have to be on the jack line to get shot, but another bowl around the head. And it's still still two seconds there for the Yeah, and you might have heard their skip then. Uh, the, the, the skip Trevor Belk saying, right, play right through that bowl with weight. Mm -hmm. That's what he'd be attempting to do. Might get a pity here, mate. Try and get to the bowl or to the jack. There's only one bowl really on the head for the for the uh, Edendale boys and went by with weight, but you can see that was the right weight to play. He dislodged that shot bowl. There's the orange bowl you can see there. Yep. And there's another bowl down and behind that, so it is important for the for the uh, Southland guys as we play end 12 or 15 get another bowl on the head. And as uh, Kevin did just a moment ago, Ian's now running out for the Wellington the Petone Central guys. Uh, they're going to run out. Well, I'm not saying they're going to run out of ends, but the it's challenging the number of ends left for them in trailing 14-4. Here is now Shane Elliott on the mat with the hat floppy backhand. Devin to get another bowl on the head. Doesn't like that. You can see the grimace on his face. And coming down now. Needs to get a slide to get inside. Well, may not be all bad. We'll see what weight now that Trevor Belk decides to play to reach the shot bowl or movement, you know, or even if he got the jack wall. No, he's not playing with the same weight. That's on the outside weight coming back towards the, what is the shot bowl. Needs to work back now, though. Going by, you'll see. So I just wonder whether it's gone through his mind to possibly drive that bowl because... So I don't think it can make a great deal of difference. I don't think he's going to crash into his own and drop a big number. But of course, a lot will depend on where this bowl of Shane Elliott goes to because he's got it out on the drawing line, but how far is it going to come back? Don't know if it'll make it all the way back or not. <coughs> Two seconds, you hear that was the call. Two seconds, you so, know it's going to come now, Kev. Well, I, I just, my view, I thought he'd try to play it with his first one, but decided what he's going to play now. Just gives you two shots, two, two opportunities. Well, he's certainly given him an opportunity now with two seconds. It's up to the skip now whether he decides to take that advantage. On the mat is the skip for the Takaro side, Trevor Belk. And... Going to be, might get a slide here. Well, they rocked the bowls and may have made two of it. One is taken out. Two. Two is taken out now. And appear it was two, which it takes a 13 7 now to Edendale. But to be fair, Kevin, he had to play, he had to, that was the shot to try and play. Well, he certainly really. had to play the shot. Um, you know, he's behind on the scoreboard and he needs points and. Uh, but unfortunately, it wasn't to be. And Edendale, as you say, have gone out to a 13 points to seven lead now. They've played 12 ends. So quickly around the boards now. And the David Clark skip side from the Manuera Cosmopolitan Club uh, in the counties area up against Thames, their neighbours. And it is Manuera who are leading after 13 ends. Two ends to go, 17-12. That's the David Clark skip side, 17-12. In the Point Chevalier, it's the Auckland boys and up against the Coopers Beach, up against the boys from the far north and 12 ends gone. And it is nine apiece, nine apiece. And in the Paratutu game, the Taranaki boys, that's the uh, Darren Gooden skip side up against Kaikarai of Dunedin. And it is the Taranaki guys leading by 14, 14 shots to six. So good, uh, good start at this point for the um, 
Darren Gooden skip side. Riverhead from North Harbour up against uh, that Vern Marshall, Tolaga Bay. And there's the Tolaga Bay uh, side who have jumped out to a 15 to 6 lead. That's the Vern Marshall skip side. Tolaga Bay leading 15 6 after 11. And in the Tauranga South Martinborough game, that's anyone's game. That's Gary Murawai, the Martinborough uh, uh, skip. And 11 ends gone. And we've got 8 7 to Martinborough. 8 7 to Martinborough. So that's anybody's game at this point. And it is 13 7 now. Just that 14 4. Buffer there. Play in 12. 13 7 in front of us here as we play in 13. As the, and there, we straight away, the leads in this game. Uh, again, both leads giving that consistency on the. As we see this bolt of. David Five S just come in, lower the jack, Cameron three Lewis. bowls in the line there, but Ball a good in. head for the teams to play at. Yes, I agree. I mean, he's played very well, the lead for the Edendale team, but equally so, the West End lead, uh, Shane Chisnell, has always had bowls close around the head for his team and uh, are keeping them in the scoreboard. They're ahead on the scoreboard, 14 4, and uh, a lot of it's due to his being close to the head as so a lead. David Five S now, the Takaro lead. Got the ball out on a good arc. And just might have a metre of weight. No, it hasn't. It's going to come in behind the jack. Four good bowls there from the leads at this point of the game. And for the Southland side, we'll see David Thwaites on his backhand just play up, reach those bowls, turn them, turn them, run them through the head. Certainly a good head to play to. There he is. Is the Edendale... Number one. two on the backhand. We've got the bowl out on a good arc. It's coming back problem. towards the centre line now. We'll make contact with the front here. And we're not quite enough weight to turn the bowl through the head. And for Mark Smith, the man of a two, the Takaro lead. Similar sort of shot to play on his forehand though. As we play in 13 of 15 here at the Somerset National Champion and Champion Fours. Yep. Well, in... Hastings. And don't forget, we will have, well, the, we, uh, the North-South match is our next big event. And we'll have, the North Island team, my apologies, has uh, been announced. And fantastic to see in the North Island team, a very, very well-performed female player from Carlton Cornwall, uh, Linda Ralph, uh, make that side. It has to be one player. It's going to be one player over 60. Another one, uh, an age group under 25. And that player, of course, is Seamus Curtin. And one from the uh, parrot blind as well. And, of course, Michael Galloway's in that side. Tony Grantham, of course, uh, doing their training at the moment at Leamington on Spa as they build towards the Commonwealth Games. And Liam Paulson, the county's player, is also in that North Island side. So here is Brian Court on the backhand. Just question the line. Needs to get past the orange bowl clean. We'll do so. Got a turn on it, but fortuitous. Got a double double slide there. And the good thing for the the uh, Southland side there is that they it's like checkmate, checkmate, because they cover each one of the, cover the bowls. Yeah, they've got a good position all around the head with their bowls. Cleanly ahead on the scoreboard, 13 and 7. Only two ends to play, and continuing to show real good consistency of their bowls. And Alan Burton trying to get down to the orange bowl and turn it through the head. Has it got the weight to do so? No, it hasn't. So it will be. So you heard there um, Shane Elliott, the skip for the Southland boys, say, well, if you can move the jack, that's fine. Don't be frightened of it. On the back end is Brian Coyle. Good uh, long backswing and good follow through here. He certainly should have the weight to get right up to the kitty. 
one would expect so, but he's not quite going to get there. Well, that's because he didn't have the green. <laughs> didn't have the green, that's correct. He certainly had the delivery, but no green. But not all bad for that, the Southland no. boys. Looking pretty good on the <coughs> forehand now is Brian Coyle. Got this bowl out, but he put weight into that to reach through the head. It's going to go by as we skip change over at end 13 of 15. And it is in the other match, of course, as Kevin rightly said. It's the Timaru boys, the West End Club, who are leading the Petoni side, Petoni Central of Wellington. 14 shots to four. And it just need. Uh, that, that skips changing over. I'd suggest the uh, red bowl of the Edendale player, the the lead shot has the shot in the Edendale Takarawa match. Yeah, the Jack Level bowl looked to yes. be shot. And here is Shane Elliott. Got the bowl out on a nice working arc. Yeah, how far is it going to come back? But just going to drop outside. Is it going to drop outside the white disca? Oh, just needed a couple more rolls of weight. Good guideline, though, here for um, Trevor Belt. You know, he's, he's inside that bolt with a metre of weight. He's got a great chance of working back to the jack. Here he is on the forehand. Needs to score, does the Takaro man, but he's going to be under the head, might get the front. No, he doesn't. So, pretty important now, this last ball coming of the Takaro skip, that he... Uh, they really got to score this end. Oh, they do. They're behind uh, by six points. And they haven't got too many ends left to play, so, yeah, it's a crucial game uh, for the Takaro side. Certainly, I said... A crucial end for them to score. Uh, let's see, it's the Timaru boys who are going to score again. Change of hand here from Shane Elliott. And this, I think he's looking a wee bit of back cover. I think so. If he gets that jack trail. Oh, definitely a good shot there in case the jack is to be trailed. And it is, I just see quickly there, another two to Barry Andrews. That, 16-4 now, 16-4. So this is sort of last ditch hurrah here, really, for the Takaro, Takaro side of the Manawa two. They need to score this end. And certainly playing with weight to get through those front bowls, get the split, split, and we'll get the split and split. Good kill, got the kill, which is probably what they needed so they can take a deep breath and uh, play another end, uh, knowing that... Uh, they're still in this game, and maybe they could get a few more points on this end. Well, one of the th points I make that I'm, I'm pleased to see that they uh, embarked upon the tacking mode there, yes, really, yes, yes. Uh, Kev, because they run out of options. 16-4 now, but a convincing position, and there's that opening bowl from the uh, from Steve Ch Shane Chisnell right in front of the jack, and he certainly made life difficult for Dave Grant. Who's following him on the back end now is Grant. The Wellington lead. As I said earlier, Shane Chisnell has played very well for the West End team. He's always had bowls around the head. He's always put the pressure on Dave Grant for the uh, Petoni team. And this bowl, though, this is a good bowl of Chisnell. It's just going to be over the head, coming back towards the centre line. Of the say Grant, sorry, but it is the bowl of Chisnell's who is shot, who is the shot bowl. Been very consistent, has the man from the West End Club and uh, the South Canterbury Centre in Timaru got the bowl out on that nice arc and will now just arc its way back towards the centre line, which it Great truly bowl. does, and sits just lower the jack and straight away did fit. Saying to his that man, reach through the port there with weight. Yep. Yeah, he's got it. He's two down on the head, and he's got to try to uh, get those bowls out of the head, and you've got to be reaching through the head. Gave that a twist at the delivery point. 
See if it holds up now. No, won't do so. You might have seen at the delivery point, you just saw his hand just twitching. Yeah, well, it looked like he was just trying to play a draw shot, and he was clearly given the option of just coming through the head, and he just, just didn't quite get his weight well, or his line right. That's because where you look, it's where yes, you visualise, right? Yeah. Visualise, yeah. The, you know, the visualisation there was a yard away from the ditch. That's it. So as you know, you're going to... You know, that was trying to get that dead draw down through the visual visualisation is right down through the back. Well played here from Tom Tara. There's a back bowl. Yeah, very good position bowl from the young player, Tom Tara. Over the head on the back end now is uh, Dave Goody from the Batoni Central side. And... Got the ball there on a fairly good arc. How's far is it going to work back now? Working back, has it got the weight to get down to that area? Yes, he will. Gets a slide and a slide and just went by. Very good attempt, though, to try and knock that shot ball out. You'll see straight away, though, Andrews, the experience of Barry Andrews right, saying to his uh, young charge, Tom Tara, change your hand now. Let's get out where that last ball came. Yeah, as a skip, you're constantly uh, <coughs> observing the head and uh, thinking about what the uh, player, not just your own player can deliver, but what the opposition player is lucky to play too. So he is uh, looking to... Oh, looking for a jack trail here. Is he going to get trail? that jack trail? No, he right. won't, but that's well played by the youngster. Just in behind the head. 13-7, Edendale leading Takaro, the man of a two. West End of Timaroa, South Canterbury leading for Tony Wellington, 16-4. to You just see that twist out of the hand there. And how long is that going to hold up for? And it will sit on the... Go, won't go past. Here's the opportunity, really, for Gary Ford to play on that forehand. Can really make life difficult for the Wellington side. Well, it's difficult enough now, but he gets a touch on the jack. He puts it completely out of sight. And he's on the wider side. But that's all fine. We'll finish outside right, that right white ball of the the uh, right Ditford right team. High. So that's fine. It's up to the Patoni team now to try and wrest the advantage back. Uh, it's a difficult task. They're 12 points adrift on the scoreboard. They're chasing the game, but they still must stay composed and try and play the correct shot. Oh, they're playing the correct shot. They haven't got the weight to get through that slide. And again, you know, the, the visualisation weight there is to this black ball down there. through here. Not the hit. Not, Set that not, over. You, you That's see. right. The jack is only a guide. Absolutely. It's got to be beyond the guide to visualise where the jack will, sorry, where Just your ball will end me. up and it must be through the head. That one there's a metre short. They're chasing the game and they've got to get points. So, Barry Andrews in, in command area. here. You're in the area. Bowl, Barry Andrews just wanted to get round no, the front try. bowl and get in behind. He'd be quite happy with that. Yeah, he would N be. Another bowl in the nest there. And what can, you know, Brendan Knight try and... What sort of result can he get down through there? And he's on a better line because he's got better weight. This is a better bowl from the number three and might sit and stay. Well played. And you Certainly see, good bowl there, well, Kev. You, yeah, great you'll move, result. You'll move bowls if you play with weight. He did. He played just over the draw weight. Correct. Pushed it out, you know, only about two or three inches, but that was all he needed to take the shot. But uh, as I anticipate, this is a little bit too late. Well, two, uh, holding two shots are the are the, uh, the Wellingtonians, and you know I'm picking that um, Barry Andrews will follow the bowl of Ditford's up because it just uh, it's got a clearer line to the jack on that on that hand. Barry Andrews is a legend in South Canterbury cricket. Played with a number of the best players going around, and he is going to that backhand side. He can reach up through there on the backhand in the South Canterbury 
Skip. And he'll be trying to make sure that he's through the bowl. Might just be a fraction on the wide side. How far is it working its way back? Coming back a long way and will just reply. And he'll be very happy with that bowl. That's fine. That's very over the head. Bowl. Yes, indeed. Did fit now, holding two, trailing 16-4, following the Barry Andrews bolt on his backhand. He'll be disappointed with that. That was uh, yeah, that was 15 feet short. Well, especially for a skip, eh? As we know, Kev, you've got to be up if you're a skip, especially if you're down on the head, and uh, he certainly wasn't uh, on that occasion. So... Barry Andrews, can he make contact and get some jack movement? Because it's all to his advantage if he can. It's on its way. He certainly brought that line in, held that weight up as he to get it just around to the jack. Not going to get his own bowl he's going to run into. Gets a slide and falls in. I don't think it'll make any difference. but No, it won't make any difference, but uh, very good bowl because there's plenty of bowls that can be wicked off and uh, lead to a better result for either team, perhaps. So here is now Ditfit, number three, talking to him. As you rightly said, there's not a great deal of opportunities there, I see. David Clark, who I, I believe is going to do the next game with me, is Steve Ditfit. On the backhand, really... Holding needs to get past. Going to be close to getting yeah, around the corner. He gets around the corner clean and falls. May, may well have made three of it. We'll see. Is it shake hands time? I think so. They're discussing it. And it is shake yes, hands is. time. It's shake hands times in both games. And so in this first round of the men's uh, Somerset Champion and Champion Triples here. In Hastings, I can tell you that, can confirm that the the side from Southland, the Edendale side, skipped by Shane Elliott, Brian Core, David Thwaites and Dave, Dan Fivesh, are too strong on the day for the Takaro side of the men of a two of Trevor Belk, Alan Burton, Mark Smith and Dave King. And it was the Southland men that ran out the winners in this round one match. And in the other match, it was the West End side from uh, Timaru from South Canterbury with uh, the very experienced Barry Andrews skipping Gary Ford, Tom Tara and Shane Chisnell. And they ran out the winners over the Stephen right, Ditford st right. skip side, uh, representing Wellington from Petone Central, Stephen Ditford, Brendan Nye, Dave Goody and Dave Grant. Now, all the results as they come through, they will, uh, you will see them all go up on the uh, Bowls New Zealand website. They'll be there later on uh, tonight. So uh, we'll be back shortly for the next round of the men's fours.
Yeah, good evening and welcome back to the Somerset Champion of Champion National Fours down here in Hastings at the wonderful indoor complex here. I've got with me David Clark from the County's Manukau Centre who had a win in his first round uh, just, well, before. Just in, he's got a buy now. And it was, but instead of having a sleep, he's now working with me. And the two games we'll be covering are the Paraparumi side, the Kabaddi Coast side, that's the Ray Boffer skip side, with Tom Henderson, Shane Duncan and Mike Downer. And the Canterbury side from Club Papua Nui, and they've got the white discs on their bowls. You'll see when we cross over, we've got the, either black or white discs. It's the side of Mark Lewis, Rick Day, Brian Hemi and Terry Stewart. And in the other match we'll be uh, covering, and we already had uh, the previous round, of course, with the Stephen Ditford uh, skip side from Petoni and Wellington with Brendan Nye, Dave Goody and Dave Grant up against the Thames Valley side of Adam Hayward, Matt Johnson, Jason Prout, Prout and Mark Matthews. So play has just got underway here and we'll be concentrating mainly on the Ray Boffer match. Although we've got the two games in front of us, we did, of course, cover the uh, Stephen Ditford match as well in the first uh, round. So we'll be spending a bit of time doing the commentary relative to the Parapara Umi site. It's interesting, David, the Paraparam site, as long as they know how to stay away from the campus, it's fine. The, the lead for um, Ray Boffer, Mike Downey, second-year player, beaten, beaten completely by the bowls bug, and he's got four sets of balls. <laughs> four sets? Four sets. How is he going to choose which set to play today, Kev? Well, look, all the years that I played, David, I don't think I've ever owned four, <laughs> or used four sets. No, I'm uh, probably the same. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So, yeah, apparently so. Four sets of balls. But, yeah, the Canterbury side with Mark Lewis, Mark Lewis Rick Day, Brian Hemi and Terry Stewart may not be well known to a lot of people, but they're a very, very good side. They're a very strong Canterbury side. And, of course, we know Ray Boffer, the uh, the Capity uh, skip. Well, he's, he's won a National Peers title, of course, a few years back with uh, Rob Ashton. But very accomplished player, David, isn't he? Very much so. I was having a good catch-up with Ray earlier in the day. We both uh, found out that we both started the bowls in the same year, 1982. Um, so Ray's been around for a while. We were reminiscing a little bit about the Epsom 5000 tournament, Kevin, which you'll remember many years yeah, ago. Yeah, it I first was a fantastic tournament, game. wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah, it was great. great. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Ian Birch, those guys really, you know, we had some of the, uh, well, we had the best going around, didn't we? we Played the, did, at, yeah. at, and at overseas the, players too. Hugh absolutely. Duff, Hugh Duff was over and the Australians used to come and attend it. So it was a really good, uh, really good catch up. I hadn't seen Ray for a while. Well, of course, you know, Ray Boffer being uh, before, of course, was a, you know, played out of Wellington and uh, very, very formidable player, been in the representative scene, of course, for a long, side, a long time. And Mark Lewis, also a very accomplished player out of the uh, Canterbury side, out of the club Papua Nui. But by goodness, you need to get a bit closer than his first two balls we've just seen on that first day, won't we? Yeah, the Greens, uh, you know, running only about 15 seconds. Uh, we've just come off there, and I expect over the next couple of hours it may even slow down a little bit more as people start leaving. It was interesting in the singles final, the players commented later in the night that the green changed more in those last two or three hours than it did the whole time during the day. So let's keep an eye on that. Well, that's very interesting because we certainly did see in that, uh, by goodness, hasn't affected Steve Didford. They have a, uh, no. you know, a back toucher and one in front. but He's playing like a man that lost his first game and really needs <laughs> to win this one, Kevin. <laughs> I've just got that little feeling. Yeah, it could be. But uh, I, the other thing that I find, uh, uh, um, well, frustrating, I suppose you could say, really, though, David, is that the players getting to grips with you know, about getting that green. But so many players who try and sort of steer to the line, and you do that on carpet, well, I'm sorry, you're just not going to be, have effective bowls, are you? Yeah, the biggest mistake I'm, I've been seeing in some of the bowlers today is that they're, they're changing their, their line uh, when they've played short. They put weight on and they're taking more green and they're not getting their bowl back to the centre line. That's it, correct. And, you know, the, you know I'm, I'm one of the... Well, you hear... All the time I comment in commentary that, you know, how important that centre line is. Well, we we want to do the paraparam 
Papua Nui club uh, game, but of course that'll require the skip to um, just to make sure, Mark, that we can see what's going going on. And, and Mike Downer, this is the man, the second year player with four sets of bowls. Oh, he needs to show us that he's chosen the right set. Well, and they're, not, so far, they're not bad to start he's, with. He's, right. <laughs> he started really they're well. They're pretty good. Yeah, so. Remembering that these guys haven't played on the green today, so they've had their couple of trial ends, uh, the Paraparamu and Papanui side, um, whereas the Patani and Thames guys have both uh, played the round before, so they've gone straight into this game. And interestingly enough, both teams lost their first game. So they're in post-section now, pretty much. Yeah, you certainly are, aren't you? You drop one and you, you, you are. and you know, But it, it's, it's so important, though, isn't it, that, that you that centre line and getting that weight right because, you know, it's about having effective bowls, isn't it? You know, and, and really, if you finish in low of the jack all the time, it just, it just becomes a battle, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. So Papua Nui have opened on the first end, uh, up 1-0, so good start for them. And holding two to start off with, and watch this bowl now of Shane Duncan's, although it hasn't got the weight, you know, and, and I was saying in the commentary before, though, David, you know, it's great to have that line, but you've got to take it, you, everything's got to be aimed at a metre behind the jack. Um, otherwise, you know, you're, you're just going to, and your block hands up, and you, it means you just cut off shot selections, isn't it? Absolutely, so. absolutely. A, a trailing that jack of foot is what we talked about uh, at lunchtime today before we got on the green and everyone was trying to do that. Whether we're holding shot or not, um, that, that's just, that was... Well, you've got to play through bowls to get... To, other, otherwise, you, 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 you're floundering around, aren't you, trying to... Yeah trying to either cut down the count or score one. Yeah, look, and if you're, if you're a couple of feet over and you're finishing in behind, then it gives the other players in your team something to play to. So let, let's see if these guys can, um, can can put that in their mind and make sure, you know, if they're going to default on anything, that they're over the head rather than under. Well, it's interesting. I see the Capity side changing their hand there. And, of course, the danger is, as we just saw, that you... Do cut your green slightly, and you're running into your own there. And I just thought they would have stayed on the other hand, whereby it's an open hand to them, really, isn't well, it? Well, we, we know that rink one has got a nice turn off the bank, and um, uh, yes, yeah, it has. They seem, they seem to, at the moment, want to be pushing up into bowls um, instead of perhaps drawing a drawing a couple of shots. Oh. Well, the Papua New boys trying to reach to the head and get some turn the bowls around but you know Shane Duncan now the number two for the uh, Capity side really just let the bowl get the bowl out there with the second one let it work back towards the centre line well uh, it looks on like a fairly good line here as it comes towards the head and this is the zone that you really want to be getting towards just going to finish jack level, but finishing in towards the jack. And, of course, the difficulty now for the Papua Nui side is they try and steer the bowl through that, under that low bowl there. They're going to be playing weight on a hand that's turning. So let's see what happens. Well, there straight away, as we've seen, as we spoke about, Dave, as you... Yeah, they just need to be uh, trying to build ahead here. It's very early to be playing shots. I'd like to see them trying to draw a close second. Well, there's not not a great there's no value in just trying to sort of steer yourself with weight under bowls, isn't it? Because you're just not going to build any heads, and you've really left here an open gate for the uh, the, the Capity side, as we're duly seeing, aren't we? Uh, you're really playing for a one. Sh well, the Jack Trail is, is worth two, but. Because the front bowl, the low bowl, about a metre out there. Going to be very precise with weight to be getting under there and getting the right result. Absolutely. Yeah. This stage of the game, I'll be divided my view to the Papua Nui side. I'll be coming on the other hand, try and draw it and get the second shot on the other hand. Yeah, that bowl looks like it's jack high, so inside edge is going to be good for them. Let's see what uh, Mark does here with his first bowl. He's trying to play that weight underneath. Maybe he'll get the ricochet off the front. Yeah, well, he's cleared the way for his next one, perhaps. Well, he, he's committed now, really, isn't he? Yes, but, yes. you know, uh, he don't want to be dropping numbers on, the, really, on end, uh, end two, do you, really? 
It'll be interesting to see what Ray does here. You know, Ray could be drawing up on the back end here and just trying to sit something in his Or way. come to the back. Yeah, I don't know. He, he well, might, I, I he, think he's going to be drawing it forward. I reckon on. he's four down, don't you? Early on, I think uh, I think he'll be drawing here. Of course, Ray Buffer, of course, winner of New Zealand Pairs, number well, a few years back, uh, playing with Rob Ashton. But, goodness, he's under the... He doesn't... Well... Not a bad result. Good trail result, really, the because... The bowl ran through. Unfortunately, it didn't sit in front of the... White this bowl of uh, Papanui. Yeah, I there, thought it was so. going to sit underneath the black bowl, sit inside yeah, yeah. it, which would have made everything count, wouldn't it, really? It's interesting now who might have the shot. Angles, well, are, angles are a little bit deceiving. They are here, deceiving. On the, you're right, David, they um, are. But on um, the back end now is Mark, Mark Lewis indicating if he draws past the front, he would get to shot, I would say. No, he hasn't got the weight. Well, under the line. Let's see what the call is here. These, these uh, Tom's having a look. I think he called one down then, Kev. Did you hear that? Yeah, I think he did. And he'd be, but because so I thought the Ray, I thought the Ray Buff was trying to get cover with his first bowl. Well, no, no, I think he was just trying to change the head a little bit because it was sitting, you know, Jack Bowl as a target, and they were holding a good number. I think he was just trying to change it. Unfortunately, he got the underside of the Jack and and didn't stay with it. Ray will just be drawing down here on the back end to try and draw the shot. There's plenty of room. Well, he's a draw player, isn't he? Yes, he? absolutely. That's, yeah. that's, that's his way of playing the game, isn't it? That I just think right. this comes back. All yeah, the how far is he going to come back to the centre line? It's a Didn't turn as much as I thought it, it might. Was one, well, it was one. Gave it away. Yeah, he bet, it's only one. First end, you know, he's uh, he'd be disappointed, sure, because he certainly had a good head there. And the good thing with Stephen Diffie, you do get plenty of time because he spends just about as much time up here as he does down <laughs> the other end. <laughs> ah, very good. Yeah, he's a old, old committed Steve. I saw him in that first game. He had a drive and he just about bent the ball down to the head. <laughs> yeah, and he's... the card came out the back of his pocket and the pen went everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's... He had to clean up after himself on the way back. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. he's not frightened of a run around. No, no. And Played down on his back end here, looking to get under that ball. Oh, he was zone, there. tipped it over. Is that a counter? He tipped in there. It's, it's always awkward. And Adam Hayward, the Thames Valley player, it's, uh, he's, uh, he's had a pretty good season, but yeah, well, I hope this isn't going to be a game of uh, let's look at what we can... <laughs> Yeah, Adam, Adam's, he's got big feet, hasn't he? Look at the size of his feet. Yeah, yeah hang on, I've got some of his feet. <laughs> yes. um, I never realised that before, Kev. <laughs> they're very That's big. It's not an effect of the TV <laughs> making things look bigger, is it? They are very big. Looking at here, you would say, looking at the head, you would say the front bowl's a shot, wouldn't you? The front bowl in line with the centre, uh, sitting literally right on the centre line, you would say would be shot, but... Um, Got his number three there, Matt Johnson having it. Yeah. I'm not sure that Matt and, and Adam are actually uh, on the same page as the. No, I don't think they are. Uh, <laughs> I think Adam's Adam's really not sure what to play here. Well, this well uh, playing. Uh, who knows what he's playing? Are you trying to face that black like bowl out, is he? Well, that hey. bowl's is that onto the track. Trying to onto the jack. Well, that's, that's his own bowl Adam's that's back bowl. there. So I think uh, he's made shot of that. I actually looked like a white disc bowl. I thought he might have already had the shot, so... There was a special, well, was a special end from the Thames <laughs> team there, Kevin. Very special. <laughs> I think one up to one up. Yeah, I think that you're right, mate. Adam likes the drama. Uh, that's a fair call, mate. Yeah, I would that's why I was saying I'd rather, no disrespect, but there'll be a lot of dialogue going on in that, uh, and a lot of shot selections and, and uh, maybe an if -bees. In fact, that was two in that Pepinui. Uh Second end was one on each end. Ah, sorry, apologies. Yep. Geriatric. So, I think you don't very yeah. often see them all in whites now, do we? No, no, it is different. It does stand out amongst the colour, doesn't it? Certainly does. So, 
your uh, ex-plane, former plane mate, Mike Galloway, well, deservedly yeah, in that bro. New Zealand side um, yeah, uh, over there at, at Limited on Spa. And no doubt uh, I, I got the impression from Mike with a, an email that I got from him that He's uh, very much looking forward to the opportunity. He's soaking up the atmosphere already, and they haven't even started yet. Yeah, uh, he, he is. And and close contact. It's a very special trip for him, and, and we're all behind him and the rest of the New Zealand team, of course. But, um, yep, in, in contact with him every day, and he's just giving me little updates. And he, I can just, you can feel that he's buzzing. And uh, and I'm sure the rest of the team are. We're just so hoping that no, the performance is uh, what, we, what we need. Well... Ball here in this the Capity Capity side drew right to the jack. Well, 2002, David's a long time ago. It was. It is last medal. Yes. All the back Mike there, bro. Kernahan. And we've got the team to do it, Kevin. We've got the team to do it, and uh, we, we have. Um, uh, notwithstanding that, David, to be fair. Um, They've got a pretty tough draw in, oh. in, in just about all disciplines, which, you know, and certainly you know, two go you know, two go through. Um, so, you know, one could say you could you can have possibly one slip up. I don't think so. I don't think you're going to be able to. Well, as you know, one of the things, of course, which always happens in Commonwealth Games as well is that... You've, you you do have the unexpected countries who deliver you something that you're not expecting. And that's always been the case at the Commonwealth Games. There's from a raft of countries. I think I think the, the team will want to be very wary of those lesser countries. Um, we'll always be up for the game against the, the, the Scot Scottish and, and, uh, and the well-performed countries. But it's, as you say, it's those minor countries that could make the difference between you getting... Uh, first or second. Well, we saw it, in fact, at the Gold Coast, you know, and, and the, uh, you know, the Cook Islands within the, in, in the piers with Aidan Zitterstein. You know, they Jace, beat yours by a metre. One could say came from nowhere, so and 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 you know, beat some pretty good sides to uh, be a real upset, can't they? Yeah, and yeah, also in that side, of course, Jason Lindsay's in that side as Is well. I yes, didn't know that. yeah, really? yeah, Jason oh, Lindsay's in that side. Well. Us guys from from, uh, from Auckland certainly know that Jason uh, in his younger day was a pretty, yeah, he was pretty handy. Absolutely, yeah. I didn't realise that he'd been selected on that side. Got he on. had. So reaching with weight here is he trying to reach through the head with a metre. Hard shot to play on the surface, isn't it? It is, but I think, you know, that hand lends itself to, to doing that. Because you're getting more work on that, aren't you? you get a lot more work yeah. at, the, at the back end of it. Yeah. Yeah, mate. He's making sure he's Check up. In that's, there, the, mate. that's the key thing. Show the jack. Ray's got a tough shot here, getting underneath those front. Underneath, points. hold up and sit and go through, isn't it? You know that. I actually think he's probably trying to draw around them, Kevin, and, and sit one in behind. Well, him with the weight. The, 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 the shot, the, the shot that's sitting on the jack actually did come from that arc out out there. So, you know. He, Let's see what Mark can do here. He didn't get it away quite as well as I. Thought he would, but yeah, yeah, it just didn't seem to come out of the hand quite like I thought it should. Which meant he was a little wide. Probably the weight was still, still the shot to play. Ray's not going uh, go to play it. We're not gonna gonna going to give it away two ends in a row, are we? It's a no, no. We'll, he wants we'll, to get on the board. Yeah, we'll get hold that. We'll take that. <laughs> yeah. No get doubt as well, David, is the, as the way how the weather at present sits in the UK um, will. Well, will be advantageous to, let's say, the New Zealand side, Australia. Uh, the difficulty might be is to uh, get the pace because it might quicken up a wee bit more on that at Limited on Spa. Oh, you, know. you mean another whole half second? Well, no, it's in, well, we were, Marley and I were there pre COVID and. Uh, we were there when the English Women's Championships were on, and we were talking to Sian Honor, who's of course she's in the English side, and they were aiming. Their aim was that they were, and the English squad at that point in time, they wanted 12 seconds. So if you've got 12 seconds, really, it's 
you are getting some draw. It's not in the old days of... Well, because of the bowls they're using. Yeah, they're using yeah. Draw, I think. Yes. Yeah, the old days of nine. <laughs> 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 then you've got to shower rain. <laughs> no. yeah. um, so, yeah, it will be it will be interesting. And, of course, but, you know, let me know on Spy and Pound on big rinks. They're big, you know, they're big, big surface areas. So, right. A bit like the British Open golf. Yeah, it is. It's safer there, <laughs> but bro. I roll them once. That really, though, shot, it's... Bro, uh, but, I play to you. Yeah, you got enough. Well, you know, I'm. You get a week's practice. That's enough, isn't it? Oh, you don't want to be practicing team. I mean, they've got a couple of test matches that they against. I think they're Wales, and I yes, wasn't sure who the yes, other one they were. Yes, yes, I definitely got yeah. Wales, and that, and really, that playing the home nations at this stage is, well, is good to play. Nice warm up. Yeah, yeah because it really gives you an indication yeah. of, of where you're at, and and I'm sure, look, they'll have a day off too, where they, you know, um, have a day to themselves just to think about. What they're doing, there's some individual preparation they've got to do as well as the team preparation. I know Mike's very keen on the players, you know, doing some of their own things as well. Um, and that's all part of it. Yeah, Mike's very much, uh, it's not all about bowls, bowls, bowls and more bowls. You know, you, you, and it was pleasing to see, uh, I saw some things the other day. Um, with talking about Jason Lindsay, the Cook Island side. They've been in the camp, they've been training, etc. But uh, it's great to see here they were um, seeing some of the sites um, around where they're based and, and, you know, taking in some of the local atmosphere and culture and Absolutely. all that. It's all part of it, isn't it? Yeah, and they're there early. And, of course, there's a lot of activity. Um, our guys have arrived uh, sort of 10 days before. But in the next 10 days, there's going to be a lot of people arriving in the village and, you know, lots going on that can distract you from your own preparation. Well, it's interesting this time. I'm not sure who's what, but the New Zealand side, New Zealand, sorry, New Zealand team is right, actually right. spread over three locations. So, um, because like, there's a couple of uh, distant sports which are actually in London. Right. So, apparently, that it's, yeah, it's over three that it's split so uh, but you know we wish that New Zealand side you know all the best and uh, we can but hope that from the men I mean when that last medal was in fact Mike Kernan himself it was in 2002 in Manchester he'll be pushing hard just like the players he will be. We won't be pushing Steve Grasson as, as hard as he pushed him <laughs> in that very controversial <laughs> bronze medal match, which was well known. All right, so, so Papa, Papa Nui 2-1 up here, Kev, and, uh, and there are a couple down on the head. Now, the speed head, Dave, you say it's about 15 now? Yes, it was certainly wasn't much quicker uh, in our game. So... As this, as we saw in Wellington, could also get to about. Oh, that's not the line there. You know, it's it's one of the things about sitting in this commentary thing, uh, David. Is you can literally not all boss, but you can just about tell out of the hand, and you know the old guilt of staring to a point and on playing on this surface. Well, you just you're just going to lose balls, aren't you? Yeah, they got to pick where their breaking point is, don't they? This looks a little wide here, and I don't think it's really got the weight to make it back to the head. Well, as I said in, in the last game as well, Dave, you, you really got to be making that target a metre a metre behind where you're actually at. So is that, yeah, you might have the nice arc in your bowl, but you're not going to get all the way down to the white, are you? You've then? only got 30 bowls to play. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right. So, you know, if you play two-thirds of them short, then uh, you haven't really contributed to the to the team. So, trying to get well, got a good, bit of a lucky good result. Good result, good really result. finished Jack level for the uh, Papua Nui club side. I've got a feeling Ray will be asking uh, Tom to come down on the forehand here and perhaps draw to that Jack High Bowl. No, he's no, sticking with the, the back end. Well, it is. It's, um, that back end's got a nice. It's got a nice draw out yeah. there, hasn't it, on yeah. that side of the rink. Probably trying to beat the, the green one out on the right-hand side of your screen there. It's He's all going to depend on the nice. weight. He might get it and sit inside, it, does well. he? Well, oh. well, there's nothing wrong with that bowl there. Uh, another bowl on the head. Ray's really happy with that. I think uh, 
I think the Papanui guys are going to come down on the forehand here and just look to sit there. Jack Highbolt. Oh, no, weight. Lots of weight. Yeah, well, that's certainly... Well, it's just going to get an inside slide in towards the jack, oh, is it? Yes, wow. it is, and sits <laughs> right. You know, it's, uh, you know it, can, it can happen, of course, can't it? We've just got that square cut into the uh, side of the head. He wasn't short. He wasn't no, short. he wasn't short, and he got that sit on the jack. But, you know, Ray really, Ray Boffer can really play that same line down through there, can't he? That, that ball's been moved out of the way now. Where he can. Can. Yeah, I'd say uh, Papanui probably holding one shot there. The, the Is it red or pink with the um, black disc on it? Well, that uh, would be mate, the second you shot. You beat that front one here in it the area. It just seems easier than going to that forehand. just seems an easier, easier track. Easier avenue down to the target, down, does, yep. down through there. So here is Ray Boffer, winner of the National Pairs, of course, playing with Rob Ashton. Good line here. He's on a good line, all right. Just needs to hold oh, in a bit longer to get shot. past the front. Not going to do so. Really good at the under the yard of weight. And he's played, made it really hard. And unfortunately, he's tipped that bowl across into the forehand line for his next bowl. So... Um, He's literally so, cut one he, hand off, hasn't he? He has, he has. And he's probably two metres short of weight uh, to get the result he was looking for. So the Papanui side holding the one shot. And I think it'll literally force Ray Boffer to read. I think he'll have to change his hand, really. He again. will, but he, he yeah, might just have to, goes he quick. He might have to be happy with one down. Uh, and perhaps just looking to turn the shot bowl onto the it, jack. Yeah, well, one, you know, that's... So, oh, as we predicted, going to that forehand. Great. Looks out wider Great. on that arc with that weight, doesn't it? Great. Probably weight wasn't bad, Kev, just got a bit wide. Yeah, good. Oh, the weight's fine. I just say he's got that... He was out on the wider arc, wasn't yep. he? The, the yep. wider line. You know, that Papanui boy's pretty keen to see what's going on down there. got... They must feel... No, they haven't got a chance to make any more shots, I wouldn't think. There's probably well, they're not danger gonna, than well, they're going to try and risk and push the jack level bowl through the head. With only, the, only playing for one more. Yeah, it's not really what you call a percentage shot, would you? Right. So, Mark Lewis to skip. And, well, it's under the centre line. It's a matter of how much weight it's got on the way through. Is it going to get all the way up, up to sit there, on this bowl? And he is, but oh. will he... Yeah, well, well played. played. He may well have made three of that. Got a touch onto the jack. And Interesting if he'd been onto the shot bowl and turned it onto the jack, he would have been one down. Right was two. Uh, well played. He was only really just a roll away from getting another shot on that. But Two's pretty important there, you know, out to out to 4-1. Um, it's, a, it's a nice early lead. Yep. If you would uh, said you could have that before you started, you'd take it. You can, you can very quickly and innocently... Ends disappear on the game. Yeah, so. Only 15 ends uh, yeah. in the Chamber Champ fours. Um, does go very quickly. Interesting the time of two and quarter hours, too. You know, if you have a couple of kills, yeah, um, you're going to be break. struggling to, to get the 15 ends in. Oh, and if you're having there, a lot of Walsh and Matilda go back because the forwards up the, the green as well. Yeah, the jammed. players need to take some responsibility for that. We don't want to be caught by time. No. And it shouldn't be because we're down at the head too much. I, I agree, and I made the point last week as well at, at the triples because uh, we had Great attempt, pal. one game which was a very important game and it was they were running just on two ends behind the, the, the rink and as it duly turned out came to a one shot result and they didn't play the last end yeah, that's a shame for that to happen. But to be fair, though, David, they were both equally. There was no one party. Both was, parties doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, they were both yeah. doing it. And, and uh, I said at the time doing the commentary that, well, you know, you can shoot yourself in the foot, can't <laughs> you? <laughs> yeah, fair comment. And it, so what's your thoughts been now that, that this is that we've gone to the new format of Champion and Champions? It's a... Uh, don't see any reason to change, Kev. I think, uh, you know, being out amongst the players, um, there's no there's no negativity at all. Everyone's enjoying it, you know. Great. The men, you know, having to wait till sort of 3 o'clock to start. Um, 
you know, that can be a little frustrating, but I haven't heard anyone complaining about it. We all know what the conditions are before we get down here. There's no surprises, and, and Bowls New Zealand have uh, kept the, the play going, you know, each day to try and make the best of the times. Well, they have, and uh, the, the other good thing about it is that, that uh, which we were lacking a wee bit before, I thought, was it's great to see a number of, let's say, the smaller centres, there's some of the smaller centres who, ha who haven't been really at any of the events, but, you know, like the guys in the far north, you know, they're all down here, and, and to me that's what makes this, this event so good. And I, I remarked the other day, in fact, you know, when, when uh, it hasn't been the big centres who have all been there at final time. It hasn't been, and, and even the teams that are coming from those bigger centres uh, aren't necessarily on paper the teams that you'd pick to come through there. No. But that's the beauty of Champ of Champ. You know, you come through your club stuff with your mates, you have a chance of winning your, your regional or your centre, and every now and then one of those teams gets through yep. and, and they can enjoy um, being playing at this level. It doesn't mean the standard's any different. Um, the bowls is, is you still got to, it's cutthroat. You got to be right onto it to to be a winner. But the other but the other good thing with it as well, though, David, I think is that by now it's having like around the country indoor complexes, whereas before fitting the champion of champions into the whole bowls calendar um, was always a wee bit of a challenge, wasn't it? You know, uh, at centre level and and also at, at a at national level. Now with the advent of the indoor complexes, it's certainly now, you know, and I think it's great for some of the guys who can come to some of these other places where they normally wouldn't be going to play and playing on good indoor surfaces. Brilliant, absolutely. And I was talking to some of the Hastings guys before and they're looking to have one of their tournaments, you know, step up and, and um, have some prize money and, and bring some of the better players back because they know they've enjoyed the experience of being here they can now encourage them to come back for other tournaments and other events as well. So, And this is where Hastings are taking advantage of, of having the opportunity to host, making the most of it, and now the players want to come here. Two or three years ago, yeah, I've never been to Hastings. No, no, I, no, I agree. And, and it's not a place no. that I would necessarily have, have travelled to to play a tournament. Now I'm telling them, send me an entry, I want to be there. It's interesting as well, though, here in Hastings now, well, Hawke's Bay, I should say, Hastings Napier, that... There's more um, artificial surfaces than grass surfaces now, and there's reasons for that. And I, I'm sure you would join me is that we never want to lose though. That don't get me started. I, I have never really been a fan of the artificial surface, but yeah. then I went and enjoyed Manurewa where there yeah. was only artificial. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I shot myself in the foot there, but. But I've enjoyed so much of being at that club and really the green is, you know, the, whether it's artificial or not, it's become secondary to actually being at the club and enjoying the bowls. But there's still nothing better, though, than getting out in the in the summer. Uh, a bowl coming in here from the cap. No, this is that. Well played on that club, Papua Nui. Right on top of the jet. You can't beat getting down in the sun and getting out on the cotch or... No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, it's... Uh, and it's interesting, one of the other things that's been said to me, Dave, nothing to do with this, but one of the reasons why a number of guys keep going back to Taranaki year after year after yeah, year. Mate. Yep, I got gotcha. you. I believe you. Absolutely. Is, you know, the quality of the greens. Quality of the greens. Absolutely. Um, whether it's one of the city clubs or an outlying country club, uh, doesn't matter. And, and people go back because of the greens that are provided. So, yeah. It's a, but we just got to accept now, don't we, that, it, that it's it's a multi-purpose, whether it's carpet, artificial, whatever. It's just the way of the sport now. It's isn't the reality it? of what needs to happen. But look, it's giving us year-round opportunities. Uh, having a complex Wait, go, like this in Nai Nai, Dunedin, Pukekohe. Uh, <clears throat> so we just got to take advantage of it, make the best, most of most of it. Well, we yeah. wouldn't have got these events through without no, it, no. without these complexes. To Ab be fair, absolutely, we, we wouldn't have yeah. we wouldn't have played them. So, it's Papua Nui holding one, trying to get up to what is their toucher. 
Yeah, 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 Mark's probably a metre short there. Great, he played a really nice line, but he's left himself a metre short uh, to make that count. And to be fair, Ray Boffert would like to... He'd like to start scoring, really, wouldn't he? He would do, and I, it's a tough end for him to do that, too. If he's oh, he's on a good attempt at line, there. though. He's just going to go by, is he? But that was a great attempt to get down to the jack on... Opportunity here for uh, Mark to Come on, pal. draw a second shot. shot. Yeah, Not too much danger for him, even if he got onto that shot bowl, Kevin. Um, you know, he's pushing the jack towards a couple of his. Just so a couple of rolls on it would be, no, wouldn't no it? No need to be short here. Yeah, certainly to his advantage. One, two, three sitting there, isn't it? Mm. Just going to be wide of it. In fact, he's pushed uh, another um, paraparam bowl in there. But there's not a lot really for Ray to try and attack. To, to, he's, to got a, he's got a dead draw here, and that, that's tough on a green that's running 15 seconds. The only advantage here is he's playing the bank end, which will turn for him. It will yeah. come back on the centre line. Yeah, he'll get some movement back. It's but it's really tight on those front bowls coming. coming got to be just missing the front, don't you? Just missing them. He's given it a good go. It's a great attempt, isn't it? Just not oh, quite then. No. But... Another one. Normal circumstances, yeah, that'd be quite quite good, isn't it? But trying to once that bowl locks onto the front of the jack, it really is. It's a it's a fine line, isn't it? It is hard work for him to to get that. And look, he's he was only playing for one shot, you know, f um, four one down. Um, now five one. And of course, the young one of the young sort of what I would call up and comers of this surface here, especially in Hastings, their own boy. Their own their son, Dean Drummond, players first uh, pennant game this weekend for Musgrove, Musgrove Hill. Hill. Yes, yeah. he's uh, and I happen to see on the Musgrove Hill uh, the Facebook page, their, their event page. Oh. They've got this. Uh, uh, they've got a full photo up there of Dean Drummond. They all they're, they're blowing him up already. Yeah, they? he's already. On the, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no he, pressure, Dean. No, <laughs> he's <laughs> already. Um, <laughs> I hope Gary Mounsey and Jeff Hawkins are looking after him. Well, okay. well Chris need some old heads around him. Well, I know Chris will leave will look after him. <laughs> uh, lady, Matt. Uh, yeah, and he's fortunate at the moment that he's uh, another new um, Musgrove Hills player as, as as well. Another Kiwi guy, uh, Roger Stevens from D Dunedin. Yes, I believe Roger spends some time at Musgrove Hill as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So he so. Um, Dean staying with him at at present while he uh, finds his finds his digs, but yeah, uh, interesting that, that Dean's doing that. When I was twenty, I went over and lived on the Gold Coast for six months. Went over and played with Nick Unkovich and and Paul Ainsworth again, and pal. Doug Richards, Jolly yeah, for three weeks. Some names of the past, that was uh, an education and a half for a twenty-year-old. Well, I can tell you, uh, in a lot of ways, yeah. <laughs> not just on the green. No, in a lot of ways, uh, yeah. Well, the I had right. a, a good friend of mine, Pat Farrington, who doesn't way. play yes. bowls anymore. He came and rescued me, and I went and went and spent the last part of my That's stay with him and and old Kiwi Wilson, Keith Wilson. Keith, yeah. yes, uh, they were. Um, the second part of my stay, they, they were my buddies and looked after us. But look, the quality of bowls that uh, and a lot of learning was done. You know, in those days we were playing every week for you know two or three thousand dollar tournaments sure over two are. or three days, and uh, it was a great learning experience. And I was really pleased to see that Dean's uh, taken the opportunity to go over there, and he'll come back. Uh, a better person for the experience, and and I guarantee you, he'll come back a better bowler. Well, he will, and I, you know, knowing or not knowing intimately, but I mean, a pretty good idea of most of the clubs on the on the on the coast. Uh, he's gone to a good club, Absolutely. and, and you know, because no Brian question. Baldwin is uh, well, he's about to retire from there actually. Yeah. Um, and Gary Mouncey, you know, like, so like, like Chris to leave this year. Won two Queensland titles. He's in it through the finals uh, of uh, the Australian indoor. Uh, so it ha certainly it hasn't uh, hindered uh, Chris's um, results. Or I think he's now on three Queensland titles. I think so, um, which is not easy. And he and of course pennant bowls. That's the you know, we know how that, it's just you know it's. <laughs> Literally, first class bowls. It's another level. Yeah. It is. Day after day yeah, after day. It is. Yeah. So, here from around the rinks, we've got some updates for you. Thank you, Pauline. 
and Edendale from the deep south up against the Riverhead of North Harbour and five ends gone and it is Edendale leading 6-4 and then Omara Nui Omara Nui uh, up against Hillcrest and it is the South Islanders leading 6-3 uh, Arapaho from up the north, from Northland, up against Takaro in the Manawa 2. And there's the Manawa 2 uh, side leading 6-2 after 5. And West End of Timaru up against Kaikarai from Dunedin. And it is the Dunedin side who are leading 4-2 after 5. So, of course, there's some teams that don't play this round. Is that right, Dan? They'll play the next round, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So we were a little bit unfortunate. We we played our first round. We sit sit around for two hours, not playing in the current round, and then we come back in at around half past seven, eight o'clock to play our last round of the day. So not ideal to have that break, but we're lucky tomorrow we play the first two rounds two in a row, and then we finish early. So oh, that's, yeah. it works the other way as well. So two very good bowls there from the... Paparam number two, Shane Duncan, one sitting right on top of the jack. <laughs> and you know, the Capity side trying to reach down to the jack through that port under the black bowl, the white disc bowl, you'll see, you're going to run into it. And you, know, it's, you can easily get cluttered up here to try and get to go into it. not looking good at no. all for the rave off the side. Uh, if these guys, the Papua Nui Club, can draw another shot tight in here. Uh, it's going to really put some acid on. Well, Correct. If it gets up tight up down here towards the centre line, and it will do behind the head, well, you're just a bowl high. Well, all of a sudden, they've got command of the head, really, haven't they? I don't you're think there's any future coming down that back end. You're going to have to have too much weight and too many gaps. I think drawing a nice second close shot second, bowl, then, then go try and get a second shot on the forehand. Give you something to, to play to for the for the last few bowls of the end. And that's exactly what uh, we're going to see Tom Henderson trying to get, but you see that steered it under the line. You'll pay the price straight away. That'll disappear. And uh, it didn't have the weight anyway. I just feel like there's a number brewing. I was just going to say that it's not. At 5-1 <coughs> and scoring a, a number is really going to uh, put Capity on the back foot. Well, you pick up a three or four hit, David, and, yeah. and this... Just, just about halfway through the game. And this will count, one would think, just a matter of how far it runs. It's going to get bowl, contact. Actually. It's a good bowl. Coming, coming in behind the head over the centre line, just right on the centre line. You'll see that four sitting there, two greeny colour bowls and the two black, and it's imperative here that the Ram number three, Tom Henderson, gets second shot. Big get bowl. Big bowl. Trying to get the shot, get that out of your head. If it happens, it's by accident. Get second shot, not going to do so. Just going to run into the front and just make that harder now to get around past that bowl to get... It's actually yeah. hard to draw another shot on that end. Well, it is, well. isn't it? It's, 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 uh, Mark might have to go to the backhand and look to... He's got a bowl. It's his bowl sitting out on the wing at... Uh, at uh, on our left-hand screen, there's a white disc bowl sitting at about 2 o'clock. Mark's so probably going to look to to navigate around that. At 5-1, this becomes a big end, doesn't it? Yeah, well, 9-1 at the moment if you count the head. Absolutely. And I can see Ray's kind of shaking in his shoes here. He's really not sure what to play. He's either got to commit to a uh, full-blooded drive uh, and wait and hope that he, he gets the result he's looking for, but there's too many gaps there for my liking. On the backhand, out on that wide draw side, and it'll come back from there. Yep. Gets past this, front, this black bowl, will count. Well, it's a good bowl, not made the target any bigger. No, Kevin just left the gaps. Ray's really up against it here. Well, I don't think Ray's really got to follow that down, try and get a second shot down through there. Because yeah, it's. Like he's on his forehand. I think he's going to commit here. I think he's really going to go. Well, it's a big bowl in the context of this match. Trying to get down to... Single bowl target. Well, and that's gone. Yeah, that's this pressure that's got Another to his delivery of it. It's just pressure of being five down. But what I was saying, David, even if he draws under that front bowl, he's going to get at least... He might get second shot or get third shot, but you're just opening the door here for another counter, aren't you? Yes, you are. And, and it's going to... Well, he's played it well. He's yeah, good. it's another counter. Yeah, he just another don't, don't want to make that target. Many needs to get... Oh, well, that's not a good bowl. I'm sorry. Well, it... 
it's a good bowl and stuff runs close to the jack, but for the opportunity to run down through that port there just opens the percentages wider. So can he do it though? It's on a different well, line. Away, he can use the outside of this bolt. Hole. Hole. Six. One, two, three, six, isn't it? Eleven one after seven ends of the Papua Nui Paraparamu game. And, he had uh, to go at that, didn't he? Then I oh, was committed after his first. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. had to draw within, you know, two or three feet to save uh, at least two or three shots. And with with the bowls in front uh, on a green that's as tight like this, uh, that's going to be tough. And when the Jack Level bowl came in, that second bowl uh, of the uh, of Mark Lewis, as it just made you just yeah, it made it look a little bit. Better, it did. It did. It. <laughs> yeah. So the umpire, was six. the umpire would be putting his two hands in the air if it was cricket. Kid. Yeah, it is. It's 11-1, and, man, that's that's bigger than the mountain. And in the other match, in the Petoni Thames match, um, it's interesting what we spoke about before. So seven ends, six ends, they're up looking at the head all the time. Yep, yep. Start at the same time. Yes, Absolutely. So that's literally saying that in this case here they're a good five minutes at least behind the other behind the other rink. Good bowl here though from the Petoni player and didn't fit a toucher. Well done. Didn't see a touch of the jack. <coughs> so now the youngster on the mat for Adam Hayward and Matt Johnson's trying to get down underneath his own bowl That's on the backhand. Pretty good attempt. Yeah, not bad. It's still hard to get to. You know, Adam will be wondering how he's going to change that around. So Matt Johnson is he in the the young Thames Valley in the Thames side? Is he? Yes, yes. Yeah, most of these guys have uh, probably not Jason Prout, but certainly Mark, Matt, and Adam have been representing Thames over the last few years. They had uh, they got off to a three nil start in the intercentre against us, uh, and they were looking like tipping everybody over. And then, unfortunately, the second round they lost three nil, and can happen, mate. and everyone came back into the frame for the last round. So we had a it was a day at Tui Park. The green was running twenty one seconds in a in a lot of wind, and uh, made for a very interesting day. So Adam Hayward, did he play counties at one stage, didn't he? Oh, he's been around the traps a little. Oh. Bit. <laughs> I think he's, he's uh, settled at Thames at the moment. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll right, go with that. Here, he's, uh, if you're going to play that hand my word of advice to him play. is don't spend too long trying to sort out what you're going to do. Yeah, he's look, he's a shot player, um, and he's always looking to play a shot or two, whether he's holding or not. Um, and as you can see here, he's, he's, I think sometimes he gets himself in two minds. He's got to get back to that map and be, be very purposeful of well, what he's doing. Correct, because he's looking there, but you know, that's going to look different when he stands on that map. Absolutely. So, you know, it's... Uh, um, to be fair to him, look, he's, he's, he's in post-section. They've got to win this game to stay in the competition, so... He's trying to do the best thing for his team. He's trying to make sure he's playing the right shot, but sometimes you can overthink it. So here he is. Oh, goodness, he's, he's trying to get oh, that. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> he was trying to play the miracle shot, go through the gap. Well, he got half the miracle. Yes, he got half the miracle. He's trying to open it up, I guess, is the, uh, is the other intention of that shot. He's actually ended up with a pretty good result. He's been able to save one shot, only being one down. Steve will be wanting to put some pressure on here. So, because Stephen Dipford, formerly of Canterbury, now playing out of uh, Wellington and playing uh, at the Batoni oh, Club, and who gets Great past ball. this good bowl here and doesn't make the target any. That's a fantastic bowl. That it's really outside. It's inside the centre line, really, isn't it? So Adam's got nothing to hit there. No. So only chance is uh, really you have to swing and hit, wouldn't he? But you know, uh, you can. Uh, well, I'm not going to try and guess what side he's going to play. Is that fair, David? Backhand is, uh, yeah. 
He's probably just trying to draw down to the shot bowl. Well, there's more than likely a sit there in that backhand sit. But, but you'd have to be very tight on the on the front bowl. And yeah. has to have the weight yeah. to get there. Now, you know, Steve did, but now he can, you know, he's got the chance, hasn't he, to make three of that down. You know, he, he played that weight. He drew that weight very well on that backhand. I think he's got a... He's under it this time, though, isn't he? Yeah. Probably just wait... I mean, if he'd had a metre or two of weight on that line, it probably would have held held there. Trying to be a little bit careful, but look, a couple of shots. 5-4. Yep. Oh, Keeping well, it friendly. And sadly for the uh, the uh, boys from Parapara Umu, it's just, you could say one end's going to kill them. Yeah, and uh, they haven't opened too good here on this end. No, they haven't. Uh, three, three, maybe four holding. And, and then, well, got one of their own bowls and then the way through there. Didn't that go on the running surface? <laughs> Mostly a, a long didn't. way. <laughs> it Probably did. in for third shot. Be Jack High. So, well, um, mind, mate. You can still play there, mate, if you want. Yep, Either they're going to stay on the back end. Well, Rolls Jack High. Get into this. Up to you. The Rick's coming down. See if he can draw another shot. Well, because Rick Day's a pretty, you know, Rick Day's been playing a long time in in Canterbury, hasn't he? He's uh, very well known. You know, he's been a very active player. So you play four rounds, is it? Yep, playing four rounds, three out of four to qualify. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Like last week, we uh, last week in where were we last week? Wellington. Girls nodded to me. I got my geography right. <laughs> you wouldn't have had just your shirt on. I don't think would you give. No, no, no. It's been you know. Look, the girls here now need a huge pat on the back because I don't know if you know, people realise that they each week. All this gear gets packed up, transported to uh, another venue, and then gets set up again. And uh, Tamara uh, and the team uh, do an outstanding job making sure that uh, we can bring you this professional coverage. That uh, you know the the photos or the f that we now bring is certainly it's first class and. Tamara and her team and volunteers who jump in from uh, around the country is uh, yeah, fantastic and they do a wonderful job yeah, and one. well I'm, I don't know how many hours we'll have brought of bowls uh, uh, in the last month but a lot. No, I certainly enjoyed watching last week I was uh, at home on the Sunday and, and flicked the bowls on and did, there were some good semi-finals uh, games played there and Ross Ellery coming through in the men's and, and Karen Hemmer in the, in the ladies. Uh, Well-deserved titles. They, they were the best teams on the day. They played really well. And I was so impressed with Ross Ellery. Uh, I, hadn't, I haven't struck Ross very much over my Player of the tournament, mate. And uh, some of the bowls he played for his team got them out of trouble a, a number of times. Um, he must be very proud of his, his achievements. Oh, looking for the bowl here for a number, but they're not going to do so. Really looking to, um, yeah, Ross, you know, he had uh, uh, numerous times he was uh, under the pump. In trouble. In trouble. In trouble. And, you know, he, and, of course, the, here's Boffer again trying to get to a result. He's going to get the front, might actually just help the, well, that might, just the one, I think. Yeah, could, well, they'll probably measure the second, I would imagine. But uh, if you take that last week, you know, the team of um, Nathan Glass and Ricky Cook, Kelvin Scott, good side. Yes, on paper, you um, probably had uh, the three best sides uh, uh, in the in the semi-finals, and uh, Ross, to, to come through out of those four, was very impressive. Mate. And he uh, he played some big okay, bowls, some job. some real big bowls. Twelve one now in the Papua Nui Papua Nui Paparim game, and five four Petoni versus Thames. 
we can give some listeners, uh, the um, uh, watchers, listeners, both, aren't we? Both, yeah. <laughs> we can uh, give them some results of the first round of the men's uh, earlier on. Uh, we had uh, uh, Barry Andrews uh, side uh, from uh, South Canterbury uh, get Stephen Didford, uh, Steve Cox and the boys from Riverhead uh, were beaten by Vern Marshall. So Vern Marshall, Tolga Bay had a win in the first round. Uh, uh, Adam Haywood lost to um, the Manurewa boys in the first round. And uh, we had Glenn Springer uh, from Wanganui. I think uh, those guys ended up with a, a bye, uh, which was a win because the uh, Richmond guys yes, were able to get Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct, yeah. So that's, uh, that's a win in the Whanganui uh, pocket on, for them. Mate. And I think the boys uh, went out there and had a game of peers just to keep their eye on during the, uh, during the game. Yeah, unfortunately, the weather conditions uh, yesterday out of Wellington, um, just uh, I think all up we lost three teams. I think it was two in the, two in the women uh, and one in the men. Uh, that 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 we lost because of the oh, the adverse run, weather, which uh, um, sort of just cut off the transport options to get here uh, to get here yesterday. So bad luck to the bad luck to the Richmond boys. I'm sure they were looking forward to being here. Some other results in the first round. Uh, Alex Reed and the and the guys from Point Chev, the Point Chev Pirates, uh, they had a, a win. Uh, they beat uh, Gary Palling's side from Cooper's Beach. Uh, and then Shane Elliott uh, from Edendale uh, won his first round against Trevor Belk from Tuckero. Anthony Quinlett from Tauranga South had a win against uh, Gary Murawai's side from Martinborough. And Darren Goodwin, the Paratutu guys, off to a good start. Uh, they were able to get on top of the uh, Nigel Burbeck side uh, from Kaikoura. Well, if you look at those sides, to, you know, and I'm, I'll put you in there as well, David, right? But uh, um, you know, Darren Gooden from Paratutu, good side. Absolutely. Very, very good side. Um, I, was ve I was also uh, very impressed with the uh, the guys from the first game from uh, down the the deep deep south uh, from the the Edendale boys. Yeah, they, they they were very impressive in their win. Uh, and of course, the uh, Alex Reed skip side from Auckland. You know, not being biased in this, but you know. They're a very well-performed side as well. Anyone with they? a pirate on their shirt is going to be hard to beat. <laughs> well, they've got the record to prove it over the last number of years. Yeah, that goals, three five and different events. So, yeah, nobody will be taking them lightly. And of course, Barry Andrews, you know, well known out of you know, South Canterbury, and the young and Tom in there, young Tom in there, who's very, very impressive young player. So, you know, there's uh, yeah, there's some good sides uh, in that men's uh, side of the draw. That uh, you know, as the, and the bells are ringing, Sunday. I'm picking they'll be, most of those will be there. And of course, we look now already this uh, this Canterbury side, you know, to twelve one up. Well, you know, it's a pretty good start, isn't it? Any team coming out of Canterbury is going to be strong, and you know, while these guys might not be yes. uh, well-known players, they're going to be a solid club side who's obviously playing well together, and uh, and you know, they'll be looking at the scoreboard and just wanting to make sure that they don't let the Cavity boys back into the game. Now, Ray Boffer will not be giving anything away here. No, he won't be happy with the, the start they've got, but he's got eight ends to. To correct our seven year audience to correct that. Yeah, I just just cast the message again, you know, just only just for, for that time can be your enemy. There's two things that can be your enemy in this match: the scoreboard and the clock. Yes, yes. And uh, you know, and if you need to win. <laughs> Yeah, Papanui could fall into the trap of, you know, uh, playing the head, looking at the scoreboard a bit too much and not continuing to play how they've started. So uh, say see on the charge up. again and the kill by the Thames player. Saw that Jack disappear right out to the side of the, the rink. Are we anyway? 
another an, another ender that's killed no, perhaps late in the piece there, would, would mean that that Patoni Thames game may not get uh, to their 15 ends, so we should keep an eye on that because that could end up a game of 13 or 14 ends. Well, they're an end behind now. Yep. Uh, just on, uh, just through play, and, and you get a and kill now, as well. Now another one yeah. late in the piece. So it yeah. can work against you too, can't it? You know, Absolutely. just you're right, Dave. You've got to be, just got to be sensitive to that, don't you? The other thing about this, uh, this here at Hastings is that the, uh, the surface. You, I think you alluded to it before. It does get effective at temperature, doesn't it? Oh, all all the art, and artificial indoor services are affected by temperature. Some more than others. I can uh, tell you this though: there was no ice on the rink in Wellington <laughs> last week. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because, I've... as you both you know, it was only too well. Like Wellington, the 901, great complex, and the new you know, the new carpet's great. But it can be an iceberg, can't it? Yes, it can. Yeah. And that does make it, it was it a difference. second, couple of second difference? Or? Oh, at least two seconds, yeah, absolutely. Interesting, I was talking to the Hastings guys, and I believe they did the same down in Dunedin for the peers. They leave the heaters on overnight. Yes. So when you're getting here in the morning, the temperature is, you know, pretty consistent. You can't do that in Wellington, though. No, you can't. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, it's a that's whole the, Yeah, system. that's... Well, uh, that's right. And, you know, uh, yeah, that's... Correct. I thought Dunedin, um, I thought Dunedin was outstanding. No, and I, you know, and the whole. I thought the whole complex as well in Dunedin, the, you know, the whole how it's all set up, and because we're looking forward to getting down there. Um, north south. North south. Yeah, yes. and northern side's been selected. I, I see. It has. The northern yeah, side yeah, has been so. selected. Uh, isn't it great to see some of those people getting those opportunities? It's awesome. It is, and it'd be interesting to see um, uh, when, what the Dave Edwards, uh, I believe Dave was just waiting to get confirmation. Uh, well, on is that an advantage that the North have named their team so early, and well, he can have a look at that and perhaps well, I thought, select accordingly? Uh, initially, I thought they were both going. The plan was they were go, both going to be announced at the same. Same time, so there's a bit of tactics in there. Dave's <laughs> using his experience; he's just sat back a little bit and and uh, having to think about it. I think. Well, you know, you could help him and pick the well. Yeah, the South Island site. Yeah, uh, one would think. There's a couple of well. I hope. I, you know, hey, I'd love to see, for example, um, players uh, like I'd love to see Lance Pascoe get a go, for example. Uh, in that South Island there. side, you know, but just about first picked if he's representing South Island. Yes. He is representing South Island, right definitely. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, so yeah. If he's if he's out of the Elmwood setup, then definitely uh, he's my first pick in the South Island team. Yeah, I, I and and I ple I'm pleased to hear you say that, uh, Dave, because I think that he's a player, in my view, of the last couple of years, who has really, I think, has lifted his performance to a pretty good level really he's been uh, he's got the temperament to Kevin he has he's, you know I've he played has. against him a number of times now and uh, he's got the better of us every time uh, with a bit of help from his wife of course was well <laughs> will she be in the South Island team why wouldn't she be? well I okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, look, I hope so. It would be great. So to do see I. I you know, see I, Andy getting back into the swing of things. But yeah. look, uh, family pressures and, and work and things, you know, they all come into it. You can't play in everything. No, you uh, can't. And and I guess, you know, Lance and Andy have, have got a little bit to sort out there. But, but you know, even so, their performance when they step on the green every time, regardless of the things that are happening outside of bowls, they turn up and they and they deliver quality every time. Well, it was good. Like last weekend, we were at 9-0, of yes. course, you know. Yep. And uh, they were down there with the, with the girls, came down you know, and uh, spent some time down there, said hello to everybody. And, uh, yeah, always good. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be very good in north-south. It's uh, The uh, format has uh, changed around a wee bit from when it was first to be held, but... You know, we, we've uh, we 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 had the difficulties with COVID earlier on, uh, but you know, it's, I, I think it's a fantastic. Uh, it's great, and of course, it's a celebration of bowls down there as well because there is the on the Friday night is the uh, Bowls New Zealand uh, Awards dinner, yes, and there's I believe there's going to be someone 
into the Bowls Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I don't know who it is. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the, that, the Bowls New Zealand annual meeting as well. So it is a bit of a celebration of Bowls and, and of course, the, the North-South match. So, yeah, it's sort of just bringing a few things all together. There he is, just talking about him. There's <laughs> just only... This is a... This is a ears were burning. My ears are burning. Lance Pascoe walks just in, talking about Lance Pascoe. <laughs> and here he is. Just walks in. Are you in the south side, Lance? <laughs> he won't tell us. Of course, Mandy, his wife from, from here. So, oh, yeah. She's, yeah, Mandy and Angela, uh, my mother still lives here at uh, Hawke's Bay. Uh, Hawke's Bay girl. And then we're just talking about them and... <laughs> That's a bit uncanny, isn't it? Road, <laughs> it is. Just appear at the door. 12-2 now. Papua Nui leading uh, Paraparam. And big, big road there for the Kapiti boys to come back. The Petoni Thames game. See, that's tight nine in, seven ends, David. Yes. And the way Adam plays, there could be another couple of kills. Yeah, well, it could you know, it, make uh, a difference to the outcome of that game. And it just does make a difference, doesn't it? I'm really interested to see how the Kapiti boys get back into this game, Kevin. I really want to see them uh, score an end and, and do something different. So they're holding probably a shot here, I'd say. Yeah, going by, you'll see the white bowl, <laughs> the white disc of uh, number two for the for the uh, Dunk Shane Duncan's bowl that just went by. <laughs> No, no, Shane Duncan now. It's Brian Hemi's bowl just went past. So, and now for the Shane Duncan at number two, you just you just try and build that head, don't you? Absolutely. He's got a good start here. He's on a good line for that hand. I think he's played this pretty well. Going to sit on the bolt, sit on it clean, get a roll through. Good. Gaps aren't always bad, are they? You know? No, no, gaps are good. Gaps are good. Uh, I really want to see Ray using his experience here and pulling his team through. It's... Uh, it's interesting, though, David, as you, you've been playing long enough to know that all of a sudden you, you pick up a four and the game can change, can't it? Absolutely. And Jack searching here is, uh, you know, and they, they were Jack searching, trying to get through the easy route under the bowl of the Jack. And and at the moment it's all to all the uh, capity bowls that are, uh, that are all around the head, isn't it? Tom's going to... Uh Change his hand here. Interesting change of hand. I thought they might have been just kept trying to build that head on the back end. He's going to... No. A little bit of indecision. He said, I'll draw. And Ray said, I'll put the back ones in if we need to. So, it's, you know, put, get the balls around the head and see what happens, yeah, isn't it? They're leaving that back end open uh, for the uh, Papua Nui guys, which is interesting. Uh, it's and like there's going to be a Ray, Ray Buffett counting, uh, clapping this bowl as it breaks towards the head. And I think, and I think actually they might be holding uh, three or four there, Kev. And if you're searching down that backhand side, well, how far is this going to come back? He's got the wobble on. He's got the wobble on and we'll pull up short. I reckon they've got four. Four and a bit. So, really, the, for Tom Henderson here, yeah. just got to beat his last bowl, draw inside it, and recount. So he's on a nice line here. Should draw in that port safely there, Dave, can't yes, he? Yes, he can. And he's going to reach through to the white disc bowl here. Oh, Might have taken one to what fell back out. More than likely had a yard too much on. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. If he got it a bit fatter, he probably would have been right in by the jack. Now, his, um, Rick changes, no, Rick's changed his hand here now, too. Very interesting decision. To well, it needs to come past. Those not going to do so. I, there was still a shot on the back end there under his last bowl, Kevin, just to draw to the shot bowl. <coughs> really tough to change your hand in that position, trying to draw past two counting bowls. There wasn't really a track in there. I'd be very surprised if uh, if Mark wasn't coming down the back end and looking well, to draw a shot. Well, I, I I could be wrong, David, but I think if if uh, Ray draws there, yeah, they're just pointing now. If he draws to that to the black bowl there, sits on there, I think they all count because that was the, the indication of the short ones that were there. So, 
Um, it may well be, you know, there's four bowls to come, of course, and you know, Mark Lewis can... Let's see what Ray does here. Ray's going to follow his number three and draw down on the forehand, looking to draw another counter. I don't think I'd be too much worried about where the jack's going to go. At 12-2 down, no, you, I, want to be, you want to be scoring. So, but as he narrowed that up, no, he's going to get past those. And we're talking about that bowl. We were just talking about to David to sit neat on top of it. To count it. So I would, I, hard to tell, but I'd say Ray's team's holding four at this stage. And uh, Mark's just looking down the back end. Mm. Or draw second well, trying to, to get under some of the bowls to sit on something to count. And will it? Will it? No, it won't. And they were urging that short pole on, so... I don't think that's changed the profile of the head for Ray. Certainly, uh, certainly given Mark a, a chance with his next bowl to be playing a similar shot to push their bowl in. But Ray will be looking to draw close here. Well, there he is again. Drew a shot with his first one. Did Ray Buffer needs to make he's sure he's... tighter, but his weight's OK. He's outside the black, he's isn't he? Can draw in the port clean. Uh, can he draw? No. Still the same. Still the same. Let's call it. Let's call it three for Capity at the moment. The best of our knowledge. And Mark down on the backhand. He's played a nicer line this time. Yeah, he's played a generous line down through there to get to the black bowl, which he's going to do. Now that turn that's going to change the count for shot. Oh, no. Close. Well, he's cut it to one. If if it's not the shot, he's cut it to one. So well played, Mark. That's the sort of ends that the skip needs to get them out of trouble to not let the Capri team back into the game. Yeah, it comes to tape because that could have been a four, possibly five, couldn't it, Clay? And, and it is the Petoni side leading Tim 7 4. Got a feeling that. Papanui made shot of that the way he was benchmarked. The front bowl. I think you're taking money. Yeah. No, he's going to the mat. I see the mat. Frankie T. Frankie T. Again. <laughs> hey. I was so pleased to see him. I, he's moved up north. I haven't seen him. Uh, Frankie T, for those people that know, a <laughs> legend of Royal Oak. And uh, moved up north. And I was pleased to, pleased to see him in the... Uh, in the uh, northland side down here. Yeah, Frankie T's a legend from the old uh, only hangar down. club course now at Royal Oak. Get on yours, and um, it up. moved up to get the down, far mate. north. Married and happily living up in the... Smiling. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and Something's going good for him. <laughs> and it was a one to the boys in Cavity Coast and all those guys who remembered in the old days coming to only hung out where there was the two houses out the front of the clubhouse and Frankie T, he, he lived in one of those for many, many, many and, years. And, and friends. And friends. <laughs> and neighbours. <laughs> and, and we wanted to pop in. Party, and I, party central once the club had closed. And I can assure you there was, there was uh, you were always well look, looked after Frankie T's and uh, um I'd say one of the nice guys to play bowls against. Absolutely. Always smiling. <laughs> Never stop smiling. I believe they had a big night uh, at Royal Oak last Friday, Kevin. Yes, they uh, did. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. For Gary Fleming, who's done, was it 50 years? I believe so. Yeah, 50 years of a uh, member of Only Hung It and uh, uh, life member there. And just Life down, member of uh, Auckland draw, Bowls so as well, which is still a few of us. Not many of us left, <laughs> but yeah, still a few of us. Uh, and Gary, of course, was one of the early days of the uh, Kitty Hawks. Yes, absolutely. And now living up in uh, Mangalai. I had the pleasure oh, of being great, invited to the Royal Oak uh, Club prize giving a number of weeks ago. Um, it was a good chance for us, uh, our mates, to get together with Mike and give him a bit of a, a send-off before he went to the games. And uh, Gary was the uh, host of the evening. I do that uh, well. He did it bloody well, and uh, I never stopped laughing the whole night. And I do that well. It was great. 
So a lot of great memories of the old only hang it in set New Zealand classic one of the one of the early professional tournaments uh, in New Zealand and we were sponsored by Lexus was when the, the Toyota Lexus was car first came to New Zealand and we were taken out one afternoon to have a drive in it we uh, I must say we were very fortunate that in the early days of ANSET uh, here in New Zealand um, their sponsorship was uh, uh, free airfares uh, for all players from out of Auckland on NSET. Uh, and, and the format of that tournament was a classic. It was it unique. Was, I, I'd say three days, I think. Yeah, that was, that, was the, that, was the, that was the brainchild of Murray Davis. Was it? Yes. He spent, I don't know, hours, weeks, whatever, d d coming up with that format so that there wasn't conflicting rinks and there was all... It was... A, it was a, uh, in fact, I can tell you this, that I'm endeavouring to get hold of the draw. Uh, and I, I think Gary Fleming still got a copy of the old one because uh, Musgrove Hills want to run. Uh, yeah, they, they, because the, the reason why they can do it as well, David, is um, they have got three greens. You need three greens. So for those, it's 24 teams. And... Uh, Playing all, all a multi play all, all disciplines, and uh, it was one of the really good tournaments, wasn't it? There was another similar one. Um, I'm going to say Nolan Town. Yes, it was. New Plymouth. Yes, was, uh, yes, it was. Uh, yes. Nolan Town, three thousand or five thousand. Something, think, or well, something like that. And they played on a similar form. They had, they actually used the Murray Davis um, formula. They, oh right. But yeah. had, they had to change it around a bit, and they played it across multiple clubs. Yes, game. they did. Yeah. They did. Yes, yeah. they did. And the other thing about that Anset Classic as well, as you rightly said, every one of the 24 teams uh, also had a team sponsor. Yes. And we had, on the day before the event started, like a pro-am thing, everyone came along. And Which was uh, great because we were able to give something back to the sponsors, uh, not necessarily monetary-wise, but give them the experience of being at the at Only Hugger Club in those days and being there, uh, part of the competition, you know. I mean, they came along to watch in the one, preceding mate. days. The they knew who the we were, they knew who the here. players were, they knew what was going on, and it was a great experience for them. Well, of course, one of the reasons why, as well, Musgrove um, are keen to have it is because Brian Baldwin was one of the winners of the Ancient New Zealand Classic uh, with Jeff Hawkins, Morris Symes. Yeah, I, look, I can't remember who it might have been the late Jim Christie. I can't remember, but even Gary Mounsey in those days yeah. could have been yeah. Gary Mounsey. Yeah. Early days of Gary's balls. And uh, so they, Christa Lee, is very keen to try and host similar. We do, as players, we do miss those tournaments in those days because there's not many of them around. Oh, when you like the menu, menu where appears, you know, the Epsom Five Thousand, Browns Bay Piers, you know, there was. Those uh, events on uh, Man of a Two had them. They all, you know, uh, fantastic day. You know, three or four days of bowls and, and the camaraderie, of course, and and the the teams used to travel from from all over the country. Absolutely. No, we were very, we were very fortunate to. Well, how we were very fortunate that we had the generous sponsor of Anset, and that actually came about by when. NSET stuck moved to New Zealand. They chose Capital Press as their printers. The, it's the, late, the late Billy Little's uh, company, who was a member of Bunny Hanger, and uh, one thing led to another, and thus we we were able to uh, put together. I think it was one of the. To me, the NSET Classic to me was uh, was uh, my time at at, at well, Bunny Hanger then, of course. Uh, that was certainly back, one of the mate. highlights, being able to host the, host the ANSET New Zealand Classic. It was certainly a, a great event. Manurewa men's 100th anniversary this year in November, Kevin. Really? There'll be a certain Friday where there'll be a certain amount of people yeah, need to uh, be at Manurewa <laughs> and enjoy the festivities. Barry Drabble was in the throes of organising that for us at the moment. Oh, well, yeah. Of us are going to jump in and help them out. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's great that we can still have those sort of festivities honouring you know some of the things of the of the past. You know, it's always yeah, it's it's what makes the sport I think uh, pretty special. And you know, I'm I'm not, I'll be the first to put my hand up, David. Doing what I do here, I've been lucky 
to be able to travel around New Zealand and Australia and uh, covering numerous bowls events over a long period of time with my good mate Stu Scott. And, and the great thing about this, this sport is uh, you mainly only meet good, good people. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've loved it. So we've got uh, Papua Nui holding shots here again, much to Ray Boffer's uh, disgust, I would say. Uh, Ray's two down here on the head, uh, and he has the next probably three, so he's going to be forcing in the issue here. He's got a couple of back bowls as well. So Interesting, though, Dave, we look now at the Batoni Thames game. They're now two ends behind. Yes. And it will hurt at some point. At the moment, it's going to hurt Thames. Yes, it will. Ray's down here on the forehand, I would say, have at least ditch weight. Be looking to remove the two bowls or jack into the ditch to score. Is he on the line to go? Well, the way he is on, on the line to the shot bowl, needs to get bang, bang, no, and sits on it. Now, there was an example, David, of playing on the carpet where your bowl will stay there, won't it? Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's where people get trapped of thinking, you know, if you play that through weight... Your bowl is going to, you know, that bowl, that, which is the shot bowl now, well, how far would it have moved? Wouldn't it move 18 inches? Not, no, no, not even that. No, yeah. well, yeah. so, you know, you, you can play with confidence up to the target, can't you? Yes, you can. Unfortunately, Mark's left himself a bit shorter weight here. Probably not too worried. One down, 12-4 now, uh, and with only uh, five ends to go. So what's, what does Ray Buffett do here? What's he do? He says... You know, oh, okay, well, there we are. just just seen it, didn't we? Take the mat, take right, the mat right, up. right up as far as Change he can. And hope that his team can uh, drop onto it. So, girls here working hard again under the guidance of Tamara. We've got a new lady here, look, Henrietta. Very serious. Doing a great job, up as they ball. always do. Here's the updates right, from around the boards. And in the game between Edendale of the South and the Riverhead North Harbour, it's Edendale leading 9-6 after 10. And we did the Edendale game before, David, and very impressive, actually. Very impressive in their first game we did. Hillcrest over Omaru Nui. It is now 11-9, 11-9, the Hillcrest of Hamilton. Yes, that's correct, Steve Liddington. Steve Liddington, there's, a, there's one from the past, isn't it? Uh, Takaro up against Arapahoe, and it is Takaro of the Manawa 2 leading 12 8, mm -hmm. and West End of Timaru leading Kaikarai of Dunedin 7 5 after 9. And of course, there'll be another round after this this evening, and then we'll be underway again tomorrow morning. I know I'm not on the early shift. I've been, ex been excused of the early shift. Oh, that's nice. So here's the Patoni Thames. And just see the Thames number three there. The uh, Young Matt's drawing a good shot. He drew in the shot there, Matt Johnson. I think uh, Thames are wanting to be make sure they score this in just to stay in touch. Uh, a gap of four will be uncomfortable for them at the moment and they'll be looking to make sure they score. Certainly them. is, because really it's, it's, it's a, I suppose it's a two-life system, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, that's really about it's, it. It's yeah, the old yeah. If you lose two games, you know, you've got to question whether you deserve to be going through to Sunday. Absolutely. And, and this is the best way to do it, three out of four. We're not worried about differential. We're not worried about how much you win by or lose by. It's just about winning, and, and uh, that's what the players like. Yeah, we disappointed here. Well, the... Number three, Matt Johnson really made a clear path where to draw. Well, I noticed Adam didn't say anything to him. A little bit of steam coming out his ears, I think I could see as he was walking away from the head. Yeah, you know, it, 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 I talked about this the other day, when, uh, I forget which Wellington it was. That, yeah, Wellington it was. You know, it's a matter of... Um, on these services, it's really just a matter of... He saw where his last ball went. There's your target, just a metre behind there. It really is discipline and about consistency. Absolutely. Consistency. I'm pleased you said it and not me. But it is, isn't it, David? It is. Consistency in your delivery and discipline. Uh, you know, we won our first game today, Kevin, and halfway through, 
I had to take a look at myself because I'd missed three bonus shots when there wasn't a lot of danger. And I was, although we were in touch with the, the Tens boys, I was very unhappy with how things were going. What made the difference was uh, our number two, young Logan, stepped up. All right. And, yeah. uh, and proud dad, as I as I. Well, I'm just going to say, what's his surname? Yeah, happy to happy to say that. Uh, he played Come some big bowls in the second here. half of our game and, and kept us in it. And well, then we started the drawing some bonus shots and, and eked out a bit of a lead. Dipford on the search it. here, on the search, chasing close, close, gets the back of it, it. gets it clean. Oh, and and <laughs> he got the third shot as well. So he's made three. Well, this 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 now becomes a big bowl, doesn't it? It does. And he played it quick, didn't he, Kevin? He did. Very quick. Time's against you. Scoreboard starting to get against you as he made amends. How far is it going to run? Well played. Oh. I would. Well, it's difficult to tell with the angles, but certainly it comes that the. Well, obviously he's one down the Thames Valley men. And correct. And this is Stephen Ditford who scores again. So nine four. What a bowl by Diddy. Magnificent bowl. Played. With perfection. I, I go back to the to the champion champion peers down in. Uh, yeah, twelve four now, and I just wonder whether well on the drive is the oh big bowl here. If this doesn't. That's get outside result. the target. Going by, not going to get anything. <laughs> now, folks, you just want to concentrate on that left hand screen for a second. We've got a very interesting situation developing. That Kapiti Coast team has been plugging away, trying to get back into this game, and currently holding three and maybe four. I backed them for four, and with another bowl coming down here now, whether this counts or not, not really going to matter because the the biggest decision next is what Rick Day does with his second bowl of this end. Well, that's going to count. That's counting. That's counting. It's outside the centre yeah. line, so. And he's made his mind up quickly. Has into his work. Wide. Wide and swinging away. Nothing. Now I bet you Ray's got a bit of a spring in his step, Kev. Yeah, I would say so because one, two, three, four, the front one. And you say the fifth. Yeah, it's a, uh, but just as they change over, they, they're talking about what I would call just tenacity and concentration. Go back and watch the champion and champion peers final and watch Leif Selby. No question. I know exactly what you're talking about. And to me, it was one of the best examples. We had two games that we did there of Leif uh, To me, it was one of the real examples of class and consistency. Just being able to read ahead. Game management. It's a game management, isn't it? Absolutely. Now, Ray's, Ray's decided to play the forehand here, and I'm sure he'll be trying to draw another counter. Interestingly enough, you know, there is a, an option on the backhand to be drawing down and, and perhaps changing the view. Uh, this is going that, pretty quick. This is going to sit the bowl out. It's going to count now. That Mark Lewis might have now. Now what? I think he's committed to going. There's six there. Yeah. He's got to be reducing. He's Down watching. looking. He's close. Probably he's close. He'll get Mike get the bowl and nothing six. else. Gets yeah. two. He's still four. 12-8 counting the hit at the moment. Ray will want to draw another one. He certainly will. Now, no target now, Kevin. No target. I'm just going to say. So, you know, Mark's uh, and Ray won't want to make one here. He's got to leave some gaps and then put him in two minds as to whether he should be playing weight or not. Do you like the fragrances coming out of this? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a kitchen going on down here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the girls. <laughs> they deserve it. Have what they like. And there's another counter. Well done, Ray. Right. Really so what, what's it? Five, just saw it five. Second shot. Draw just second, the, shot, second shot, isn't it? Backhand. That's all you think about. Front bowl, draw, second draw, shot. Draw, draw, yep. He either comes around it or gets underneath it. So he's really got like, second I shot. I really it. like the direction that Rick's given his skip here. He's given him really clear direction. He's given him no choices. Get down and Darren go. Good and the legend of Taranaki looking in here. See, one of that really 
best performed players out of Taranaki. Is it going to come back? No. Is it going to come back? No, no it's, it's not. not. Here's the big number. That's a five. Five. Twelve nine. Captain Anyone's game. game. Absolutely. Anyone's game. We're <laughs> waiting for it to happen. And yeah, it did. Well, there's been two ends where there was a chance of it happening. Now, what and made it happen? Happen? They changed the length. They they changed the game. They brought the mat up. So good direction from Ray. Good communication with his team. And he's now given them a shot. Every chance. Well, well played by the Kapiti skip, well, the whole side, but it was also so confidence they didn't they didn't try and build both sides of the head up. They just they just plugged on one hand, one hand, didn't they? And and uh, and got duly rewarded for it. Now, what do you got to do when you score a big number? What's the most important thing <laughs> yeah, you do? The, this bowl here is the best. <laughs> Front toucher. Yeah, this is the. <laughs> it's not going to be though. It's going to Come be on, Terry. Um, don't let me down. It's going to be under the line. On, Terry, you need good <laughs> meter in it. Well, of course, the, once you do that, you just open it, open the opportunity up for the uh, opposition to close the head off very quick That's too, right. don't they? That's right. We're probably down. Oh, my apologies. That was Mike Downer. So, still going to leave plenty of room after this first bolt has gone past. Still a good metre there for... Uh, well, Mike's got a chance now to correct on his... Let's see how he does with his correction. Really important here. He's, uh, a young player uh, in the bowl sense. Well, his jack is actually a metre behind where it is. Yes, yeah, we just want to see some correction here from from Mike. On the back end, bit of excitement now for the captain. Well, he's got a better... Nice, nice. Better arc on the bowl here. How far is it going to go? The old thing. Well, it's over the head, and it's uh, at least it's not on the road. Correct. Probably not as good as he was looking for, but um, something to build on for his team. And all of a sudden, what was looking pretty comfortable has now got... It's anybody's game. and, Ooh, and nerves here. <laughs> Terry's shot them through to the back. Both, both leads have gone, and, oh, you man. know. Play up here, mate. If you get one near that, it'll make the target bigger. So, yep. But springing the heel of the number two now. Yes, Shane Duncan catch it. He knows he's, he's got an important job to do here to back up his, his lead. Mike hasn't been able to nail it. I'll draw you the shot, mate. That's the Hurry. front touch of Shane. Hurry. Yeah, well, that's that. Uh, oh, look at him. Steely very eyed. Steely eyed. Well, it's going to be good. It's going pretty quick, though, isn't it, David? It is, yeah. Bit of adrenaline there. Yeah, well, I, don't, yeah well, I don't want to be short. Don't want to be short, <laughs> isn't it? You know, and uh, they and it powered its way through, all right, right to the, right to the ditch. So, here for Brian Hemi. He'll try now. He's, he's the man that's got to draw the shot for. Well, no one's got the shot, have they, really? No. First in, first serve, see it. And interesting, gone to the backhand, has the... Nice line here from Brian. Yeah, well, this is going to finish pretty adjacent. It'll go by, but, well, still a good mile. Still no one's got the shot, really. This is this is turning into a, a very important end here. Nobody's been able to nail it early. So, Shane Duncan, very intense on the mat. Got it away well on that forehand. But always crimped the line though, David. Has he? How far has he crimped it? He's got to wait to hold himself up. No, he hasn't. Oh, goodness. This is very... I'm nervous here, Kevin. Who's going to draw one close? Uh, I bet Ray Buffett's standing there going, oh, please, just get me. <laughs> okay, Brian. Your chance to shine here. Well, it is. We're watching you, mate. I'll take the line any day. How's that weight? Has he corrected? He has. Oh, look at that. Got the back of the jack on the way through. Shot it across to the Capity Coast Bowl. Raised now, yeah, a little that, bit better now. Yeah, change your hand. Play down to the... I wouldn't, Kev. Why? Why? It's going to be hard to get back to that jack. Oh, I agree. Now. Absolutely. I, yeah, I think the back end was the, still the hand to... Because uh, it's a sweeter hand, isn't it, as you rightly yeah. said. Going to get past, though. Going to get past on the draw. And can this could make life interesting. Well, Tom. <laughs> I proved me wrong. Thanks, Tom. Right, that, well, <laughs> but that was a tight line down there, wasn't it, when he got past the front? He played it well. He played it well. 
Got on your time. Cap Capity holding two. And now Rick's under a bit of pressure to get one close. Been around the Canterbury scene a long time has Rick Day. Going to go by. By goodness, all of a sudden. Holding two are the Panaparam side. Look at the effect of bringing that bat up, Kevin. Uh, it's really well, we said, didn't we? What Pap we just said, boys just have not been able to pick it last end and, and this end. We said at the time, what's he going to do? And they did. And he's pretty keen on this. Is it going to cheat the line again? Yeah, this is another good bowl. This is another good one. Just going to get it. No, it doesn't get a touch, but sits well. Reality is now that... Uh, Mark Lewis has to follow their hand, and he's hardly played any balls on that hand. He's, uh, so number three, Rick's, 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 Rick's changed his hand. Game. No, he hasn't. He'll go that speed, Rick. Now, he's, he's not going to come back. He didn't like it when he let it go, I don't think. It's going towards the ditch again. It's going to stay change, up. What yes, it does. What fortune we're seeing here in the space of two ends. Well, Mark Lewis has to follow the... Capity bowls, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, drawing second shot, that, that's going to be defensive. Um, I think he's really got to be looking to get the shot to keep that gap of three or four. The Capity guys have obviously found a link. Well, at the moment, he's, you know, it's fair to say without being unkind, they've left the gate open, haven't they? They have, but they've got to score and get that jack back so that they can get back to the length that they were comfortable with, I think. And uh, drawing second shot isn't going to achieve that. So no, you're right, and they, 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 they need to. So it's interesting, uh, Ray Buffer, he's going to that, what is his backhand? We, we can't, well, it's a free draw, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's he's played it quite tight, he's looking to turn underneath, but... Well, the other side of the jack counts, doesn't it? So, yep. well, it's a counter. And tightens up that back to the centre line. And it's something marked to work off of. He's quickly tight, into his work is Mark Lewis. He's a bit of a grimmage there when he let it go. Well, that's under the line. That's well under the line. Well, it, I, don't, I don't know about well under the line. I think he's probably three metres short of weight. Long way. So, do you think that last bowl of first bowl of Ray Buffers counted? Yes, definitely. I'd say they're holding four right now. He's scratching his head, Mark <laughs> he Lewis. Knows. <laughs> Ray knows he's got a big chance here. So right. Sitting in the background going, oh, no, what am I going to do next? Mark Lewis is saying, what's going on here? 10-4 now, Petoni. That's Steve Ditford leading Adam Hayward. Ray Buffer down on the backhand. Played it tight. <coughs> he wouldn't hit that hole, would he? No. Well, I was going to say, because he was too tight to get the line. Yeah. So the only chance was to get through that hole, wasn't it? To get down to that. You can see Mark, um, Mark playing down here on the back end. The chances of getting the shot here are, are very slim. So, on its way. He's got it out wider, that's for sure. It's breaking now towards the head, towards the shot bowl. This is a good recovery bowl, this. This is well played from... <coughs> Second shot. Well, that's that was the shot of the day, really. That was the shot to play, wasn't it? That. Yes, I, I don't know. I might have been playing the forehand, given given what Tom showed us could be done down there. Uh, it was important for Papanui to actually score and get the jack back and get back to that length that they're more familiar with. As you can see now, the Capri Coast guys have scored two ends in a row, bringing that mat up, and and again they've they've brought it up. Um, that's been their, their key to the door to get back into the game. So let's see if Mike probably needs to um, improve on his performance of the last end. Uh, I was surprised, though, that Ray Boffer played the hand that he did. Yeah, look, I, I don't think it mattered too much. He just needed to draw a counter to put the pressure on. Um, he was unable to do that. 10-4 now. It is Stephen Ditford in his match leading Adam Hayward. It's not... Uh, might be the train to Thames Valley quickly. <laughs> yeah, yes, the Thames boys <laughs> might have had a quick visit to Hastings. So here's the opening bowl from Mike Downer, the yeah, second-year player with four sets of bowls. <laughs> Lower the jack, and quickly is Terry Stewart. Yeah, 
one is. Oh, like the tap of the foot. Tap the old tap. Well, he's got it out on that kind side there, that David, because that is kind draw coming back from there. Turning back nicely. Good there starter. We go. Well played, Terry. Go. Ahead, yep. right Mark's giving him thumbs up. Right, okay, Mike. Here we go. It's it's always great, though, David, to watch that bowl working off that ditch, ditch hand, isn't it, which you see so often that, that uh, we see. And that's... Well, the, line, the line's probably not bad, but he's just uh, let himself down on the weight here. A little short. Yeah, a good metre. Let him a metre, and they can safely draw past that, can the uh, uh, yeah, Papua New side. Like no, change of hand. We're going to see Terry Stewart now play his back hand. Yeah, I think he's got it away on a nice line. It'll just be needing that weight to the jack. To now the disappearing them under the line. Yeah, so again, a metre sh line's fine. A metre of weight on that line would have held it past that uh, front red bowl and, and been to the jack. So that's the challenge for the guys as to when they're going to put their weight on, not to take that extra, extra green, otherwise it'll hang out. Well, really, David, we've come to uh, a one sh to one hand end, really, isn't it? They have now, yes. Yeah, to, yes. yeah, to get scoring, it's really... Absolutely. At one, isn't it? It's a one hand. Left, -hand, left hander taking a slightly different line here. He's got weight, though, isn't he? He's got weight. To, he's going to hold up. No, yes, it will. Finishes. Well, finishes back towards okay, the centre mate. line. Looked to be a bowl past back. what we pick as the shot bowl. And let's see what Brian can do. Brian down on the backhand, line good. Swing out there, fellas. Wait to the jack, not good. No, it's under that line again. Well, nearly too light then now. Big, and we'll see. Big. It's really a battle of attrition. Well, this is, isn't it? You know, it's first in type yeah. thing, isn't it? You know, and yeah. Shane Duncan, I'm trying to get that. And you're right, I think uh, first to the jack wins the end. Certainly the way the front of the head's set up, it's going to be hard to attack anything that's uh, within a couple of inches of the jack. Well, is that going to get past? No, it won't. That's heading in the same direction as all the others. That are, it up, mate. You know, it's, uh, mate. Is that far? Well, it's no one's really, is it? No, no we, won't be, we won't be calling the end right now. No. Time for Brian to shine. Well. Come on, Brian. Draw a shot. He's got the old clinch. Well, he's got the best wind that we've seen, but he's got weight, and that's going to go. You know, and really, it is the shot now, isn't it, uh, David? Is just outside that front bowl, yes. and about uh, by about three, two foot, three foot, and you've been in a. Oh, Ray's Ray's team's got the advantage of their bowl being in the run here, so <coughs> no excuses for being up, and they can play with every confidence. So Tom Henderson. On his backhand, trailing 12 10. Now, this looks more like it, to David. Yes. This needs more see. like it. That's exactly gets in behind the. Well played. But it's well played. Um, but he would have liked to have been just another bowl deeper. Just yeah, go on, watch what will happen now. The, instead of. Uh, They'll go fishing for it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, they're going to come down on the forehand, which is an interesting choice. It's going to be hard to go fishing for it on that forehand. Oh, he's close, tell you, he's close, might even get Jack, gets Jack out to the, well, that will still be alive, we just have to get those cameras around to see where that angle is, to outside the, that peg line. Just inside, there it is. Great job, team. Well awesome. done, well done, ladies, fantastic. Now you'll see. And we can see that the Papua Nui side are probably holding two shots there we've got a toucher in the ditch so this end could be the whole absolutely winning of the match can it and how tough is it going to be on the forehand on the t hand that's turning to draw yeah it the it's pitch. on the wide end. well yeah. brian he got, he got that out pretty wide did rightly did you tom henderson good? coming back just try and get that angle 
David, I think it might still be a bit short. I'm going to say, I'm going to say two to the Papua New side. Touch her in the ditch for the listeners. The the bowl it's straight under, lined in there. Underneath the number one there is a toucher, so it's still live because it touched the jack. Oh, here's a good bowl. That's brilliant. That's magnificently played by Rick Day. That really, really puts the pressure. That uh, that bowl there could be the winning I'd of the game. I say that could you know, well be, couldn't it? Yeah, that's three shots, and Ray really has got nothing but to draw. Well, to be fair, David, you've known Ray Buffer for long enough, and you know yeah, he could put two inside of that. I, I, got the got, got the ability, but uh, tough, tough being two down on the board, playing the thirteenth end of fifteen, and having to draw within, let's say, two feet of the ditch to score two. Because Ray Ray Buffett in his earlier days you know, was certainly. Well known around the, the the bowling scenes, a very very proficient draw player. Needs to be clear on the ride out past here. By goodness, just by that, goodness. Oh, top top effort. It was a great effort. Top so effort. so, what's the story here? Second shot. Two behind. Run, you run out of ends, aren't you? So. As you I rightly he, I said, he's this be looking to draw the shot. He's got to draw the shot. So, and this has got this bowl out well here, but will it run far enough? Yep. Which, well, of course, it owns it owns the peg line as well, which makes it doesn't it? That just makes it now that much harder. Who'd want to be a skip and rape off his position right now? Not really. <laughs> Don't want that raffle ticket. <laughs> well, out of the hand. That looked narrower, but I'm wrong. It's still on that same line. Is it? Yes. Oh, no, it was. Unable to get past. That was the crunch, it. wasn't it? It's probably pushed that in to cut one out, but I'd Might say... Might be three, I'd say. I'd say the bowl in the ditch is still counting. Yeah, It three. is three. Yeah. three. That's the break, 15-10. And Mark has really free reign here to uh, to draw another one. That was... Uh, you know, they got the jack clean, didn't they? And they had the chance to get it clean. And Mark hasn't been able to draw the bonus. No, he hasn't. Let's say it's... I, I count the ditch. Yes. And that, to me, then, that's three. If the the ditch... They're having a look. Normally, the bowl in the ditch is a counter. It's a, well, the eye, yeah, it, it is. You know, yeah. you can... Putting the tape around. The clothesline. line. No, we, it, it may not be that. So would I. Just from the angle that I, <laughs> just the angle I looked at before, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd already counted the ditch bowl in. Yes. Yeah, well, sure. All good. So that was a three. It was so fifteen ten now, and big uh, hole by Rick Day. Oh, absolutely, it was, and you know got it clean and uh, got duly rewarded. Actually, I think when Rick stepped on the mat, yeah, I don't think it mattered what Mark was going to say. Rick already had the, the shot in mind. Yeah, it was already. Yeah, it was it. half underway, wasn't yes, it? It was. It was. And big uh, oh, the Thames boys one now one are going to. Uh, Got They've got a here. big struggle on their hands there, now. Ten six behind. And I'm just going to change that ends on that Panapram Papua Nui game, which is 13, isn't it? It should, so. should be playing 14, shouldn't it? I think so. Yeah. Right. Straight away, interesting to see the length now. So Papua Nui got the jack. And as we, you spoke about, rightly, that... They've, they've, they've probably haven't thrown the jack as far as I thought they might have, Kev, but the key to it is that they've put the mat back at the two metre mark. So uh, while the length might not be as quite as long as we thought they might play, they're back into playing the line they used to correct. early in the game. Yep. And, you know, big bowl here from Mike. He, he needs to adjust 
uh, to what they've been doing the last two or three ends. Really good learning experience for Mike here. Certainly is, because uh, at, at that time of the game, when they changed the lengths around, and Marty's responded pretty well, just, just, just made it. Just crept past the... Uh, we'll give it a pass mark for now. So your side in, in plain order is... Uh, Roger, Andrew, uh, best lead in counties. Yes. Off the front. Um, my young fella Logan's uh, playing number two, his first year of bowls, full-time bowls. And, uh, and Shane Drabble has uh, uh, taken the number three spot for us today. Everybody knows Shane Drabble. Everybody knows Shane. Been around for a long time. Drabble family from Minyarewa. Hi to Tracy and Barry and Mum Drabble. Yeah, been great stalwarts of uh, Manurewa over many, many years, haven't they? they? And welcomed me in, you know, when I joined four or five years ago, welcomed me in, and why would I be anywhere else right now? Yeah, well, it's where you're happy and where you're enjoying, and, you know, you, uh, yeah, and they're a good competitive club as well, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, we've had some success over the last few years, which has put the club back on the map, and uh, and, and the club have supported us wholeheartedly over the last well, two or three years and made sure that it. we've got the opportunity to come to the, some of these events it's and continue the the, uh, the trail we're on or the journey we're on at the moment. So I'll ask you a question, which you'll disagree with. <laughs> so should counties go back to Auckland? I think playing numbers over the next four or five years will dictate that that will be a very strong possibility. And that's not that's having I'm not having any adversity what's your relative counties at all. Just neither you know, am I. Neither and, am I. And I came from Auckland two and, counties. Uh, and, uh, yes, no, and it, but and, and let's not fool ourselves. You know, Auckland's got some similar challenges. You know, uh, in a number of their clubs. You know, like it's interesting. I you know look at Remy Wera. We've been having some. Well, it's well known, there's been some dialogue going on there and, you know, when you consider, you know, that was a club that had a membership of uh, uh, over 300, uh, now under 100, uh, Pakaranga. Big changes, big changes. Huge, huge changes, you know, and, you know, sitting on um, real big valuable bits of real estate. And counties are in a similar, you know, it's sometimes practical has just got to be. I understand counties uh, are wanting to, you know, keep their name and, and be a centre on their own. Um, but there is, some, there is some real challenges in front of us in the next few years. Uh, and I don't mind telling you, Kev, that uh, there's a meeting next Sunday, you know, the rep player meeting and... We have to be oh, very be serious about there, yeah. uh, building oh, our strength that, and, and what we heavy. do as a centre over the next couple of years yeah. and bringing some of the younger people through um, to make sure that we've you know got that continuous player strength. Otherwise, it dissipates, doesn't well, it? Well, uh, you're picking the same players yep. year after year and you know getting some good results and, and some not so good, but it's not developing the game in our centre. And so there's a whole you know coaching uh, development phase that counties have to go through. Well, a centre, small centre, which I think everyone should take note of, is that is uh, working that, that Gary Muraway and them are doing in Wairapa. Yes. They're doing an absolutely outstanding job uh, and I think the Wairapa they were down here in the secondary school thing, I think just this week, they were, they were, they were, they were third. Right? They were, they, they were, the Wairapa were here. Gary Murray has been a lot of time in, and then all of a sudden we've started to see a bit of strength in the, in, in the wire wrapper come through. Doesn't happen overnight, but it, but it's happening, and it came about from some good thinking by some you know some good good yep. good people. It's a two or three year process probably. Yeah, and and it's something that we're we're going to take on board. So round the boards, and I can tell Edendale from down south, of course, who uh, to me they're a team. I'm I'm telling everybody, watch out. I was very impressed when I saw them in their first round today. They're leading Riverhead after 13 ends, 11-9. Hillcrest, again, all still locked up. Uh, 13, uh, 13 apiece a, a after 13 ends. Arapahoe uh, up against Takaro, and it is Takaro leading 15-10 after 13. 
and West End of South Canterbury, Timaru, up against uh, Kaikarai of uh, Dunedin. They all locked up there at nine apiece. So, yeah, this, well, this round, this round, the next round is really is it, isn't it? It is. That's uh, now, just back to the left hand screen for the viewers here. Uh, we were calling uh, Papua Nui, you know, had played a big end the last end, and we were calling it that that might have uh, tied well, Here they come from. again. But Capity, here they come again. Capity with the black disc bowls, as you can see on your left hand screen there, have drawn a good three or four here, and we've got Mr. Dave. He's on the drive again, is Rick Dave. To the last and end. might get the front and get nothing. And get your zone out. Wow. It's four. <laughs> well, well, Three well. at least. Perhaps four. <laughs> what a what a turn. Well, well, a touch of the jack here by Tom Henderson. Just a touch on it. Would move it around the corner. Yeah, he's got to be down underneath. Got to get under that bowl out to the side. Yeah. He's not going to, though. He's, How, he needs to be beating that bowl to count. Got to get clean underneath it, David. It's got to be. It has to be under that bowl. Four. There'd be an argument for him to be coming down the forehand. And I was just going to say, bowls. why would you not play possibly where the bunches got all you? But Ray Boffer maybe knows better than you and I, Kev, because he's <laughs> holding four shots. Now. What, what's Mark going to do here? Is he going to follow what Rick Day did? Can't and, drive. And drive and reduce? I, I think that might be the shot to play here. Let's play the board a bit. Well, the, well whatever down. he plays now, and if he doesn't oh, see that he's got to play with his next one as well. So whatever he's committed to now, and he's, no, he's going on that draw. No, he's a big, big shot on the forehand. He's looking to reduce. Oh. And get the front bowl clean. Gives oh, the jack. jack into the <laughs> ditch. Well, what well, about that? Well... Well played. well played, well played, under, big, bowls, yeah, two, under two ends, one big from pressure. Rick and one from Mark. Lance Pascoe, Mandy Boyd standing up there watching. Mandy Boyd, of course, former New Zealand player, medalist at the Commonwealth Games 2014. Ron Bias from oh, Ray Buffer. And the but, camera uh, tripod. Well, the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the inside slide off the tripod. And off, and off the tripod. Can't do that one, mate. <laughs> No disrespect to any of our lady bowlers, uh, uh, but it certainly would be good to have Mandy Boyd out <laughs> wearing a black shirt at the moment and a silver fern on it. Absolutely. And in those conditions over there, we know Mandy plays an attacking form of the game. And, uh, hello. Hello. So in interesting here. This is interesting. Ray, Ray played a bowl that you would suggest was going to finish outside. Oh, you can't hit. And that's no, Ray's, Ray's actually uh, indicated that the bowl should be lifted off the ring. Lifted off the ring, yeah. 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 No, there's, I don't think there's any question about that. Ray's happy that his bowl would not have come back alive. So Manny Boyd, of course, won you know, at the uh, Gold Coast, won bronze medal in, in the fours. And uh, no longer now available. It's given some opportunities for some of the younger br brigade and the ladies to. It has to have a go. But I think it's also fair to say, David. I'm not being harsh in saying this at all, but um, it, it it all of a sudden it highlights that we do need. We. Well, uh, I. Just, I, I don't know that I'm not Ray, gonna say yeah, anything. I don't know that Ray agrees with us to be fair. You know, Ray I think accepted that what, his bowl wasn't gonna come back and he's uncomfortable about playing that again. But look, they've called the umpire, the umpire will be You'll leave it to them and, and then it's individual players. decisions yeah. after that. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ray just throw this. He's away. done that. They're, you know, that's great sportsmanship, Kevin. Fantastic. And that's Absolutely. Ray's, Ray's experience coming through there. He, he knows that that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Well done, Ray. I'm yeah, well done. Really impressed with that. Because we all know, from those who have been around for a while, yes, we stick to the letter of the law. He was quite entitled to. Absolutely. But uh, he adopted the sportsmanship uh, aspect of it as, as, as the right way forward, which was the right thing to do. Great to see. So, Patoni 10-7, and 
<laughs> it's interesting what you and I spoke about may pay the price of, let us say, some slowness. Or Adam Haywood, click off the front bowl and has made shot of it. Made shot of it. 10 9. And. Looks like Capity have scored. <laughs> the shot, you see the buffer by way out to the, the side. Draw just within a foot or so of the ditch to score one, I would think. So here's Steve Ditford. Needs a generous trying slide. To, trying to emulate Adam's <laughs> slide off that front bowl. Yeah, but, I'm sorry, um, Adam, but this might work against you. Well, if we count the head, he's 10-8, isn't he? Absolutely. If that's the, if that's the shot. Now, if he believes he's going to get one more end in, then... Yeah, he's he's jogging. He's now. on the jog. Yeah. yeah. So interesting, Ray Buffett. Now he's saying we're going to play short, and the mat's back, isn't it? Mat's back, and he's yeah, he's going to play a similar length to when they played the mat up, but he's just decided to keep the mat back. Adam down on the backhand, trying to draw another shot here. Big danger of giving it away, but. Good yeah, effort. But had to have a go. Very good. Absolutely. Go. Absolutely did. And he, he made sure he arrived and gave his bowl a chance. Now of course, we'll, there'll we'll be another round here. after this this evening. And uh, you'll have some... Stephen Beal will be in here. And... I'm not sure who else will be with Stephen, but we're bringing you live coverage. So Stephen did fit now on the backhand, the Cantabrian Wellingtonian. <laughs> well, it needed to be up past the. So we'll see. The story is that I'm picking it's ten eight now. Having a look. Having a good look, and there's ten eight, ten eight. So the Jack. Delivery, get it up pretty quickly. Well, they've got time, but it's about again this and one more, really, isn't it? But mind you, if you've got three, you're not going to worry. Are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have the last bowl, though, right? No, so, that's, uh, that's, that's going to be a telling, telling. So the last end here in the Capity match, it's at the Paraparam versus Papanui. It's the last end underway. And one end behind is the Petoni v Thames match. And we'll see whether the, the uh, boys and Thames, Mark Matthews leading, whether they can pull this out of the fire. Good opening bowl. Adams calling it the hurry. Metre and a half short. Now, interesting here, Kevin, on the left-hand screen, uh, Capity have uh, started well, actually. They're holding the shot, and uh, we've got Shane Duncan now coming down to try and add to the count. They're looking for a four to force the game to an extra end. Well, they've got a good opener, a good opener there. And a good sure. line here. Another good second here. A touch. Well, it's blocks it on top of well the played. jack. Well played. That's the shot he needed to play. And, of course, the Thames play. Why is he changing his hand? Uh, Brian's coming down on the forehand just to try and draw the second shot, I think. So. Oh, sorry, you're talking about Mark on the right-hand screen? Yeah, good question. Yeah, there was probably no need to change that. Well, I just, I just, just thought the improve. philosophy was just to beat your last and you're, and you're, and you're running to the jack, aren't you? So, you know, interesting, the right-hand screen, the head's a bit open, and just looking for someone to draw one close. So, it's an extra end. Uh, welcome to, you see the bulk of the Zealand president's just arrived, I see you here. You're in, Dave. You're in uh, Shane's changed his hand here. 
Haven't seen him play too many down the side. Mostly he's been down his forehand, but he's yep. changed to his backhand now. Well, at some point, this is the one you heard the call there. And it is Thames. Say so holding two at this stage. That would be two. And Patoni. Dave, Dave Goody, Goody trying to. And he's going to. Yep. That's not two now. You're probably one down. Be your last, bro. One down. You heard the call there from the Thames Valley skip. Surprising that angle. Kevin that angle, correct. I would have called Thames holding shot there, so... Adams had a good look and called it one down. Jack Trail's quite good here. Yeah. Jason's made sure he's up and two pretty good balls. Two well played, Jason. Well, he's put a couple on the head. Well, ball. what he's done is he's given on that trail opportunity for the uh, for his skip, hasn't he, to uh, you know to get down there, get a touch on it. Absolutely. Dave's into his work here on his second ball. <laughs> Got it away a little rough, I think. Yeah, just a bit under the line. <coughs> Adam's having another look at this. I'd, look, I'd be very surprised if teams weren't actually holding two there. Little touch on the well. You just the black ring. that's all you're going to try and do, isn't it? Just Adam, to try Adam and needs to cut his nails, I think. He's, yeah, he does. Because yeah. we don't need this really. You're not that keen on them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so can. Well, he went out too wide. <clears throat> he got that. I heard that. But another pole it has Matt. Matt's played a, a little a little heavy. I think there's some adrenaline got into him, and he let it go pretty quick. So Brendan Knight endeavouring to get in between. Well, he's not going to. He's Nobody's really trying to dominate here. That even that angle looks different, doesn't it? It, it does, sense. you know. This bowl does look. Yeah, like I, I, you know, my view is David. You're just saying, well, look, just draws another shot and let's see what you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, don't try and over technicalise it by have to get to the jack or get here. Just. No, he's played it well. Well, this is this could be down, 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 down. the best of all, and it is. Well played. <clears throat> so Matt Johnson comes to life, and draws a shot. Well, holding two, Thames. What it does straight away, though, for the Thames guys, give them a two-shot you know, two shot option. Either they go by and they're having to sit the bowl, because this is going to be short as well, or they touch the jack and they make three. Absolutely. So that bowl uh, is a really, really good bowl from the Thames Valley number three because it just it, it does cut the shot options down for the Canterbury side, doesn't all it? All is it for the uh, drawing shot now. Different yeah. side. Now we've got Tom Henderson coming back on the left-hand screen here. Uh, his side four behind, uh, but they're holding shot at present. And uh, he needs to really make sure his bowl counts here to um, give his team the best chance of scoring that four that they need. So, Adam Hayward, well, sorry. <laughs> um, got caught in his own trap there. Really. So now, big bowl. Big bowl because you still think it's, you think it's two? I reckon it's definitely two. Yes. Stephen Dipfit certainly gone out on the wide side. And really, if you're Adam Hayward now, you're saying, right, well, there's my target. I'm playing to these bowls behind. He's got to sit the uh, he's got to sit the Batoni black disc bowl yep. down one once or half a roll, we would say, to make four. So all he's got to do. And you're right, David, he's just got to reach this pole, turn it through the, get one roll of it through the head on its way from the Thames Valley skip. Oh, how tight's that, David? How tight's that? Well, let's wait again. I think, Kevin, even on that line with two metres of weight, it would have probably held round those bowls. So two, two uh, not-so-good bowls. No, he'd be disappointed with those two, that's for sure. Yes. And we'll just see what that count is. It's Stephen Didford now. Steve won't be happy unless he gets the shot here. 
Well, he's um, coming the in the right direction. He's coming home in the right direction. Stephen did well played. No maybe. argument now. I think he has. And uh, that's the indication. Stephen did fit from the Patoni side, and Wellington did draw the shot. Well, he's drawn to a position whereby it's the Patoni side. Hello, it is. Another end. So that bowl it. They've got it in before the bell. So, it's, to be fair, Adam Hay would be kicking himself now, wouldn't he? Yeah. Had a chance there to be 10 all, but look, did he's used his experience to. Absolutely. Took a deep breath, I would say, Kev. Probably took the pressure out of what he was doing and just knew that he just had to draw a shot. Didn't worry about the game score too much. And now got a three shot buffer. So play the last in and shake hands time in the match between the uh, Paraparam side, Cavity Coast, and the Canterbury side from Club Papua Nui. It's the Mark Lewis skip side up against Ray Boffer. I don't think Ray's given up yet. No, they've, they, they, <laughs> down here they've shaken. They've already said we've had enough of this. I don't know. Ray's got a chance to trail a jack here for two or three, I reckon. But down he's not going to be up. Yeah. And that's probably not what he was looking for. So Mark Lewis daring to close the game out. Mark's bowl's coming back, but again, shorter weight. Shorter weight. So, Ray Boffin now. Oh, there's, the there's the bell. There it yeah. is. It's definitely the last end. On the backhand is the... Capity player trailing 15 to 11 and it's fair to say David really gave a pretty good recovery didn't they, didn't they? Did, they, they, were, they were down and out literally weren't they and they uh, they hung in there so well done to the Papua Nui side of Mark Lewis Rick Day, Brian Hemi and Terry Stewart uh, taking the win over the Cavity Coast well, side of Ray Boffer, sure Tom Henderson, Shane Duncan and Mike Downer. So they're on their way as the side from Papua Nui got their win and looking pretty good as well now for the the Batoni side. It's the Stephen Ditford skip side. Do you reckon uh, they could squeeze a three out of here, Kev? Well, I'm just looking with that. It's going to have to be with jack movement because... That's the Ditford bowls that are sitting on the jack. Now we just go cover up now, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the uh, number two for Stephen Ditford, Dave Goody, just got to get literally down past the head. But he's not going to do so. A uh, little bit of pressure on Jason here. Not only does he... Need to play a good bowl, but he needs to make sure he's up. So, can he control that weight? Well, you've got to play the trial now, don't you? You know, you just. Adam looks like he's calling him to play that, yes. So, Jason Prout trying to get down to that trail. He's in the target area. Just got to hold up and sit. Well played. And well played. Moved it right through the head. So, Tim's holding one. Needing three to force an extreme. So. I suppose you could say, really, David, of, of what how the head's going to be played depends a lot on this bowl now. Look at this. Look at this. Great. Right. Oh. So, well, well played. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> that, goody. Then all of a sudden, just change the... Yeah, just change things around now. So weird. There will be a few people at the Patoni Club clapping that one, Kevin. Yeah, they will. So where now does Jason Prout go with his seg? Does he play for the trail now? I think they're definitely back to the trail option, yeah. Adam's having a look. It's just... Jason's just uh, waiting to get some direction from his skip. Well, and the, the, the trail shot is also a wee bit more difficult the way how the bowl's yeah. sat there. You the can't, angle's not as good as the first time. No, to no. get a clean trail, he's under the head, needs a slide. He's going to get it. Generous slide to the jack. <laughs> well, well, certainly uh, 
It's still set up there for a three, um, probably looking at the option now of playing down the forehand to push the shot ball out and stay. So um, uh, Brendan now down on his backhand, just wanting to put another ball on the head if he can. Drew it. Steve's put his foot there to give him a target to draw to. And no, if I'd have been Stephen Dipford, I'd be just saying draw right back here. I wouldn't be. That was halfway stuff. Because connection with the jack, then you've got to draw to the ditch, don't you? And that's really what you should be looking at now. Got a bowl sitting out the back there. I'm not sh sure how much influence that that black this bowl will have on the shot that Adam's calling now. You're going to play that same shot, bro. One down, but it doesn't matter. You're trying yeah, to, he's you're still trying saying to the jack is an option. Jack, yep. I think it's the best here, option. Because yep. the, the other thing, if you move the jack where he's indicating now, well, of course, there's no Wellington bowls over that side of the head as uh, well. Mark's, Mark's got his two bowls sitting there waiting for it. So, endeavouring to get down is Matt Johnson. And this is a good well, attempt. Not, that well, out. that's made yeah. it hard up. That's made it harder because it's just pushed one of the balls. I just, I just think now, yeah, David, you're just going to play jack back all the way back and your ball goes with it. You can try and invent shots. Yes. And I'm saying is the best option is we're going to put the jack, we're going to put the jack in the ditch. And what, why would you not? They haven't got balls up over the head. Yeah, look, I, I think Adam's probably still looking at an option here of playing down on the back end and touching the jack to make two or three. Too technical, doesn't get results. I don't. I think, I, I, I think that jack right in the ditch is probably looks the shot to play, but... Uh, well, you, you, so if we look at it, 11-8, you need three to get the tie. Yeah, holding one, maybe even holding two. I'm... Oh, the blue out to the side I'm, there. I'm picking that that blue bowl may beat the Patani so, short. Well, what he's saying, then, if, we can, if I can touch the jack yes. around the corner, I can make three, right? Yep. I think that at this stage, I think it's the percentage shot. Well, if he does do that, congrats, well done. I'm just going to tell Adam Hayward now, don't then be short. <laughs> yes, I think he probably... Right? He's hearing you. He's hearing you. <laughs> Because fine to get your number three to play the the, the, the shot and good and it's it's on for sure, but look he could even he could even play the forehand and get the back edge of the jack you know just yeah to, absolutely just, just, just a roll. Just so a, I think I think look Matt's got everything going for him here to be playing a, a foot of weight to the jack on either hand. Uh, he just needs to take the pressure out of the game for him and just draw a shot really. He just the discipline of making sure you're up here is so important. So, on the backhand. Seemed to get it away nicely. Didn't see a smile, but... So, it's a matter where that line really is, David, isn't it? How far is it going to hold on that line? Is it going to hold? No, it won't. He's going to be short. Three feet short of weight, probably. Well, Adam can't say anything. No. <laughs> right? No, he can't. But he's got to go down there and, and, and do oh, himself now. If he thinks that shot's on, go back with confidence. And look, Diddy's probably thinking to play the same thing, play it before they do. You know, put his bowl amongst uh, those those couple of teams' bowls. The only comment I make, David, is if if you played the shot that I would have preferred to see him play, he wouldn't have been short. No, fair comment. Diddy trying to draw the shot here, I would say. Trail the jack, get amongst them. Take the option away from Adam and then force him back to your shot, Kevin. <laughs> Well, that's going to slip. He's going to get a touch off the There's bowl the here. price of the short bowl. There you go. Cuts the view off. And I risk my case. I would say Adam's now driving the shot bowl, even though he's holding. He's probably going to try and drive the shot bowl to kill and replay the end. So, we'll go back to the old days. What shot do you think Nick Hankovic would have played then? Oh, he would have been at it with the number three. <laughs> he would have had uh, Jack, Sum Jack Summerville at it right from the start. Yeah, I, it's, you know, 
Sometimes a ditch can be your friend. Yep. So, Adam Hayward. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's not doing what I thought he would do, and he's going to try and play that same shot that he was getting marked to play. Down on the backhand. He wants to slip past Diddy's bowl and touch that check for three. Now, he's not on a bad line here. But he's not going to. No. Next shot, please. Backhand drive kill. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't you? Well, no, no. What I'm, all I'm saying, David, is that that to, when you own when you own the back, when you own, you know, you own the ditch, and you know very well. Yeah, I still you know, straight back. I think under un, on that side. Uh, under the number. Yeah. Um, but it's the discipline of making sure you're up when you're playing that shot. So both Matt and and Adam did not have the weight to even get to where they wanted to be. Correct. And, and also, David, you know, well, I'm not, it's reality is sometimes we can just try and, you know, the margin of error is pretty small. Yes, it is. Yes. So, Stephen Ditfit from the Platoni Club. He holds upper hand as he'll play his last bowl. Again, trying to trail that jack and tuck it away from Adam. He's out on a nice line. Well, he's on a here. nice line to the jack, he's isn't he? Wait. No, it's just going to duck away now. It might turn over. The, no, it doesn't even turn over. the. Well, again, it's a difference is three. He's got to trail the jack around the corner. Be really interesting. Adam's a shot player. He'll be wanting to play a shot at it, but he... He may, in this situation, decide that, that that's the best option. Well, uh, yeah, you've got to look also at reality, David, of, of, of where are the shots on. Now, playing there, um, there's not three shots on. All, if we're talking about, are, is, there, is there three shots on somewhere? Yes, there is. That's the jack trail just around the corner. Is it a hard shot? Yes, it's a hard well, the shot. Last, the last four bowls have tried to play exactly that and have not achieved it. So he's going to have to play something really special here. Absolutely. Kill it. The team have told him to kill it. So he's, on the mat. he's going for the kill. Kevin... Kevin Hicklin did not run out there and tell him and run back. <laughs> no heavy breathing going on there, Kevin's there? No? no, mate. No. no, 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 no. So here is Hayward. Looking to kill. Wouldn't be ironical now to put the jack in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Here we go. Wouldn't He's that be it. ironical? And You've got nothing back. all over. So it is the Wellington side. Stephen Ditford, Brendan Knight, David Goody, David Grant at lead up against the Thames side. With Adam Hayward skipping, along with Matt Johnson, Jason Prout, and Mark Matthews. And it is the Petoni side who record a win. And of course, the other game that we covered, that of the Cavity Coast game, the uh, Ray Boffer game, up against the Canterbury side, the Mark Lewis skip side from Club Papua Nui. And it was the Club Papua Nui side who ran out the winner. Thank you for David Clark for being with me throughout this game. And uh, I'll bid you farewell. I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, there's uh, someone else is going to come and sit here. <laughs>
Good evening, bowlers that are watching this live broadcast tonight. Uh, just a note to say that we're going to have to close down shortly because of the time limit. And we'll reset straight away, so for the game, if you want to hear it, just refresh your, your, your uh, channel and we'll be back shortly.